All right, everybody, welcome to the GDQ Hotfix, where it is a special broadcast uh, today. We have the Mega Man X Relay, which is really cool. So we have three teams, as you can see on your screen, going head to head in all of the Mega Man X games. So that's X1 through X8. Uh, basically, if you're not familiar with the Relay format, it's really simple. Uh, one person uh, plays the game, in this case, they start off with uh, Mega Man X and then they pass it off to their partner who plays then the subsequent game. So as soon as they're done with their game, they pass it off and then the next person plays their game, rinse and repeat until you're done with all eight games. And the winner is the team that finishes fastest. Um, there will be a transition time in between each game. So basically once Mega Man X is done, there will be a 30 second countdown um, that uh, the players will be counting down themselves. And then once the 30 seconds passes, then they'll go ahead and, and uh, start. So yeah, so it will be really a fun uh, showcase of, uh, of uh, Mega Man X gameplay. Um, real quick, just before we get into things, just uh, an announcement. Um, tomorrow uh, is the Community Spotlight, of course. A very uh, weekly show that happens on uh, the GDQ Hotfix. And uh, we have a birthday party celebration. Uh, Railcoon, who is the host of the Community Spotlight, is has a birthday coming up. And he thought, well, why not uh, share the fun, share his birthday with the, the viewers of our channel? So, yeah, it's going to be uh, basically a bunch of uh, games that uh, his friends uh, are running. So he's going to kind of share in the fun with that. So uh, tune in tomorrow, uh, 7 p.m., I believe. Uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, that is. So, yeah. Um, but with that, uh, we are almost ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and introduce our incredible commentators who are going to be commentating X1 through X3 for us. So we have uh, uh, Colonel Fatso, Just Incredible, and BJW. So I will give it to you all. And uh, while you are talking, we're going to go ahead and start uh, getting the competitors ready to go. All right. So as we can see, we've got uh, <clears throat> three wonderful teams. Uh, themed after three wonderful bosses in Mega Man X games. Starting off, uh, we've got Team Green Biker Dad. Uh, <laughs> what is that guy's uh, actual name? RT55J. Uh, okay. Uh, it, it guards the uh, <laughs> armor capsule, and we'll, we'll yeah. see it coming up in Mega Man X. Uh, and on that team, we've got Sopa uh, now playing Mega Man X. And then we have Team Mandriller, the start, uh, Team Mandriller uh, with Clipper, at the uh, at the head, and then Team Beat Booed <laughs> with Zam at the head. Are we watching the actual relay right now? I don't see the timer moving. Oh, my bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Want to make sure this isn't like a practice test run. All right, so this is the highway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you guys have probably seen this a billion times. If not, then uh, enjoy holding right. So these bees here are the major luck element here. They can do one of three things. They can choose to be passive, fire their machine gun, or fire a rocket. Uh, ultimately, they just don't want to take contact damage against the bee itself. Otherwise, they have to play safer. It looks like everyone got good luck overall. Yeah, everybody has yeah. had good enough luck that they're going to be able to do the next big thing in the stage, uh, which is coming towards the end. In yeah, the meantime... Right. Uh, it's basically just about leg reduction. Uh, you yeah. want to kill all of the enemies before they can uh, cause significant amounts of leg. And then the, on this slope, you walk a little faster down slopes. Uh, and so if you jump at the end of that slope, uh, you'll actually preserve that speed for a little bit longer. Uh, and you'll see that a lot more in the next stage, Chill Penguin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, slope jumping gives additional height as well, which isn't too useful here, but you'll see its usefulness in the next stage. All right. Ooh. Okay, so everyone is at their required health uh, to be at the end of the stage. Um, so when they defeat these two cars, Val will appear and he will attempt to capture X. And he will only do that once X is <laughs> down to at least uh, 3 HP or less. And Clipper fell, down, uh, fell behind a little bit uh, while doing the, the riding the car segment, but uh, <laughs> was able to pull back, pull back and maintain the sink-ish. Uh, that we've got going on here by uh, actually killing the last, uh, the second car from the front, which is a really risky thing, uh, unless you have the health to spare. So, yeah. Uh... All right, so, good yeah. relay so far. I like yeah. it. This stage is pretty cursed in marathon Ooh. runs. People tend to die here, so 
It's good. Now. <laughs> Everyone is deathless right now for the first two minutes. So uh, the first ma uh, Maverick is Chill Penguin. Um, we're still going to be doing the normal walking speed until we get the dash boots real soon. Uh, they're going to try to uh, ooh, kill some of these enemies here uh, without taking too much damage, hopefully. And they're going to use a little bit of slope jump as they enter the cave. Um, what that does is when you walk down a slope, you get accelerated horizontal movement and you have a higher jump. And you'll see them utilize that really soon to navigate these uh, ledges coming up, leading up to the capsule. Yeah. Worth noting for the um, <clears throat> for the steeper, there's two like two grades of slope, and on the steeper grade of slope, uh, even if you're walking up a up it, it's sometimes worthwhile to uh, turn around, get the slope mm -hmm. jump, and then turn back. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hmm. And now that we have the dash boots, that mechanic is pretty much going to be forgotten entirely. So it looks like we've got Team Green Biker Dad just barely. Oh, oh, no, beat booed. Team beat booed. Like half a second. Surprise. With the oh, surprise. Not anymore. Oh, everyone's running into the bird. <laughs> <laughs> and mm -hmm. it looks like uh, Team Mandriller gets the no stop hallway there. Yeah. And Clever actually got pretty lucky because, like, you really don't want to be missing health going into that section because if you take a drop, mm -hmm. then your timing's all off and you're going to take the hit. Yeah. So coming up is the Chill Penguin fight, one of the biggest sources of RNG in this game. Um, they're going to have a full charge stocked up at the start of this fight, and they're going to let it go immediately when the fight begins. And then hopefully Penguin will either jump to his little hook there at the top of the screen or just do his ice breath attack which will allow them to constantly uh shoot dash uh lemons into them for two damage and then use a cfo strat or they stock up a full charge at the end of that mm -hmm. yeah the runners just don't want to see slides here because yeah. Joel penguins invulnerable for the duration of the slide sopa got a really good ping penguin there it looks like yeah, so Sopa is out to a, a pretty commanding lead here, probably four or five seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it looks like Zam is ahead of Clipper by a, about the same amount of time. But uh, <clears throat> that's a swing that can absolutely come back around the other way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> even, yeah. even within a few stages. Yeah, so. within the game and also in the context of the six-hour relay. <laughs> yeah. Nothing yeah. is settled yet. Here's a Boomer Quanger stage. This is arguably the hardest stage in the game. And in contrast to most other stages in this game, this one's mostly vertical. Yeah. Yeah, this is your first taste of vertical movement and how important it is to Mega Man X speedrunning because you don't want to take damage if possible because normally that will knock X back down and you'll have to rescale certain sections of a climb a second time to make up for it. Yeah. You can see them taking uh, intentional damage boosts in the in the climb there when they are like at the top of a ladder, so that they can cancel the anim the damage uh, animation against the wall and actually get up faster. But that's like an exception. Normally, you don't want to take damage at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can see those spike D boosts too, abusing the uh, mechanic where if you're within seven pixels of a wall and you wall jump. In this case, if you're not holding forward, you just avoid taking damage entirely, but you take the hits done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're coming up on Iceless here since we are running 100%. Well, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah. I keep forgetting <laughs> this too, is actually. the point at which the two routes uh, diverge. And looks like we're having some difficulties here. So this is now a race again. So Clipper. Ooh, Clipper is first. Clipper takes it. This is an ultra precise wall jump. If it's not clear. Yeah. Uh, looks like uh, Zam having a little trouble. Ooh. There, there we go. go. So as mentioned before, you have seven pixels from a wall to be able to execute a wall jump. You really need to abuse that to find enough spacing to get up there. Okay, so for the Boomer Quanger fight, uh, he can actually get put into a loop here 
if you're close enough, as we see, it looks like on uh, Clipper's side, um, he's going to try to attempt to deadlift X. So as long as you jump out of his grasp and you're close enough, he'll continue to do that. Up to a certain point, like once his health gets like to half health or below, he could start teleporting. But it's very possible that he could do that the entire fight. And it's very, very simple and very fast. Otherwise, these teleports will make the fight a little slower. Yeah, mm -hmm. not that much slower, though. So this was yeah. like, I mean, <laughs> in a game with as many yeah. random bosses as this game has, yeah, Kwanger's pretty low on the list there. Okay, Clipper's going into Eagle. Okay, it looks like everyone's so going, going into Yeah, Eagle. everyone. Yeah, I don't think we'll see right. anybody going to Chameleon. All right, um, there's, no, there's no one like Walrus here. There's no one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the this is the safer version of this route, um, which is like very slightly slower, but doesn't involve as many um, frame perfect shenanigans. And Clipper gets the phantom grab. Nice. Oh. Oh. I'm, okay. Oh. Sopa misses it. Let's see if Zan gets it. Yeah. Oh. The pause Zan guarantees right. it with the. Was the pause buffer strat. So Zam is actually going to pull ahead of Sopa here by a little bit, despite having been so far behind going into the stage. This mm -hmm. trick, in its totality, saves about uh, how much is it? Fifteen seconds or so. I think uh, it's a lot. Thir Thirteen or fourteen, I think. Yeah. So yeah, Sopa has to go and ride that little. Uh, call him up to get inside that little building where the sub-tank rests, whereas Clipper and Zam can just ride the uh, the makeshift carpet over, and actually, I think they go in from the other side and, gra and grab it, and then they actually continue to ride it the uh, all the way to the helmet upgrade. Yeah. You have to take a pretty wide path around uh, some spawn triggers, because, like, yeah. there's a spawn trigger that you need to avoid, which despawns the platform that you're riding, which is yeah. bad, obviously. And then there's another spawn trigger that you need to avoid. You need to make sure that you hit the sub-tank spawn trigger before yeah, you hit the trigger yeah. for the next set of platforms, or else there's yeah. going to be no space in memory, basically, for the sub-tank to load, and you'd have to go way out of your way to fix it. So since we don't have the Sting Chameleon weapon for Eagle, they have to do Dash Lemons uh, to Storm Eagle. So whether or not the dives happen is sort of an important factor in an actual speedrun, but for Relay, it's not really a big of an issue. Yep, Dash Lemons do two damage. Yep. I guess to explain what kind of happened back there, by the way, um, so a phantom grab, if you collect an item with your boomerang one frame before um, your target loads into the game, this causes the target to load within your boomerang itself. So in this case, the item they were collecting was the heart, and the target they were loading was one of those platforms on the right-hand side. And this caused the platform to load directly in their boomerang, allowing them to fly over most of the stage. Yeah, um, what happens is when the item that's in the boomerang comes back to X, the item actually despawns before the boomerang does. So there's actually a small bit of time in between where it, that first item that you collect despawns and what the item you want to grab spawns. So you just have to uh, spawn it within that one or two frame window. Yeah, yep. it's, it, it is frame perfect. It has to yeah. spawn on the next Oh, it is? Okay, the yeah. next frame. And hopefully we're gonna see it a few more times. In these I was rooms. probably I was probably thinking the pixel window, like if that's not yeah, pixel perfect. Yeah, there's a few it? pixels because you move it more yeah. than one pixel per frame. Yeah. Oh, that was close by Clipper, but not quite. You can actually do it right there again. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, Thankfully, the phantom like, grab is completely inconsequential if you miss it. It doesn't really save yeah. much time. But it's actually the uh, the way we first discovered that this exists. Uh, was because some runners accidentally grabbed the heart after collecting the sub-tank. Yeah. And that's not all that you can grab, not just items, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, uh, yeah. A couple yeah. other things that you yeah, can grab you can as well. You can grab items, platforms, uh, health, health pickups, although it would be difficult to spawn one of those at the right time, I think. You can grab uh, boss doors. You can grab boss doors, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, if you see, like, if you've seen <laughs> high level 80% runs, you'll see that sometimes. Let's, uh, <laughs> my, one, my one contribution to Mega Man X canon is the uh, is the the fact that you can grab boss doors, yeah. which I did completely by accident. But hey, that led to like uh, the Phantom grab in Sigma One, so it's not all bad. Yeah, it's not all bad. It's not, but it's, it's really funny. So the mammoth fight there was very very simple. Um, you can get two hits with the Storm Tornado for every use, so you just have to uh, time your shots accordingly, and he goes down fairly quickly. Yeah, there's not really much to talk about with that boss. Mandrill stage, though. This is Ooh, the real deal right here. another target stage in Mavericks, for sure. Yeah, this is a very difficult stage. Lots of tough weapon swaps. Um, they got the Buster upgrade in the previous stage, so now they can use things like Charge Sea Sting, Charge Tornado, which will come in handy here. And due to the fact that you've already defeated Storm Eagle Sage, uh, these hallways are will go dark on you. Um, yeah, and Thunder Slimer is also less yeah. powerful. Yeah. Right. It's really easy to forget stuff like that when you've been speedrunning long enough. Like, oh, what are the stage effects? Well, I don't know yeah. because I always use them anyways. Yeah, I guess the previous stage was frozen because Chill Penguin was already defeated. Yeah. And in this case, Eagle was defeated, so... Thunder Slimer yeah. doesn't have the lightning attack or whatever. Yeah, yeah, th yeah. This is kind of like a preview of what's going to happen in X Six, where they, where they, the Nightmare System kind of resembles what happens with the stage effects in this game. It's kind of like a throwback, but that's a little bit later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stay tuned to find out more. Yep. Nice last section there with the uh, knocking out those bees. Or the light bugs, one of the two. Okay, what's Mandrill gonna do? Clipper's just hoping for no punches here. Yeah. So technically, you could stun lock this boss with like all freezing shots, um, but it's slower because you actually can hit through iframes before getting the chance to freeze them again. So. Yeah. Yep. And seeing shotgun ice reminds me. I don't think we mentioned that. Um, Back in the hallways back there, you saw a lot of shotgun ice usage. So the way X's buster works is weapons kind of fire a bit in front of the buster itself. And in the case of shotgun ice, uh, the shrapnel you see, those five trailing shots, those also do damage. So what you can do with this weapon is deposit the shot inside of a hitbox, and then that shrapnel deals additional damage beyond that. Mm -hmm. And this even applies to enemies that are spawning on the edge of the screen. So yeah, exactly. Guys, the gun bolts, uh, they, um, they spawn like partially inside the screen already. So you can actually shoot a, a shotgun ice to the edge of the screen. Oh, that's uh, an attempted phantom grab on the uh, sub tank there. It was failed, unfortunately. But you can uh, shoot the shotgun ice on the, uh, <clears throat> to the edge of the screen and then spawn the enemy in. And it will take a ton of damage just from, uh, just right as it spawns. So, so, okay, everyone didn't get a chance. I don't think. Uh, did the other two? Did Sopa even try? I don't think they I, attempted it. I, I think Sopa Sopa got a drop, but I think he didn't uh, get off of that ledge to slide down in time, so he couldn't mm. get it. Yeah, that phantom but, grab saves like what seven seconds, roughly. Yeah, it's like six um, seconds. But, yeah. yeah, five or six. They get to try it's, a second time later since this is a hundred percent. So when doing revisits, yeah. the first revisit, they can try again. Yeah, it saves more time if you get it first try. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, they get two shots for that. They'll come back uh, when they come back for the Hadoken. Oh, Clipper with Ooh. really good luck. So Dilla's always going to open up with a roll there, and for the duration of that roll, Dilla's invulnerable. Yeah, as long as he's got the armor on, he can't uh, be hit while he's rolling. But once he comes out of it, he's vulnerable oh. with the electric spark. Oh, oh yeah. no. Damn. Uh, and you can see oh. the last shot stick on the wall. That's a funny glitch <laughs> in this fight. Um, the, the, if the shot will kill... Uh, yeah, if the uh, shot will kill Dillo, then it just sticks, sticks there and doesn't go away. And you can get a frame perfect kill. So, 
so we're heading into Launch Octopus. Uh, a lot of bosses to fight in this stage. Uh, we got these uh, two little submarines, and then we actually have uh, two Uduburoses to kill mm -hmm. as well. I keep forgetting this is Chameleon last. It's throwing me off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen so much Chameleon third. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that route's a lot more difficult. It allows you to mitigate some of the luck in Eagle stage if you do Chameleon third, but it requires a very difficult phantom grab that oftentimes just outright kills your run. So it's not so, exactly really safe. So the main objective with those first two submarines is to try to get the submarine to uh, not use the... Um, what is it? The light... Search yeah, the beam. Searchlight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, yeah, the searchlight. If they're if X is far away, that might entice uh the sub to spawn the little um the tiny uh Uderburuses that will track them down. If you're up close though, it'll entice it to try to, to suck X in for damage. Yeah. But the big thing is it causes a ton of leg. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then they actually you can actually destroy the searchlight as um it does an attack, so that kind of helps with the lag re reduction as well. Yeah, speaking of lag reduction, you can see these guys taking these water snakes off screen as they kill them. Get those explosions off. Okay, uh, Clipper gets a couple of grabs here from the octopus, but by firing the fire wave as you're getting caught, it actually prevents an infinite. You're able to break out instantly. <laughs> oh, she ran out of rolling shield. <laughs> yeah. That's rare. Yeah. This fight's difficult to execute. Um, the swirlies are really annoying, but on top of that, the weakness here is rolling shield, which has a gigantic hitbox, and octopus is constantly shooting projectiles, which just eat the shields. So it can be difficult to connect hits. Yeah, while we got a break in the action, just reiterate what the categories are for these first three X games. X1 is 100%, X2 is 80%, and X3 is 100%. Lots of 100%. Yeah. And X2 and is... And X2 is like 99%. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> it's pseudo hundo. Okay, so now we're in our final Maverick Stink Chameleon, and as you see... Um, now that we've defeated Octopus, the uh, bottom part of the stage is full of water, and that will assist in getting the heart tank after we defeat uh, the green biker dad, we'll say. So you notice that they're not using boomerangs uh, completely. They're actually starting the fight or ending the fight with five dash lemons because they need this weapon for stink chameleon a little bit later assuming they don't get any uh, weapon refills along the way look at all those capsule toes i like what i'm seeing it's a lot of valid runs all right so here's the uh, heart which is like impossible to phantom grab uh, but is almost trivial to pick up when you've got the uh <clears throat> when you've got the water So now as they go through the cave here, they're going to charge up Rolling Shield. That will grant them some invulnerability as they dash through some of the rock dudes so they don't take damage. Free then, one up here that leaves us yeah. no time and basically helps enable this route. Yep. Yeah. For the um, records later, which will require yeah, suicide. Spoiler. Spoilers, there's going to be a lot, of, uh, a lot of dead X in the next say five minutes so another trivial fight here with sync chameleon um every time he gets hit with a boomerang he's actually going to jump to the other side mm. so it's just... gonna show us something special though i think yeah yeah oh yeah the charge yeah he got a drop so he's able to do a cfo strat here which will save him a hit so he's able to finish the fight oh using one less boomerang shot. Oh my god, Sopa's so dreamy. Yeah. It saves not quite a second. 
Um, oh, not quite. Okay, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it's to... not free. It's not. It's not perfect, right? You lose mm -hmm. a little bit of time. Yeah, you um, have to hold because of the the charge actually takes longer to get to full in this game than it does in the other games, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like okay. four seconds. It's a long time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, all of the Mavericks are down now, uh, and so there's just a little bit of cleanup that needs to be done to fulfill the hundred percent requirements before they head into the castles. Yep. A revisit to Chill Penguin. Um, since the heart tank is resting inside one of the igloos that they passed earlier, which can only be broken by the fire wave, as far as we know. We haven't yeah. found another way to get to it yet. <laughs> Technically, you can uh, phantom grab it, but that also oh. requires beating another stage. Right? Ah, so. okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I can't believe the mech can't punch it. The mech can punch it, but you have to. Oh, get the right, mech. right. You can't get it. There, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, there's an igloo right here that you can punch, but you don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Give give the mech wings. <laughs> All right. Well, there's Just revisit from number next one into this game, and then <laughs> yeah. so many problems are solved right there. So now, now that the beauty that they've got like the charge buster upgrade, they can charge their weapons in the same chameleon. Charge version is very, very helpful. Ooh, Ooh we so got There you go. So, so that's save, gonna save, save her like the problem. Seven seconds. Yeah, she won't have to wait for the, the Mobro to pass like on the other two player screens, as you see. It's an incredibly laggy enemy. Yeah. Ooh. Whoa, Sopa, what are you Sopa doing? Sopa had a little bit of a <laughs> dicey moment there. That wasn't that wasn't one of the X deaths that we were going to be uh, yeah. talking about. Yeah, that's a that's a bad revisit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the requirements to get the Hadouken is they have to they have to spawn a particular spot uh, behind this uh, little energy refill uh, five times, um, but yeah. only on the fifth and final time do they have to have all the items and they have to have full health for the capsule to appear. Yeah, for some reason, Capcom thought this was fun. And the fastest way to uh, reach this spot again and again is to actually die. So that extra life that they picked up in uh, Chameleon does help <clears throat> here. Yep. Uh, that bird could have caused some wow. major problems. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you say, imagine you take the hit from the bird and then you're stuck on the cart or yeah. you're stuck in, in front of the cart. Um, in front of the cart's really bad because the cart could push you into the door and then you uh, have yeah. to do the Get first the half of the stage. stage again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it was mentioned before, but you can see all the runners are also jumping on this cart during the final leg of the trip. Um, there's a bunch of triggers along the way that spawn birds, and these birds mm -hmm. cause massive amounts of lag. So by jumping on the cart yeah. at certain points, you can avoid the birds from spawning entirely. Now, there's a funny little quirk. Uh, I've done this once or twice in my early days of running this category. On the final trip, you can actually, if you spawn the Hadouken capsule, but you have like a bird still on screen, and if you take damage, as long as you don't despawn the capsule, you can still get the Hadouken. Um, when X actually jumps into the capsule and he comes out to do the demo, he only shoots a lemon because he's not full health, and you still get the Hadouken, but just don't despawn the. Uh, the capsule by falling back down toward where the door is. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. All right. So the 100% requirements are now met for all runners, and they're going to be heading into Sigma uh, Fortress. And right, off the <laughs> right off the bat, they're taking damage again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Because there's, there's there's another plot fight against Vile that's gonna happen, uh, and ooh, ooh, very close. Nice for nice leap. Yeah. The fastest version of the leap of oh, oh, no! oh, oh that's unfortunate. Uh, that's okay though. She she's still ahead by a little bit. Here. Yeah, that's a loss of probably five seconds. Yeah, so like about half a second for it to. Uh... <laughs> And fill up her health. 
a little bit more time from having not dashed there, and then also the extra four hits on the wall. <laughs> yeah, so we have another unwinnable fight against Vile in his armor. So the HP requirement is actually double what it was in the intro, so you have to get your health down to six this time around. Mm. Cutscene and... skip, by the way. Yep. Yep. By uh, not touching the floor back there and panning the camera up. Yeah. So, uh... You do have to be a little bit careful about how you manipulate the text um, in order to make sure that it doesn't soft lock. But uh, looks like nobody had that issue. Okay, so now we're going to see the Hadoken in action for the first time. Um, you must have full health to use it. So uh, basically the rest of the game here is going to come down to not getting hit and getting X into a position where he can actually Hadoken every boss. And that was the boss. Quarter circle forward. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of bosses like that as we continue. Yeah, and the Hadoken deals 32 units of damage on impact. So it is a one-hit kill if you get it off. Yeah, one-hit kill for bosses and then yep. uh, one or two-hit kill for mini-bosses. That's strange that the mini-bosses can take a Hadoka and not die. Yeah. yeah. Clipper cases. having a really tough time with this climb. Gonna have to use a sub tank here. Yeah. Yep. And just like that, actually, we're reversed again. And then we've got <laughs> uh, Sam in the lead and Silpa not far behind. And, Good uh, patterns for both of them, too. Yeah, they both buffer the Hadoken. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Wow. <laughs> so Kuanger there can open with like a teleport, which is really scary. Yeah. When you get that yeah. opening teleport from uh, from Kuanger, then you're probably going to end up taking an extra hit, which is like really bad. Yeah. Okay, so now we got Bow Spider, which you have to read uh, the pattern on the wall because the Bow Spider is going to take that green horizontal line as soon as she gets to it. So you just have to figure out where she's going to end up at the end and then position yourself to where you can get the Hadoken off when she opens up her weak point at the bottom. So you want if if Bow Spider doesn't end at the in the middle there, you want to be in the middle yourself so that X has less a distance to walk before he can teleport out. Mm -hmm. Something we didn't touch on during the eight Mavericks, but that is the general idea that you want to end the fight with. Uh, that doesn't really matter too much in the later X games. It really only applies here. You're jumping over the ice ball that Chill Penguin spits out and getting a quick Hadoken in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is harder than it looks because that thing comes out deceptively slow sometimes and you're like, Ugh! <laughs> So, Zero died in the brink of night and as we approach the ladders here, you'll notice that it gets daytime pretty pretty quickly oh. clipper getting punched what's happening yep. oh yeah and oh the lag. Lag. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well thankfully she picked the uh, hp back up so not using another sub tank but this is uh, a string of unfortunate events for clipper so far in these castle stages So Eagle actually begins by trying to blow you away from him with his wings. So luckily you just can dash up to him. And then as soon as you get up close, just Hadoken and you should be able to take him out pretty easily. Zam entering Rang the Banga. What he wants to see here is a blue eye followed by a red eye. Just the two eyes that can come down. He's getting a, a stable red eye right now. Two stable red eyes. Green eye for Sopa. Not good. Let's yeah. see if Flipper gets good luck. Yeah, once the first uh, eye is destroyed, uh, yeah, it always starts with the red eye the second time. Oh, blue? Oh, okay, there. okay. Red? Oh. Down? Oh, oh. Yeah, that's it, that's it. That's the god pattern. That's what you want to see right there. So Clipper is right back in this. Yeah. All right, so now we got another chance for things to happen, which I won't talk too much about until <laughs> after it's happened. All right. One. Nice. There's, yep. One skip. 
Nice. Two. Two. So, and they all do. Yeah. Okay, that was really close, but yeah, it'll work out. Uh, so you can push yourself through the door with an ice sled um, and skip a camera scroll trigger. And because that trigger was skipped, the camera actually never gets high enough for Armadillo to spawn, and it just lets you through. All right, we got one air hotto. Oh, we got oh. two, but unfortunately, uh, Sopa takes a hit, but that's that's fine. He got the hotto off. Oh, nice. and Clipper almost yeah. got spiked herself. But she you can replace that health really easily here, either yeah. from killing the enemies or... Oh! Oh, he didn't pick up health. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess good... that's an hard commit, I guess. It's yeah, there's like... a good chance that there's a health drop from that miner, but sometimes he doesn't drop it. I don't know about good chance, but... Oh, definitely man. a chance. Oh, we got two dash punches into a hotto. I don't know what we got from Zam. I wasn't watching. But yeah, for Mandrel, uh, if he doesn't do the dash punch immediately, and if you uh, buffer the hotto, it's easily uh, fixable. You just have to uh, do another hotto when he just gets done with his jump. Mm -hmm. Octo here is easy. Just shoots rockets yeah. immediately. Single buster shot will clear the one in front of you, and then Octo's going to do some sort of jump. And then for Mammoth, uh, he's going to jump at you immediately, so you can either jump backwards in Hotto, or you can jump forwards, turn around in Hotto. And then for D-Rex, um... They're going to attempt the uh, the Dom Dukin or the Brick Bar Dukin or whatever name you want to call it. He's, uh, X is going to dash right up to the base of D-Rex. You can actually jump straight up and actually land on the base by like on like a pixel. Buffer the Hado as you're landing really quickly and then just like that, fire the Buster as soon as you land and you'll get the Hado input. Yeah. Oh, so we're having some trouble here. Oh. Clipper, Ooh, Clipper got this, but Clipper got the oh! easy back up. This fight's hard to recover from. So, oh, Sopa still has a tank. He is also uh, an old hand in any percent, so he's just gonna... <laughs> yeah, Sopa still has a sub tank here, but it looks like he's uh, opting yeah. out of it to conserve it, reserve it for uh, the next stage, just in case. Yep. So the final uh, final stage is just a three boss gauntlet. Uh, you have the Velgarder uh, dog. You'll have Sigma himself, and then the Velgarder Sigma form. Yep. And Hadoken does not work on the final form, so they will have to use Rolling Shield. And our X two runners are getting ready to start here pretty soon. Yeah, looks like uh, as long as nothing like incredibly weird happens, it should be the dude coming in uh, with a lead coming into Mega Man X2. Okay, so you can buffer Hado on uh, Jedi Sigma, and he's down. So right here on the final final form, uh, sixteen rolling shields. You just have to watch the claw and. Just don't take uh, too much damage. Yeah. So you notice they stand on the right hand side yeah. of the claw, well, normally. Um, and that's just because it avoids the lightning and it also avoids. Oop. Uh, that was interesting. But yeah. uh, Zam's done Mega Man X. I think that was yeah. a 35 51, sick time. Yeah. Well, the timer was late, too. So... Oh, right. Never mind. I take it back. Yeah. <laughs> but terrible. Still good. Good, good times from all three. All of them got thirty sixes. Mm -hmm. So as we transition to X two, uh, we have Akutarax on Team Green Biker dude. We got Tokyo on Team Mandriller, and we got the dude on Team Beat Dude. All right, the dude is off. Oh. He went a little early, I guess. Uh oh. X2 intro stage. So in this one, you uh, start off a dash, unlike X1. You don't have to wait until the first map to get dash. So 
speed running right from the very start. Uh, the boss of the stage, CFO, I think you've heard CFO mentioned a few times so far, just from the X1 runs. Um, basically, the idea behind the CFO shot comes from this boss. You're shooting shots early, keeping the boss under iframes, and those early shots from a distance allow you to get an early start on your next charge shot, which allows for more DPS overall, and you're going to see it here. The dude's going to kind of do this um, dance, or no, Tokyo's going to do a dance back and forth to space out these shots and get a head start on every charge shot. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, the way, the reason you saw people uh, waiting, and there's a little bit more waiting going on. I'm not sure what this wait is about, uh, but the previous wait uh, before the Mega Man X2 runners started was just uh, we're giving <clears throat> we're giving each team 30 seconds between each game uh, to get um, to, to just to like have a, a little bit smoother transition between games. Yeah, and not everyone plays. Yeah, not everybody plays on default controls, so everyone has to get their controls set to how they normally play as well. So that that thirty second delay also helps in them getting that set up. It looks like the dude is running a PowerPoint right now. Yeah. Okay, so for Wire Sponge, that's the very first Maverick. Um, in this run, um, they actually still collect all the upgrades because they will need that to get the sure you can later in this game, even though it's any percent and not hundred percent, it's still faster collected in an RTA setting. Mm -hmm. And as you see here on the weather patterns on the first half of the stage are static, but there is some variety when you get to the second half and that can, uh, determine, by a couple of seconds, how faster you get into the uh, the boss area here. Um, clear, as you see here on uh, Akutarax as uh, screen. Ooh, best pattern. And then, yep, and then sunny for the final pattern is what you want to see. And then, as we see on the sponge fight here, um, you want to deal as many dash lemons as possible without triggering the uh, angry phase of Sponge. Uh, he will do that when his HP is below 10. So you get 11 dash shots in. And then hope that he does the attack where he will pull himself up to the scene just right. like that. Mm -hmm. And that... Looks like Tokyo's yep. waiting paid off. Yep. Yep. That allows you to get the rest of the damage in while he's stuck in that move before uh, he lands on the ground. Because once he's on the ground and he's below 10 HP, he will go into the rain dance move. And you have to wait nine seconds before you can damage him again. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So like it is it's in most cases, waiting is gonna be okay. You can get you yeah. can get really hard punished uh, for waiting, but like yeah, waiting's usually okay. And yeah, and you can just trigger the angry sponge if you know he's just not cooperating. Uh, because in a, in a race setting, you just can't wait, you just got to keep moving, take your nine seconds, and move on. Yep, there is some manipulation there too, where if you stay far away from sponge, this increases yeah. the chances of him grabbing the ceiling. So you can do some things around that to yeah. increase your odds. Chances still there. aren't good, it's yeah, like it, it goes from <laughs> one in ten to one in three. It's a gamble no matter what. Tokyo getting the clippy clip and gator leading up to the arm capsule there. And you're going to see him like buffer a wall kick off the bottom of this capsule. That allows you to get movement instantly. Because normally you have to wait for X to fire both of the charge shots during the demo, but you can actually get control right away. Mm -hmm. It's just very barely faster to jump to the right yeah. and, and do a dash speed wall kick off of the bottom of the uh, capsule. But you can also just like hold jump and left uh, and just go down, uh, go yeah. back down the hole. Yeah, this is like kind of the equivalent of Kuanger Sage in the fact that it's pretty technical with only the one weapon that you have. Uh, there is some climbing, not as much, but there's just a lot of utility with the strike chain that's being utilized here. 
Yeah, there are so many minor time saves here that this stage is just outrageously hard to hit everything in. Who gets the triple chain for Tokyo? Very nice. All right, so going into the Gator fight, uh, Gator is weak to Strike Chain. Hitting him with Strike Chain, though, tells his AI to dive into the water. Uh, between his invincibility frames wearing off and him actually being invulnerable and diving into the water, there is a five-frame window in which you can hit him again. So you can see them abusing that five-frame window to just stun lock Gator. Yep. And Tokyo hits it. Very nice. Yeah. Revenge for his birthday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Should have sang it again. <laughs> Even though he probably can't hear us. <laughs> so, uh, Akutarix and Dude coming up oh, on this fight. Oh, so this yeah. Is the first chain. So that's what happens when you miss the chain. Uh, you're at his mercy. You have to wait for him to come back up before you can hit him again. Mm -hmm. The thing about the so first chain is. You can't buffer yeah. your dash, but you need to close the distance to get to him fast enough to get the first chain off. Okay, yeah. that kill from Akutarix was actually really impressive because every time that Gator gets hit with the strike chain, he gets knocked back a little bit. So you have to constantly move slightly forward because that will affect your timing of the chain, which could affect yeah. whether you get the five frame window or not. So that was actually really impressive. And it's also not consistent either. Like yeah, sometimes exactly. he'll get knocked back and sometimes he won't. Yeah, so you yeah. need to react to that really quickly. Yeah. That was uh, that was really good. Getting the one round is a lot easier than recovering anything in that fight. Yeah, no kidding. So after you beat defeat two Mavericks in this game, you'll have a little cutscene where the X Hunters will actually give you an opportunity to fight them for the zero parts. Uh, those are not necessary in any percent. Um, so you do not have to fight them. So as you see I'm with really the... Really climbing from Tokyo yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. So you see with the chain, it allows you to grab these walls and allows X to pull... Get that wall very, very fast. So Tokyo is going to use the double buster shot at the start, a couple of dash lemons, and then he's going to fire that little wheel to get an extra hit in. What? And then he's going to CFO prepare a charge into another double charge. It's really, it's really a hard strat at first. But Tucker's been playing X2 for a long time, and he is a contender to take the world record uh, from Nero when he comes back to this game after he gets the 30 in X1 80%. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's going to be really fun to watch. Yeah, I think he's like five seconds off of both the X1 any percent record and the X2 any percent record. Something yes. like that. Yeah, he's four seconds from the X1 any record. Uh, okay, the dude is pretty low on HP, so he's probably going to be sticking low on the ground here. Yeah. Uh, doing this yeah. safe Ova strat. Yeah. Um, Flame Sag, when he's on the ground, can actually throw the fireballs, and there is an iframe reset that he does right in the middle of that, and that allows you to get some extra hits if you're lucky. Um, and he can do that multiple times in a row as well. Uh, but yeah, it's you rarely it's, save any time for that, unfortunately, because like you have to basically anticipate it to really capitalize. Yeah. yeah. So now that we got the speed burner weapon and we have the strike chain, now you see uh, the full potential of what an X2 speed run is. Uh, a lot of burner usage where you can go really fast, a lot of chains to. Uh, really navigate yourself around tight corners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both of those weapons let you move faster than just dashing. In fact, even uncharged chain moves you faster yep. than just dashing. Yeah. And you'll see a uh, weapon usage management on that burner in this stage as well, because um, here at the end of the stage where Tokyo is fighting the Raider Killer, when he finishes this fight, he should have one unit of speed burner left, and that's just enough to use in this final hallway. 
Good stuff. So coming up on, well, we got the uh, chop register kills here on our other two. Oh, yeah, look at this. Teams. Almost think. <laughs> and Tokyo Ooh, going in the center. Uh, pulled ahead of uh, the dude here a little bit. And oh, then, wow. Okay, so we're going to oh. see an interesting, nice, always lucky. Okay, so Centipede can open with a number of actions. Uh, what you're looking for here is for Centipede to launch his tail. If you slide down the wall at a specific moment when those tail bits are going off screen, then you can cause them to just orbit around you like this, and you can catch a Centipede in an infinite where you can just beat him down. Yeah, it glitches out his AI to where the, uh, the Centipede segments, or the tail segments, can't lock onto him completely. And he can't get out of the move until the tail segments come back to him. So he's kind of stuck in this in this position where that one tail segment can spin around. It can still block your charge shots and your chain. So you do have to watch for that as well. But, oh, mm -hmm. nice. And we get to see it again here. Good for Akaterix mm -hmm. and not so good for the dude. But maybe he will. Nope. The Shurikens jumps around. Is he going to do it now? There we go. Okay. There we go. Oh, oh, he missed he the timing. That's unfortunate. He, yeah, he the only thing that you can do to mess this up is to actually slide too much. If you slide yeah. too much, then the attack will end. Yeah, yeah, it it overcorrects it itself when you slide too far, and then it just it ends the attack normally. So he gets it the second time around. And you also have to be really careful when you slide uh, that that segment isn't in a position where it can constantly hit you because it will damage you as well. And you have no armor yet, so you can find yourself in a precarious spot where you can actually die even when you got the tailspin glitch active. So Tokyo got the mini boss skip in Crystal Snail um, just by burnering at a at a spot before you reach the room, you can fly so fast that the uh, the game can't catch up to him and the camera doesn't lock, which doesn't spawn the boss. I think it's just lag, right? Because you can also do it yeah. with like an uncharged burner. Well, yeah, I think it's yeah. well, one of the two. But like, you have to be going too yeah. fast or you have to have too much lag. Yeah, like the mech can do it, a charged chain can do it. It's kind of crazy how many ways you can do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you tap your thrusters in that right armor so that you can actually get it over to the ledge on the other side so that you can get the the right armor back. Speed to... on the way back, yep. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tokyo gets a uh, crystal snail in the, the stun lock. That's a great boss strat. I love that strat. Yeah. Shout outs to Magu. Old X2 God. Yeah, basically, you're opening that fight with a first frame buffered lemon, mm -hmm. which causes Snail to just attack you. Like, he will spit out his little crystal balls at you because you shot him, as opposed to potentially going into a shell. And from there, you dance back and forth, do a few more buster shots, and then switch into Magnet for the finishing blow. Ooh, unfortunate hit there on the dude. He was about to unleash that burner charge, and he lost it. So yeah, they picked up the uh, the helmet upgrade, which actually, in addition to its little radar that it shows you when you uh, when he comes out of the capsule, it does actually reduce weapon usage for charged weapons, but only by like one third. Uh, when we get the actual complete armor done, and when we get to Moth, it actually will do something else, which we'll cover here very shortly, which does have an impact in the stage that you're in at that point. Let's see if Tokyo gets the bike turn around here. Easy. Nailed it. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty tight window to get that turn around without stopping. Uh, it's made a lot more difficult if you take damage early on in the stage because those drops leading up to the heart tank will slow you down. And because it eats your inputs and completely yeah, throws yeah. you off, it's really easy to just crash at that point. So not taking damage at the beginning is kind of crucial. Yeah. So as you see, another property with the speed burner is that you can actually burner through enemies and not take damage. 
Uh, you have to not be in iframes when you let the charge go to have that happen. Um, if you just took damage for some reason and you let that charge burner go while you're in iframes, uh, you can actually get hit during the burner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you get hit during a burner, it also has some weird properties, like you get yeah. anti-gravity powers. Yeah. <laughs> Jumps that go up to space. Yep. So Tokyo getting the double hits here on Ostrich. Uh, every time Ostrich is hit with the Crystal Hunter, like most bosses, when they get hit with their weakness, they will do a specific action. So when Ostrich gets hit, he's going to jump in the air to do his uh, Sonic Slicer charge move that you can do when you charge the weapon yourself. Um, at the top of that jump, he has an iframe reset. So what Tokyo did, he used a dash limit for two damage. And then right after the iframe reset, he quickly swaps over to Crystal, which is one over from the normal buster, and shoots him with the Crystal for three damage. And then just like in Mandrel stage, when you freeze him with the ice, you can actually hit him again while he's frozen for an additional three damage. And then the cycle just repeats itself. Yeah. It's a, it's a really neat quick kill. I like it. And if you shoot a little light, like right there on Akuterex's screen, the shot will just bounce off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, the period of like second invulnerability. Sorry, this the second period of vulnerability there is very small. It's just like I don't want to put a number on it, but like it's it's I very it's short. Five? I think yeah. it's five frames. Yeah, I think it's five frames as well. Yeah. And it's it's hard to judge because there's no really good visual cue for it. You just most people just feel it out. <laughs> yep. So in Bubble Crab, um, Tokyo used a slope jump. Uh, in addition to the burner to get up to where the heart tank was, and then he used the same tactic, and then he actually used a surface water jump to actually get up to the uh, the sub tank. So that's one of the unique things in X2 and X3 is that X could actually jump off the water. So it's kind of like an extra ledge in a way. <laughs> so he's charging up for the uh, in preparation for this Gameo strat here. That allows him to finish the fight with only nine instances of damage as opposed to ten, and it looks like he gets it perfect. He can only do that strat if Bubble Crab gives him the bubble at the start. If he jumps forward or just walks around, he can't do that strat um, like intended. Yeah, that was a sick fight. Well, he was taking advantage of their Ooh, specifically. Oh, we got uh, neon. Neon, jumps. nice. Yep. Yeah, yeah. that's. The other beauty with the upgrades, um, when you have the leg upgrade and the arm upgrade, you're able to do those neon jumps. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a little and bit of uh, DLC tech that we were, <laughs> we're not expecting to see until the castles. Yeah, yeah we'll for, the, for the crab uh, fight. Uh, oh, well, neons are going to come many times yeah, throughout the castle. Yeah, they will. Uh, but for the crab fight, um, the epicenter of the charged wheel has a lingering hitbox. So that's what Tokyo was taking advantage there of. Yeah, the pedals themselves individually do four damage, but he can get crap to then jump into where the epicenter was for another four damage. Yep. Okay, so he got through, he burnered to set himself up to hit the uh, disc boy with the ice to use it as a stepping stone to get up to the, uh, the heart. Mm -hmm. So as you see on these other two racer screens, what happens if crab doesn't do the intended bubble and you can't do the if you can't do the Gameo strat at all, you have to kind of hope to keep him locked down with the spin wheel. Because if you're above the bubble crab, he's going to always attempt to jump up into you with his little uh, move that he does. All right, let's see if Tokyo does the uh, the canonical manip here. He didn't! Can't, can't believe, believe it. it. And he gets the worst pattern as a result. <sighs> <laughs> Oh, he didn't well, get maybe the not, chaos part. He didn't get, he the, didn't get, yeah. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't get the chaos duck. That's kind of like the next worst. Big um, old dive kick. Yeah. <laughs> so I mentioned it in Crystal Snail, but when you actually finish X's armor in X2 and X3, you'll see, it doesn't really come into play in X3, but it really does come into play in this stage. Uh, X gets 50% reduction on all of his weapon energy usages. So that means he's able to use the flame burner a lot more because it's using less energy. And Moth is actually weak to this weapon. So as you see, he's got like a little less than half 
of its full uh, energy left, but he's not even going to use all of that on this fight because instead of consuming the three units it does uncharged, it's only going to take like one and a half. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. It's the real power of this suit. Like, the air dash is whatever. Neon jumps even or whatever, but like the ammo consumption mm -hmm. is a big deal. Yeah, this stage was a lot less comfortable in the uh, ostrich the, bird days. There's the chaos dunk on uh, Aku's uh, side. <laughs> and the dude and Aku here are pretty neck and neck. It's going to be interesting to see which one of them two will finish uh, X2 on their end. Because Tokyo has got a big lead right now. Yeah, it's kind it of does. expected. So... Yeah. Exactly. One of the things about having such diverse teams is that uh, you do expect certain teams to take advantages um, <clears throat> at at certain points. And so, uh, if I can recall correctly, we are expecting Team Mandriller to basically be in the lead or close to the lead for the entire t uh, for the entirety of this uh, race. Whereas other teams will fall behind slightly. Uh, at different parts and then catch up later uh, mm -hmm. based purely on their personal best yeah in in their totality the teams are only 14 seconds apart from fastest to slowest but team mandriller has an advantage a big one for x133 specifically yeah tokyo making his way through counter hunter one it's a very very difficult stage uh due to a lot of climbing which is tough enough in itself, but you're cycling through a lot of your weapons to make your way up as fast as possible. This is one of the most taxing stages I've ever practiced in any speedrun. Like, if you do five ILs of this stage back to back, your hands just, they're murdered, man. I can't, can't even, even do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's awful. Yeah. Especially when you use the top level strats there with the mm -hmm. with the uh, crystal hunter and the the lots of burner usage toward the end of the of the sage. And another interesting property of the speed burner uh, I forgot to touch on is that it actually grants you a second air dash if you've expended your air dash before you use the burner. So that's a really uh neat thing to have. The dude showing off my favorite trick in this stage, uh, in <laughs> Counter Hunter 1, the uh, reverse neon kick. Nice. <laughs> Basically, if you release the neon charge, like, right as you're doing a kick around the corner, it, this only works in the leftward direction, but you'll, like, kick backwards and go around the corner uh, without having to uh, bounce back and come forward again. So yeah. Tokyo gets elevator skip, so he's coming up on the Sergei's fight here. It's in two parts. The first part is where he's got these uh, turrets that he has to destroy. So you see he's able to use this charge magnet mine to take out those middle tubes even before the fight starts. And he's using the silk shot. He's going to take out the other two. And then while the turrets are... Oh, wow. Yeah. While the turrets <laughs> are... don't have any control over that. Yeah, being destroyed, he's going to charge up the Sonic Slicer. And if you place the Sonic Slicer just right, you can see he's getting two hits per each use. And that's because the hitbox of the ball, when it comes out at first, will just graze his head for five damage. And then the blades will come down a little bit later for the additional five. And then he has to sneak in another hit with either a Sonic Slicer or a, a Flame Burner. Yeah, that fight was pretty rough, but that fight's also impossible. It's really easy to screw up. Yeah. Did and I the second see... round is contingent on the first round, and the first round didn't go well either, so... Did I just see, like, a gravity, that one of those little gravity jumps we were talking about on the dude's side after... Because he it looked like he jumped, and he was stuck in the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, I missed yeah, it, but yeah. Alright, so that's a good elevator skip from the dude, and unfortunately, Dr. Sparks was not able to get it. 
Yeah, it's a fairly <laughs> tricky maneuver there, air dashing under that second to last elevator and then catching the final elevator without bonking your head early or failing jumping out of water or doing something else dumb. Yeah. Tokyo beasting the neons in Counter Hunter 3. So the way that works is during an air dash, um, if you let your double charge go, it actually grounds X for the first frame. And if you press jump on that frame, you're able to jump in midair. And it also grants you your air dash back. So in a couple cases where you want to do double neons, for some reason, you're able to do like a double jump or even a triple jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tricky too, depending on which uh, which charge you're using specifically. Because for the yeah. second charge, you're just pressing shoot. So you can press shoot and jump at the same time, which is easy to do for most people. Uh, for the first one, you need to release shoot and press jump simultaneously. Yep. Akatarix is in some trouble here, but uh, <laughs> thankfully there's a safe mode version of this boss where you can yeah. hang out down here. Yeah, you just have to be careful not to take oh, another hit. No! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, God. Oh, so he's going to have to do the boss again, which is unfortunate, oh, but it's yeah. like arguably still better than using whatever's in his sub tank because you really want to have that for the later part of the game. Yeah, um, Tokyo is going into the refights. Uh, he just defeated Agile with the Shoryuken, which he just got. That's why you want to pick up all the uh, heart tanks, sub tanks, and the armor pieces, is so that you can actually get access to this. Um, unlike X1, you don't have to die multiple times to get it. It's just right here. Ooh. Interesting centipede kill there. Got a, a buster shot off first, but Shoryuken immediately after. Yeah, that's one of the like interesting differences between the Hado from the last game and the Shoryuken here, is that the Shoryuken actually does hit through iframes. It's just that it does an extra 8 bonus damage uh, on the first frame of contact if they're not in iframes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the big difference here. Uh, it's X2, it's more of a positional game when you get to using the Shoryuken, because it's not a projectile weapon, so you have to get up close to some of these fights or you have to force the boss into a position where you can like hit him from below or something like a good couple of examples of that is like bubble crab where he'll actually jump if you put yourself over him or if he jumps for you like that <laughs> yeah if you get lucky the the the, uh, the good but scary pattern yeah yeah because you could freak out when you see the jump and you try to rush the SRK input and you can miss and then he just lands on you. Yeah, it's not good. So, yes, you do have to have full health to use it. So, uh, it's very paramount that you try not to get hit. Because as Fatso and BJW alluded to, that's what those sub tanks are for, is to give you some insurance. Yeah, Shuriken fights are scary because of that. The fact that you need full health to use it, and that you're basically putting yourself in danger every single time by being in melee striking distance. Mm -hmm. So for the Moth refight here, uh, it takes two sure use because uh, the Cocoon will leave you with 12 HP when it transforms into the adult form. And you'll notice that some of these refight rooms are a little different uh, than their uh, first time through. Like the centipede refight room is a lot larger, so it does change uh, how you approach the fight in some cases. Like the wire sponge room is a lot smaller than the original fight. Gator refight's cool. Open up a chain, three more chains, and then sure you can finish off. Perfect. Ooh, yeah, it was kind of close, but uh, yeah, done without major difficulties. We might see Icy Hot from Tokyo uh, when he goes to Ostrich. Uh, that's a really neat fight. Um, he's going to position himself really close to where Ostrich will spawn. And he's buff. He's going to, as you see, he's charging up for a... Uh, yeah, so that's gonna immediately release. Yeah. And then he's oh. Oh, no, 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 no
Yeah, if you're like not close enough, uh, the SRK when it's buffered will not completely kill. But yeah. luckily, SRK doesn't like force. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't knock Ostrich out of his move to force like an AI move or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the 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 jump there was actually forced by the crystal that was yep. used to start the, yeah. whole, the whole trick. So uh, there was no serious danger. So but I guess we comes... just wanted to make some noise. <laughs> oh, okay. Tokyo oh, didn't get no. the yellow snail, but this oh, is an easy cleanup. So now... Ooh, so there, it could have gotten really bad there because he was doing Crystal Snail has this move where he slows down time, um, yeah. and <laughs> that, that, that can that can spell a lot of extra lost seconds. Yeah, that so yeah, boss order kind of kind of matters to an extent in X two uh, because you do want to save kind of like the really hard uh, fights for last. <laughs> Dude, I have some issues here. <laughs> yeah, you really want to clean diagonal. Um, You're sure you can just take a clean diagonal? It's actually a one hit kill a boss. Yeah, it's, it is damage per contact frame. It's not just thirty two outright. Yeah, it's not even per contact frame. It's like it's every like every, every other frame. Yeah. frame. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the damage is different per boss too. It's really weird. Yeah, like if, if Agile moves a specific way at the start of that fight, it actually deals oh, yeah, one damage. One damage is great. <laughs> it's so funny. Tokyo so, is very far ahead here. It feels like, oh yeah, we're past the bro fist and into like the handshake territory. The upper yeah, territory. They're like holding each other's biceps. <laughs> bro chin. <laughs> oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, that that might be the so this okay. is rough. This, this is, is zero point is all right. something you really want to have it on the rails. And okay, when you don't, things become bad. Tokyo doesn't have any more sub tank energy, so if he gets hit here, this is a good chance for uh the other racers to catch up. Yeah. Yeah. Either this goes really well for Tokyo or he loses maybe a minute. Who knows? Um, but yeah. Just see. What so what happened there is that you fight Zero because you didn't get all of his uh, Zero parts in the 8 Maverick section of the game. So by doing a sure you into that room, it ignores the fact that the game tries to force X over to the left side of the room. So X is just able to sure you past the... Uh... Oh, here we go. Okay. And... Oh, oh no! Well, good for the other teams. All right, so this is what happens when you don't have sure you. You lose a lot of time to doing the boss uh, the hard, the long way. He needs to stop taking a billion damage too, because this could get a lot worse really fast. Yeah, exactly, because <laughs> the uh, the Sigma projectiles actually deal a lot of damage. The armor doesn't really do what it's supposed to do in this game a lot of the time, so he needs to really watch himself uh, yeah. because, it, because I think it only reduces one damage. Oh from any yeah because it's if he dies he has to do the whole stage again there's no checkpoint yeah and this stage from start to finish with the shore you can is just under two minutes so yeah yeah the very end of that fight actually showed off a cool iframe reset when uh when mm -hmm. sigma transitions between attacks uh yeah. like particularly the slash attack then he yep. can uh, lose his iframes at that point and now, so we get to do the uh, wireframe fight without very much health. But thankfully, there are actually enemies here that can uh, drop health and ammo. Yeah, but in addition, Tucky has to avoid getting hit by that beam from the virus. Uh, yeah, because it does a lot. Because that deals a lot. I think it's so, four. Yeah, yeah something three like three or four. So the only weapon that damages virus other than Buster is the strike chain. And it causes lag when the chain comes out, so this gets really laggy, especially with all those enemies and dust sprites. Yeah, Tokyo really wishing he were on emulator right now. Oh, and the <laughs> dude also took damage as well during the Zero fight. Uh, I don't know if he has uh, subtech energy. All right, uh, GG Tokyo. All right. Yeah. Got him. So Akuterex, it does have full health right now, but let's see if he gets to the Zero fight. Uh, he can make up a lot of ground here on the dude. Okay, very nice. 
So Zero's hitbox is actually too small to one shot with the Shoryuken. So you'll see that Zero dashes, you know, to the left, and then he tries to come back, and then his iframes from the first Shoryu are expired, so he's able to Shoryu him again. Akutarex can actually pull ahead yeah, here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. The dude getting a pretty friendly pattern, though. He's not taking a lot of damage. Oh, there's another double hit there with the uh, Sonic Slicer that Colonel Fatso just mentioned. Yeah, so you expect you like you do the charge shot, and if you get two hits, it's eight damage. But he got 12 there because one of them came during that iframe reset. Okay, Ar Aku here's got some insurance. Ooh, he missed the first one. He's got one more shot. He has to wait for him to teleport down. Oh. Wow! Wow. No one keeps the shore you can through the end. Brutal game. Yeah, I wasn't a. Uh, yeah, you could just actually walk to either direction, and then when he teleports, he, he doesn't actually hit you. But mm -hmm. that's unfortunate. But yeah, I think that's the safest oh, method nice. of doing that backup. Just nice. slowly walking in one direction and letting him yeah. teleport behind you, and then doing like a half circle Aku. back. Yeah, Aku also got a double hit there with the Sonic Slicer. When Wolverine Sigma is like low damage, is is low HP, then you'll start spamming this. Oof. And as you notice, you uh, and, virus, and as you notice, Virus Sigma doesn't have a health bar. He actually has like double the health. Yeah, he's got 54 HP. He can only have 32 times with Strike Chain. I, I've got to say, guys, I'm worried about Akuterix's health right now. Yeah, that's, uh, well, that's pretty scary. So when Virus gets into that red phase, you see that he can actually disappear and try to reappear on top of you. So fast. He, he's oh, playing on emulator, I forgot. Look at this. Emulator, I guess. Top left. <laughs> this is the real relay advantage. Oh, oh god, oh god. I, oh. I hear the cop and dance music playing in the background right now. I don't know. Oh, oh god. God. the drop! Clutch drop. That that's what you want to see. Yep. This is but so yeah. I can't keep up. <laughs> so Virus actually has like a specific pattern. He'll he'll go across the screen with that beam, and then he'll try to move like to where you were at that at that particular moment, and then just try to spawn the uh, enemies on top of you. So you can actually manipulate the fight to an extent. Oh, don't get green. No, don't do it. He's, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Okay. <laughs> That's enough. All right. So now we can start talking about X3, where uh, <laughs> Barry has been in the uh, game for an entire stage. Um. <laughs> yeah, Darren uh, is for Team Mandriller. We got Berlin Dude for Team Green Biker Dead, and we got Laseki for Team Beat Boot. It's already time for the best song in the game. Yeah. Tunnel Rano. Oh, you know the lyrics too sick. <laughs> you even make up your own if you want. <laughs> pretty yes. pretty is, easy. Um, so we're starting with Tunnel Rhino because uh, basically, like... Yeah, there's, and yeah, there's 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 a couple mandatory revisits in this game as well, um, and this is just the route that provides the fewest of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Tunnel Rano first is basically a thing because it's a very useful weapon as well, but it's also required to get a lot of the other upgrades. Uh, so it's. A little different than the other categories where you do Buffalo first. Because you do have to come back here later to get uh, two of the three items in this stage. So we didn't touch on it yet, but the X3 intro is basically no RNG, just like X2, until you get to the boss. And the boss itself is very easy. Um, there are a few changes between X2 and X3, like Dash Lemons only affect normal enemies uh with the exception of like the intro boss they do do extra damage but uh they don't affect bosses in this game 
Like you, they don't deal two damage off their meters like they do in the other X one and X two. Mm -hmm. And you see, we got playable zero for the first time. Uh, you'll see that a little bit later when we play uh, the later mm -hmm. X games. Yeah, Darren fighting the first of many bosses in this game that will move left and right. <laughs> That's another difference in this game. This game has uh, some very interesting boss patterns. Yeah, I think yeah, the game I think was so rushed that the AI patterns were incomplete. And another little quirk about <laughs> yeah, this, this boss in particular. If you yeah. die, if you die before getting to this boss, then the patterns become different. Yeah, if you die <laughs> after the midpoint, but before you uh, beat the stage, yeah, uh, Rano actually gets a little bit more hostile because he's actually got a couple more attacks that he can do. But if you get to him without dying like Darren just did, all he does is goes back and forth. And the only other thing that he can do, he can just kind of like fake you out mid dash and stop and try to turn around or keep going in the same direction. So that's really the only thing you have to really watch for. And plus, he's doing the CFO strat that we've mentioned a few times already, because that still applies uh, in this game as well. So now we're doing Buffalo, and now he's got the drill that allows him to actually get the heart tank here without a revisit. And what he did there, he actually placed the drill over the block, and he went to the left a little bit towards uh, that little rod armor platform. The idea is that if you spawn the blocks on top of the drill, like, it's kind of akin to that shotgun ice strat in Mandrill mm -hmm. in X1. It just completely destroys the hitbox immediately, and you don't have to wait for the drills to destroy the, the blocks blocking uh, your path. You'll see that, hopefully, in Neon Tiger, because the drill is actually needed to open the path to get to the buster upgrade. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of drill in that stage in particular, especially oh, because it like erases the uh, the contact hitbox for enemies as you place it in them. Yeah, Darren got first trot bootless as well. Yeah. So this game has slope jumps as well, uh, like all the X games. But also on top of that, it has facing left on ice jumps, which do the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but to get that boot to get that bootless trick that he did, he just did a double kick off the wall there and. The spacing that that extra double kick gives actually puts X in a position that he can just grab the ledge like an Iceless in X1. It's really a nice uh, strat because it saves you from having to double back after getting the dash boots to get it, you know, the normal intended way. Mm -hmm. So a thing about the AI on Buffalo is that if you're in the air when he turns around, uh, he'll do that. So you're able to do the CFO strat since you have a wider boss room. And timing the air dash to keep X in the air so that Buffalo will continue to be in the stun lock. Yeah, the bosses are actually getting stupider. Rhino at least moved left and right. Here, Buffalo only moves left. <laughs> Even though there's a wall right there. I think I think Buffalo is peak X3, though. <laughs> like, there's, there's, very, there's very few... Um, bosses of that of that level. Yeah. So yeah, for we haven't got to it yet, but our runners, uh, I think, yeah, I've already touched on this, but their times are kind of spread out here for X3. Darren is actually a second off the world record with a 44.35. Lisecki has a high 46. And Berlin has a high 49. One second of actually being the world's best player. Yeah. <laughs> so, like X2, X3 also has a cutscene after you beat two of the Mavericks. Um, and also, there's a trio of of antagonists that you ha uh, will have to fight at some point. Uh, Bit, Bite, and Val. Um, Bit and Bite actually appear randomly during the course of the eight Mavericks. You do have to mandatorily fight them to progress the game. Val is actually hidden in a secret stage, which you can access by finding his uh, capsule uh, teleporter. Um, but his capsule teleporter only appears in three of the eight stages. But that capsule only appears if the stage has yet been cleared. So Buffalo is actually one of those three stages. So that has been like kind of removed. He won't show up there.
Yeah, I think it's worth noting that although bit and byte are random, there is some structure to it. Bit will appear yep. somewhere between stages three and five of the Mavs, and byte between stages six and eight. Yep. So, um... Oh! Ow! Oh, oh, that's the thing that can happen. That, that skill will actually like shoot you back at a really yeah. high speed if you don't move exactly right on it. Yeah. Norm yeah, you can dash, jump off the base of it if you land on it immediately to not have the ice physics kill you. But then, yeah, you can just just jump over like that. So, yeah, that's the neat thing about the ice in that stage is that it actually can shoot you really forward, really fast. Yeah, or really backward, really fast yeah. into the ice, yeah. into the spikes. It's a really fun stage for keeping momentum and stuff. So... We missed it, but I think Darren got the uh, the 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 strat for with the drill that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, he did. Um, and now he's got the Buster upgrade and the leg upgrade, so he's able to climb ladders really, really fast. Yeah. And he's also got access to the aforementioned neon jumps we touched on in X2. And in this category in particular, you're going to see a lot of neons uh, because they are just utilized in a ton of places to save mm -hmm. very, very little bits of time. Yeah, so like right here. Yep. Just taking a very slightly more direct route to the heart there. So that's the double neon that I talked about earlier where you do both of the neon jumps in succession to get like that triple jump feel and that gets you a lot of height and distance over to get that heart tank without having to use the ledge. Like we got uh, Berlin dude doing uh, bootless list. Yeah. <laughs> so Neon Tiger actually has a soft weakness is with this frost shield, but you also notice that every time that Tiger is actually doing an attack, his iframes have a reset. Oh, and he got like a no charge Tiger. That's really yeah, good. Yeah, that's crazy. So at the very start of the fight, he had a charge frost shield ready, and he's going to use that at the start for two damage. And then he's just going to go back to Buster. Um, if you fire a charge shot at Neon Tiger, if he's just standing there, he's going to block it with his like his shield. He'll just pull up his defense and block the shot. So you fire the charge shot while he's either in the air, on the wall, or firing the race flasher on the ground. And you just alternate between mashing a little bit and then charging up for a Buster as he does an attack. But then once he gets his health really low, he can go into like his uh, desperation attack where he'll he'll turn gold and try to charge at you. Let me uh, mute myself for just a moment. Ray Splasher is one of the most unsatisfying weapons I've ever used in the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everything okay. about it. It's like random pew pew projectiles in every direction. Yeah, and very weak. Yeah. This is, uh, in this category, like in most other categories, you would have uh, some extremely powerful weapons to use in this stage. Uh, the Triad Thunder and the, what's it called? Spinning, spin Blade or something like that. Yes, Spinning Blade. I'm back now. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, <clears throat> in this category, we have neither of those. So uh, some, of the, so, some of the platforming and some of the weapon usage is a little bit more... Um, I don't know, subdued because of that. You know, yeah, quite the, as powerful. Yeah, the drills there actually have a that utility where if you fire the drill, it actually disables your hitbox for a short amount of time, which allows you to dash through them. You saw that both on Darren's side and on uh, uh, Laseki's side. Yeah, it's used everywhere in Neon Tiger. Alright, here's another good boss with another good pattern. Yeah. yeah. This was a shout out to Donkey Boys, I think. <laughs> so, um, if a Maverick is hit with their true weakness weapon, as like right here, they get an extended period of invincibility frames. So, um, for Darren, he can actually charge up a regular Buster shot and then. Once the race blasters are off screen, he can actually swap the Buster and hit him with a 
uh, normal Buster shot, provided Beetle doesn't go angry immediately and tries to do the uh, the rushing uh, charge on him. And then, like when he spawned the uh, little gravity well there, it actually that actually speeds up his iframes. Uh, actually, so he's able to get the hits a little bit faster. As you see, the ice is a very powerful weapon right there. Uh, it's a weakness for a lot of the mini bosses, and it does a lot of damage. One of the reasons why Buffalo is done so early anyway is just because it's a very good weapon. And it actually forces health drops when enemies that are on the ground or on the ceiling are destroyed by it. It's really... It's a really nice thing for like new players. So if they're having like trouble getting through areas without dying, they can use this weapon to get health to stay alive. Ooh, and this, this is one of the unfortunate. It's like impossible. <laughs> so we'll unfortunately, uh, yeah, bits here in Seahorse, so he's not able to use the weakness on every fight, but he gets like a perfect bit fight with the new strats. He's using the charged ice uh, shield there twice, and that gets bit right at 1 HP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, closing off there with Buster is really important. You don't want these guys to explode. And then right there, he just did a charge ice under the water to get that little uh, iceberg-like uh, platform there, and then he actually turns around to get at the moment the, uh, the ice block disembarks from the Buster, so that he can wall kick off of it. It's really a sick strat. <laughs> so since Seahorse uh, is where Bit appeared, he can't use ice on this mini boss because uh, he has to save the rest of his ice for Seahorse himself. So he has to bust her out this fight. So as you see there on uh, Team Green Biker Dude's screen, uh, what the ice does does that extra two damage if tiger actually went angry you can actually charge up the ice while he's invincible and get a two damage that way when he comes out of the iframes Ooh, one attack you don't want to get hit by is that cat uh that claw attack that deals a lot it's oh one hp uh, uh. oh he's not out of it yet uh. <laughs> Kill him already, please! Please! Shoot him. please. No! Okay. 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 So Darren's going for the two cycle here. Oh, Ooh, I'm just short. But it's not a, not by a significant amount, so. So another thing in X3 is that on some of these bosses, their iframes are sort of non existent for some reason. In the case of Seahorse, uh, what. Darren did. He shot him with the frost shield at the top of his jump there. And when Seahorse lands, he's going to stay stunned for a period of time. But also that those uh, 60 frames of invulnerability kick in when he gets hit. So when those 60 frames run out, before he jumps out of, before he comes out of a stun, there's like a small little period of time where he actually gets no eye frames from taking damage from a weapon. So he just spams the weapon up close to him to get that damage in really fast. And then once uh, Seahorse jumps, he can actually do that again. Yeah. And that's not a unique feature to that boss. Like, Scissor Shrimper has it too, right? Yeah. yeah. See, that's so enough. The one thing about X3 is that there's a lot more emphasis on the vertical sections because there's a lot more stages that have them. So, in addition to the side dashes, you have an up dash. And you can also neon jump off of a vertical dash, so your vertical movement is actually really enhanced. Mm -hmm. So you saw Darren get like a neon jump off of an up dash when his normal neon strat there didn't quite work out. Yeah, there's just way more platforming in this game in general compared to X1 and X2. It's a much longer game. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to execute at top level. Just like missing these neons can cost you some time. Yeah. Darren freeing our robot friend for later usage. Yeah, yeah. you get. You don't have to touch it or anything. Yeah. You only have to release it. Yeah, in this game you've got like four rod armors that you can get, but you can't use any of them until you free the initial one right there in the hangar. Um, 
now that he's freed the uh, Chimera right armor, he'll be able to use that in the next couple stages. Okay, hey. so Bit appears, or Bite appears here for Darren. Thick boy. So Charge Drill will deal uh, five damage. So he's going to use that. Just hit him with the tip of the drill so that the drill doesn't, like, despawn. Or if he takes damage, he loses the drill charge. And then right there at the end, he swaps off of the uh, weakness to just hit him with the buster shot. And that's because uh, if the last hit that Bitter Bite takes is from their true weakness weapon, they will go into their explosion sequence, which will cost uh, about 15 seconds. And if you do both, then it's even worse because you have to fight yeah. uh, an alternative right. boss in the Doppler stages, which yeah. is just ugh, it's just awful. Yeah, just yeah, just the tip. Yeah, exactly. That's actually important <laughs> because uh, a lot of these weapons have a hitbox on them too. That if like if you get the the drill too far in, like it'll despawn, or if X takes damage, just like I said, the drill disappears. So this Blast Hornet fight is actually very interesting because uh, it uses uh, a very weird combination of uncharged black hole, uh, charged black hole, and then frost shield. Um, yeah. Basically, you you use the uncharged black hole while you're charging up the next charged one, and then you switch away from the charged black hole as soon as it comes out, right? Uh, and yeah. the reason that is that uh, then you can switch to another weapon, right? <clears throat> yeah. And you're um, not stuck in your animation anymore. And actually, uh, Hornet loses iframes uh, yeah. when, he, when he hits the ground. And yeah. you, can, you can hit him again with the Frost Shield for an extra tick of damage. Yeah, when you release the uh, the Gravity Well, you have to wait for Hornet to get like stunned first before you can actually pause and cancel the weapon. And then that actually stops the uh, the gravity animation, and it just pulls Hornet to the ground. It, it just cancels that effect immediately. And yeah, and he's he's still vulnerable to a hit after he comes out of the gravity well. So you hit him with the frost shield once, and then you quickly swap back over to to the gravity well and just start the cycle again, because the uncharged gravity well will also interrupt Hornet and deal four damage. Darren utilizing those neon jumps to bypass the spiked elevator sections, and he got a nice neon kick after getting the heart tank. So, if you don't know how to do neons, you can get to the armor by just having the charge gravity well right there. There's a little platform that can only be moved with gravity or anti gravity. So you just stand on that little platform, let the charge gravity well go, and it'll actually carry you up. But it's really slow. So Darren's approaching the ride armor pod where he'll actually use it to get access to the sub tank. And then after he collects the sub tank, he's going to charge up the charge frost shield and use that as a shield to not only protect himself from getting damage, but also it's going to force uh, health drops from these enemies here. Mm-hmm. As you notice, every single one of them is dropping health because the enemy is touching the ground or the ceiling. And that will fill a sub tank, which could come into play a little later in the run. Not necessarily, but I mean, uh, it's there in case he needs to prevent a death because deaths are really costly in this game because the, the stages are longer and the checkpoints are even more far apart so darren is using the cfo strat here on catfish he's alternating between the acid burst and the regular normal charge shot and then right there before catfish jumps to the middle for his desperation phase he hits him with a drill to stun him so that he doesn't get his jolt because you see that charge drill is dealing three damage instead of two which would what would happen if he got the jolt the his resistance to the drill would be a little bit better 
So that just makes the second phase of the fight a little faster, so you're able to get less hits that way. And also, the, the drill weapon actually consumes energy for as long as it's out. Like, when it initially comes out, it doesn't use any energy. But if it stays out for, like, say, two seconds, you'll start seeing it consume energy. So if he just stops the charge and recharges it, it doesn't even use any ammunition, hardly. This is our uh, final stage of Mavericks for mm -hmm. uh, Darren here already. Yeah. I guess we shouldn't say it's already. <laughs> it's been like 25 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I mentioned before that you have to, uh, you can face Val, uh, during the eight Maverick section and you actually have to for a hundred percent here. Um, we actually need to destroy Val to actually get access to the Z Saber in Doppler two. Um, his capsule actually appears in, uh, Volt Catfish's stage as well at the very start of the stage, but we don't go there because we don't have the Tri Thunder, which actually helps. Uh, in the Vile stage, protect yourself from the falling debris uh, when he climbs the uh, elevator section here. Yeah, that section is pretty insufferable without Triad Thunder. Yeah, so as you see, the Triad Thunder, when it's out, it's providing XA with a little bit of protection. And you can actually extend that usage uh, for how long the Triad stays out. You'll see that after the Vile fight. But this Val fight is very, very tricky, very, very compl complex in the structure and how it's done. But the basic mm -hmm. idea is that when the charge race flasher pod comes out, it will deal five damage. Like they're right there. And then what Darren is doing, he's firing the race flasher and then he's canceling it with an air dash and firing another one. And then he's using a CFO charge just like that. Mm hmm. So if this fight goes exactly uh, exactly right, you'll see something really goofy at the end. Yeah. Ooh, um, that... That won't spoil it. That didn't look right. Uh, ooh, okay, so actually yeah. he might be... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Who's supporting? Um, so, <laughs> now I can spoil it because it's unlikely to be happening on anybody else's screen. Uh, at the end of that fight, you will actually it, uh, use the last charged race flasher with uh, zero ammo left. It's like yeah. half an ammo. You have yeah. half an ammo, but it looks like nothing. Yeah, it appears it'll look like he's out, but there's actually a half a unit, but the energy bar only displays full units, so there's a little quirk in the in the uh, program there that allows it to work. Because the charge race flasher pod consumes two and a half of energy, whereas the uncharged only consumes one. So here, you see Darren's extending the triad by pressing the shot button at least four times before the electrodes discharge, and that allows it to invert the triangle and continue it. He only he can do that up to four times, but you only do it up to three because that's as long as you need it. And it actually can cause additional lag because with that falling bridge section, there's a lot of lag. Yeah, you can see the lag with the timer slowly counting down there. Yeah. So we're coming up on the Crush Crawfish Quick Kill. Um, similar to Seahorse, when he's hit with his true weakness weapon, he's going to have a period of time where the iframes will not spawn when he's hit with the, uh, the, the weapon. In the Charge Triad thunder version case it's actually an earthquake punch uh where x will punch the floor and then the triad will come or the electricity will come out later um but it's two seconds of time in which you've got to get this punch off and then you'll watch his health you'll see how easy this is yeah this guy just this is one of my favorite quick kills in oh, any okay. it's just like <laughs> every frame now, there was never any hope it's very important to let Crawfish run his whole distance that he does at the start there, because when he tries to run back, he's going to run that same full distance. So if you try to just rush him down with the first initial shot, 
when he come, if you go over him to do the earthquake punch, he's going to catch you and grab you out of the uh, animation. So that's, yeah, very, that's really a very key point. As much time as possible to uh, to get that punch out. So I guess uh, at the end of the these eight Mavericks, we can give an update on our other runners. Uh, we've got yep. Aqu uh, sorry, Berlin dude. Berlin dude is uh, <coughs> is uh, just at the end of Volt Catfish stage here, and then we've also got uh, Laseki uh, about a stage ahead of him in the uh, in the yeah. vial sort of sub stage. Yeah, Laseki's probably going to do the older strat where you use your two double neon shots at full power for two damage. And then you're actually going to do two more additional charge shots. And then you can actually use Uncharged Race Blaster the rest of the way. It's basically the equivalent of the any percent strat. Mm -hmm. So as you see what Laseki's doing, he's actually jumping at, at a specific time. Similar to Buffalo, where if you're in the air... Uh, it doesn't really do anything, but those punches are timed rhythmically, so you just have to, you know, jump and then fire at the right time. So now we got Berlin Dude is just done with Catfish. Uh, mm -hmm. We got Laseki still just winding down that fight with Vile. Looks good. You really, really, really don't want to miss your last shot. Like, yeah. if you do that, then you gotta basically take a death and farm up ammo. Um, well, yeah. Yeah, if you scare off Vile, yeah, you can't get the Saber unless you reset. Um, back on Darren's side real quick, uh, he's gonna charge up this Tria Thunder. When he does the Earthquake Punch, he pauses and swaps off the weapon to get out of the, the animation that the Earthquake Punch does, because you can't move until that's over. So just by pausing and swapping off that weapon, he's able to stop the animation because the very first frame of it will fry the ropes to, to drop the rocks down. And there's a reason why the Tunnel Rhino revisit is last. is because of this item upgrade. Uh, anytime that you enter an 8 Maverick stage with this item, uh, with this helmet upgrade, it will spawn the, a map of the stage, which costs 5 seconds. So the only time you want to see it is when it has to be displayed during the, the demonstration. So just like I said in X2, you get 50% item or weapon usage reduction for all your special weapons, but it doesn't matter in this in this game because you're not using all of your wet all of one weapon. Um, so sadly, it doesn't really have a utility in the speedrun, but but it's still there nonetheless for for those that like to play this game casually. They've got the extra knowledge of knowing that they've got extra weapon energy to work with. So for Rex 2000, he's going to unleash this charged spinning blade, deboost off the face, and do an air dash and a uncharged blade. And yeah. the blade will arc back and hit him in the back. And he's yeah, dead. you deliberately delay the kill of that mini boss in order to get further on the screen. Because yep. uh, X would have to walk all that distance to zero otherwise. So here coming up is the gold armor capsule. Uh, we haven't touched on it, but there's actually four pink capsules in X3 in addition to the four blue armor capsules, and those are enhancement chips to further boost one of your four armor parts. Uh, but this is 100%. So there's actually this capsule here. If you don't collect either of the four enhancement chips early on, you can actually get to this one and get all four at once. But just like the Hadoken and Shryuken, it does have a requirement. You do have to get all the other upgrades and items and you also have to have full health to even spawn the capsule to begin with. So, um, you notice that just before Darren got to that capsule, he had the uh, charged uh, frost shield out to guarantee some health drops to ensure that he gets the, uh, the capsule to spawn. Uh, the God Car Machine fight here, very easy and 100%, but you got to be careful because you can die if you're a little slow or you get unfortunate mishits just like that because this orb attack that he does when you're behind him deals a lot of damage 
What a majestic creature. Yeah, I love that pose, actually. <laughs> so yeah, as long as you don't destroy both Bit and Bite, you will fight that boss, as opposed to the Press Disposer, Disposer which is a lot more difficult. <laughs> yeah, and also much slower. Yeah. Um, the four the four further enhancements uh, that you get via the goat armor, you get a second air dash, which you get to see quite a bit here in this stage. You'll get an additional armor reduction while the uh, you're, you've took damage. You'll see a little red uh, shield appear around X. You also get health regeneration when you're standing still. And that means you just have to stand still for five seconds, and then you'll start regaining health. And then for every three seconds after, you'll you'll regenerate another unit. And that actually extends into filling up your sub tank. So if you just like take a bathroom break for like two or three minutes, you'll come back, and all four of your sub tanks will be full. <laughs> oh, we get the double oh, zero. Nice. nice. Okay. Nice. So the trick to that is that Mosquitoes has some randomness when he collapses onto Zero. He'll hover around waiting to deliver the finishing blow to Zero. But if you can get him over to the wall like that and kill him with the Saber, uh, that actually skips all of that entirely. And it actually, uh, I think, yeah, you Zero has to get captured on purpose to set that up. Which is risky in itself because Zero only has one life, and if he dies on that fight, you lose the saber, which is sad, but as long as you know how to do that, it's fine. And another crucial part to the end of the stage is what Darren's doing. It's called the elevator skip. Now, elevator skip has actually been figured out by Akiteru um, a little bit. It's actually dependent on if the snail that uh, you see there is in the first slot of memory, because that generally how the explosion gets loaded into the game to begin with. If the helots are occupying that space, the uh, the explosion sequence isn't. And he oh he gets he gets the slower <laughs> he gets the slower version of Ellie Skip, but that's really nice because um you get to see that what happens um it doesn't exp he do you don't see the explosion and um, when X Air dashes down off the screen like that. <laughs> it's, it just waits for the game to uh, load in the next stage. The faster one is where you just stay grounded and it immediately plays the fanfare and he teleports out normally. Uh, the only other time we see that at a GDQ stage was when Z-Wing ran this uh, at 2014. So if you go back and watch that, it's a really good watch. For a long time, we didn't know how that worked, but thanks to Aki Terror, we now have a general idea of what we need to do. And you only have one shot to pull that off when you do the Ellie skip. If you fail the climb and you fall back down, the snail will actually end up spawning in the first slot of the memory, and explosion skip isn't even possible. If you die, the same thing happens. Uh, it actually resets the uh, memory. So... Darren is doing the high-level strats here. Um, what he's doing, he's using something called the Hypersea Conservation uh, strats, where you can actually skip the second shot of the Hypersea by wall-kicking before he actually fires the shot, which will skip uh, the animation, which also skips the two units of consumption that that shot also does. And when he gets ready to do the Saber, he throws the saber out and quickly swaps from Hyper C to Buster since they're right next door to each other. And since they're the same weapon, it doesn't interrupt the animation, but by doing so it gets that Hyper C weapon gauge off the screen so that it doesn't consume two additional units of ammo. So in effect, you're able to do the Hyper C saber with only using two units instead of like six because what the Hyper C does, you're able to fire charge shots continuously without having to charge up. So what he does for like these first six refots, he's going to do the Hyper C trick. And then as he's charging up for the second Saber normally, he's taking damage to recharge that Hyper C so that it's full for the next refight. 
a little disrespect to the move there, showing off that actually the saber um, it comes out, it already has a hitbox. And when it's yep. behind X, then that's the fastest you can hit an enemy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, so yeah, these strats here uh, make the the boss rush really, really fast if you can able to pull it off. So as you notice, that that hyper C is full at the start of each of these refights, and that also actually reroutes the re, uh, refight order. So normally you would like do crawfish and like seahorse early, but now those are being delayed to the end because you're going to use the damage boosting while doing their quick kills to recharge your hyper C. So, yeah, the explanation was a little tricky there to get out, but once you see how it, the first couple fights start, then you'll see uh, how it all comes together. So on Volt Catfish, though, he's doing the same thing, but he's actually... Uh, He's actually expending two hyper C sabers there because he's going to use the rest of the uh, the fights to charge up for the hyper C. So a couple other notes that I want to get out there about the hyper C is that if you take damage for some reason, like before you throw the saber out, uh, it actually resets your shot order, so you have to do the uh, the first shots all over again. So. In a way, um, you kind of don't want to get hit, but in addition, you don't need full health to use the Saber, unlike the Shoryu in X2 and the Hadoken in X1. So that's kind of nice, but when you're using these high-level high strats like Darren's doing, it's very paramount that you don't take damage, unless, you're, unless you need to to recharge the Hyper C. So you see he's using the... Uh, the seahorse and the crawfish quick kills as before. And you'll see him, uh, you'll see Darren take damage off Doppler because um, depending on what you're taking damage from, it will recharge your hyper C at, at like double or triple the rate. Because <coughs> I think if you hit Doppler, if you take damage off Doppler, it recharges your Hyper C by like two units. But on some of the other enemies, it only recharges it by one. So you notice that Darren is almost out of health, but thanks to the goat armor, and uh, he should be alive, and he'll have Doppler killed very, very quickly. Oh, he almost died there. Luckily, the saber got to him first. So yeah, that was a very nice rush. That's basically what you want to see. X will be alive with like one health left. World's best. That's a really interesting yeah. strat there on uh, on the fight itself as well. Like I'm I'm not really familiar with uh, uh, with the way that he managed to skip the recharge phase. Yeah, um, well, for that Doppler fight, he comes in with the just the X-Buster Saber without the Hyper-C. And the Hyper-C is full after he takes, like, that second hit. So then he's able to do the Hyper-C shot skip on the second Saber that actually kills him. So mm -hmm. he has to, to de-boost here off of Captain America. And you'll hear a, a big, loud, not a loud, but a high-pitched chime that signifies that the Hyper-C is full. Yep. And that's when he can actually swap to it. You can't use the Hyper C unless it, it is full. If it is not completely full, uh, you can't use it. And also, what's very important, if you have it active, like it is now, if you were to swap off of that by accident, you can't use Hyper C if you go back to it. Unless it's full. But So hopefully we can see the quad neon strat here. Oh... oh. His face is so small. Yeah, so you see there, Darren's trying not to get hit because he had the saber ready to go. If he were to get hit there, he has to shoot the first two shots again before you can saber. And... Oh, the Berlin dude riding the snail up. Oh, no. Bad day. Look at it go. It's trying so hard. 
It's actually not trying hard at all. Yeah. It's kind of leisurely getting up there. <laughs> So time is coming for Darren here when he loses control at the top of the climb. <laughs> and up oh, a little up dash there for swag GG. <laughs> Very good run. Uh, I'm curious to see what that actual time was. Yeah, I think that was broader than the X1 and X2 runs prior on this team. So just to touch up on what's happening over on Lasecki's side, um, I think he's using the old charge up to Saber twice uh, strat, where you just charge up to green uh, and then ditch your two shots and then hit him with the Saber twice, which is, you know, uh, the standard the standard strat. And one thing I forgot to mention, the Hyper C, when you, uh, or when you get the Saber initially from zero, it actually replaces your highest level charge. So if you, if this were like any percent, this, you could get access to the Saber really, really quickly because uh, you just charge up to gold and it's green instead. Man, look at these graphics in X4. Completely different world. <laughs> Ooh, we got to see what the range saber does there on Hornet there for Berlin. So if you hit a, a boss up close with the saber, it deals 16 damage. And it's one, one instance of damage. If you were to hit a boss with the beam like that, it deals 8 damage initially, and then it deals 4 damage 3 times. So, yeah, the ranged uh, saber, the beam there, deals more, but the hits are slower. Or they come, like, a little bit, like, spread apart. And a neat little trick here. Ooh, you see right there. Uh, Hyper C is not considered a weapon in the sense that you have to charge up to use it so if you throw the hyper c shots at, at tiger he does not block him now if you were to throw the cyber if you were just on the x buster he would block it but if it's on hyper c he doesn't block it so it's a little quirk with that as well So we have uh, Tichi uh, playing X4 for Team Mandriller. And we'll have uh, the other two runners coming in for X4, Ariel and Kiyoshi, really soon. And the category for X4 is 0 100%. So after the intro uh, of X4, uh, we're going to Jet Stingray first. Um, X4 is really unique is that you have two separate stories. You have and the X story and you have the Zero story. Um, and each have their own unique things. Um, with Zero, you, get ha you have to get up close to a lot of enemies to deal damage to them. Whereas X is kind of like your range fighter. You, he can hit stuff from far, from far away. Um, the upgrades are in the similar place. So, like, uh, heart tanks and, you know, sub tanks, weapon tanks. They're all in the same location. Uh, for Stingray, um, also in X4, these stages are divided into uh, two acts. You have the first half and the second half. So that's a little bit unique in uh, in this game. 
Berlin is getting ready to finish off, uh, or I'm sorry, Lasecki is about to finish off X3 for his uh, team. Darren says that was a 4501. Wow, nice run. <laughs> Um, hopefully, uh, I think we should getting, uh, I think a couple of new commentators that have some knowledge of X4 through X6 here pretty soon. Uh, I think BJW and Colonel Fatso have already, uh, left the commentary booth. Thanks to them for hopping in here for commentary. Yeah, you should be able to hear me now, right? Yeah. Sorry about that. Had some mic issues. But uh, yeah, uh, we do want to thank BGW and Colonel Fatso for providing uh, commentary for X1 through X3. Really appreciate it. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and transition over to our new commentators. So Justin's going to be staying uh, aboard for the next few. And uh, also, uh, Streiser86 is going to be uh, taking over as well. So Streiser, well, thank you very much. Appreciate you having me. All right. So um, one thing to note about uh, using Zero is that whenever you defeat a Maverick, you get like a a weapon, uh, kind of like a weapon technique. It's not necessarily like a traditional X1 through X3 where you have a weapon and you fire it. With Zero, it actually augments his saber, where you get like a, a, a unique saber technique with which you execute with a particular button combination. So, uh, for Stingray, um, I think you get an air dash. Is that correct, Strizer? I forgot what Stingray gives zero for beating him. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I, think it, I, think it is an, I think it is an air dash, actually, because, uh, yeah, they have to give you the air dash in this game. I'm pretty sure it's an air dash, because, um... Yeah, you get the frost. Yeah, you get the little ice uh, saber from Walrus and the, f the flame saber from Dragoon. Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't do Stingray first myself. I always did Dragoon first. So um, obviously, the, the higher level runners go for Stingray first. But uh, uh, don't Ooh, ask me to pronounce nice. any of the techniques that uh, Zero learns because I'm yeah. not even going to be trying that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, nice Zero Iceless there from. Uh, Peachy. That's really that's really tricky. Um, you want to reduce revisits as much as possible. Um, you don't have access to like a double jump yet, so that's the only really good way of getting that heart tank. Can make it from a ledge on the right as well. It's a, a little yeah. bit of a tight jump, and you you have to do your jump off the wall pretty quickly, or else you just slide off the bottom. But yeah, that, that was really nice. That's that's definitely the tougher strat and the faster strat. So here here's a, a unique technique we're seeing called uh, slash dance dash canceling. Uh, the first couple of slashes of zero slash combo don't have any. Uh, it doesn't initiate any iframes from bosses. But if you hit dash during like either the first or second slash, it will actually cancel it, allowing you to restart your slash combo. So by just alternating between square and circle, if you're using default controls, you can do a quick SDC motion to where it just deals tiny bits of health off the uh, Mavericks very, very quickly without triggering their extended iframes. Uh, that you see from like X3. That's kind of like the, the main technique that you see in boss fights. Uh, you do use weapons to some extent, but that's kind of like the main one that you see. Kind of in the nature of the character, because if you're going to give character combos, you by nature have to make the first hits not give the enemies iframes just so the following hits can of course make contact uh so it's it's nice intent but at the same idea it's kind of like fundamentally flawed and uh, it's very exploitable as you will see throughout the run so cyber peacock is next for tichi here um in order to get the uh items in this stage you have to clear these time trials and you have to get a rank s to get access to the item so the first 
Time trial isn't really important because you only get an extra life, but the second and third time trial is you get a heart tank and you actually, uh, what do you get for the third one? You get a, I think a sub, is it a sub tank? A knee uh, tank? I think Zero gets two unique items and then he gets a free life because X would have gotten, <laughs> I believe it's the headpiece. Um, yeah, that's right. Equipment. Okay. So Zero, Zero gets one kind of like wah wah item as a result of it. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah. That's true. Uh, yeah, if you play this as X, yeah, you have to get an S in all three of the time trials because, yeah, he gets the helmet. Wanted to point out that the uh, Berlin dude finished over for uh, Team GBD, so we have yep. all the rookies now in X. Nice. Okay, so we've exited the SNES uh, portion of the relay, and now we're into the PlayStation era, so... So the PlayStation games are a gem. Uh, like, I feel like the Super Nintendo games get a lot of recognition, uh, recognition as they should. Um, and the PlayStation games are kind of a, a different beast, if you will. But they're they're super fun. And uh, if you've kind of been an X player sticking to the Super Nintendo realm, like I definitely recommend checking out uh, X4 to X6. I'll say I, I'm biased to, towards X4 and X5 more than X6, um, but x6 makes a better speed game than a casual game in my opinion so there's there's even fun there to be had uh but it's it's a neat kind of transition from super nintendo to playstation and it's uh it plays differently but it's it's still really fun so you see uh teachy here on this uh cyber peacock fight um he's hitting him with the flame saber in a couple scenarios but he's also hitting him with like one quick slash and then he follows up with the flame saber. And then right here at the end, uh, Cyber Peacock's gonna go into this little uh, homing torpedo-like uh, attack where he's gonna shoot little feathers out to get at uh, zero. Um, but yeah, some of the techniques are like a weakness. Uh, so you able like you see him get hit with the the flame saber. He get he just like kind of distorts himself out. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Basically extended iframes due yeah. to weakness, which uh, you can see in other Mega Man titles. But yeah, it's it's the combination of minimizing the iframes with the the quick hits when you can, and then hitting him with weak with his weakness because the transition after you've hit him with his weakness and the additional iframes, like it's just a very long period of time when he teleports. Mm -hmm. uh, just real quick for stats purposes, I know uh, you may be looking at the top of your screen and you see the splits for each team, so you see when they completed the last game. And you do notice the Team Mandriller is uh, has a comfortable lead at the moment, however, uh, this is far from over because the way the teams are balanced, uh, Team Mandriller uh, probably has the two slowest times in the last two games. So Team GBD and Team uh, Beboot will definitely have an opportunity to catch up later on if things uh, continue the way they are. Sleep on that X8 run. It's gonna be something. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you haven't seen it. <laughs> Spread from players, uh, you're gonna see the left side of your screen is gonna be kind of repeating the stuff uh, that we see on the right. Uh, we're seeing the mushroom climb right now, very heavy vertical section. And we're gonna see a little bit of a mini boss here. Yeah, um, Zero's uh, Flame Saber does give him a little bit of a uh, movement utility. He actually moves upward when he does it, so you can damage boost at just the right time and you don't fall back down from that move. Ooh, nice kill. Um, you can't skip that mini boss as Zero, I think, but you can with X because uh, you come in with like the Nova Strike and a couple other things that help you do it. <laughs> I believe with X you, you jump over the trigger, I think, using your utilities, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So the second half of Mushroom here, once we get past uh, this section right here, is an auto-scroller. And you have to beat uh, all of those falling sections to get to here. So, haven't touched on our runners, but for Team Green Biker Dude, we got Kiyoshi playing X4. Uh, 
we already got Tichi on uh, Team Mandriller, and we got Ariel on Team Beat Dude, who has, I think, a two-minute advantage on his PB over the other two players. So we should see the relay race tighten up a little bit, hopefully, when we finish uh, X4. Hey, Ariel showing a, a 42.06 a converted time for the 100% zero board, which is, is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're definitely going to see that gap close a little bit. And uh, everyone's going along comfortably, though. Um, I don't think we heard it in the audio necessarily. Um, I guess we haven't acknowledged it via the audio, but uh, Magma Dragoon having a whole bunch of Street Fighter moves, essentially. <laughs> yeah. So for Split Mushroom, um, you see he's not using... He doesn't have access to the uh, the Lightning uh, Saber. So you just have to use just the general sword hits. Um, and then he'll split up. And then you have to actually keep up with which form is the real one. So that becomes a little bit of a challenge as well. I feel like Mushroom hits deceptively hard. Like, I feel like you have a, a couple of more difficult spots, but I feel like once... The, the Mushroom fight's something that I think newer players will probably struggle with a little bit, um, because you get a little bit off script, and you get a hit by a couple of those clones, um, like the flashing ones, before he actually splits just into two a la Gemini Man, if you will. Um, he hits hard, so you, you take a few shots, and you can easily get death in that fight by accident. Also, shout outs to the sound effects Zero makes. Every time he jumps or climbs a wall, you get to hear that a lot. <laughs> we have we have the, the audio actually muted on our own, at least my side, so I'm not hearing it, but uh, you get to hear yeah. a lot of, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also have the game audio muted, but yeah, uh, ev everybody else is going to be subject to that a lot. So, once Zero, I think I think he has to be uh, uh, Cyber Peacock for this move, but now he has like a little weapon gauge. Uh, similar to the Nova Strike for X, there's a similar weapon here for Zero that you just press, I think it's one of the R trigger buttons. He does this little punch and a bunch of energy beams come out. Uh, that will get utilized in a couple of fights later, but that just doesn't go away <laughs> once you get it. <laughs> It's a little bit clumsy, admittedly. Um, I, I like that they gave him a move that actually has an energy bar and whatnot, but uh, it, it's kind of a little bit of an eyesore. It's always up there, and uh, you don't use it frequently enough that it's, like, relevant information most of the time. Mm -hmm. So the thing about Cyber Peacock there, that second section, you, got have, you have to manipulate the screen with those little buttons to let that ball go down to like the ending that it'll clear a path for you because until the ball gets down there to uh to that ending it's just a, a regular platform you just can't like do the traditional speed run stuff where you just go through the stage and ignore everything you actually have to do a little bit of work Dra in chat giving us a little bit of uh information on the tech of the move that you get from Cyber Peacock. It is true that you can hit multiple times. Uh, so if you get inside an enemy's hitbox, I think there's normally five or six little explosive energy blasts that come out from the yep. zero fist point of contact. If you're inside an enemy's hitbox and you do that move and basically all of the energy spots hit simultaneously, uh, because the enemy doesn't have iframes at that time, it actually all does damage. Um, you see similar yeah. effects with like the classic games and some of the classic weapons, but that's. I don't know if there's any other instances in the Zero series where there's that same kind of, or sorry, the X series where it's that. Uh, so, yeah, Tichi with the SDC technique here on Slash Beast, pretty easy fight. Uh, you just gotta not take a whole lot of damage. Luckily, there was like a little capsule before uh, the end of that section where he gets a completely full refill of health. addition uh beast has a roar move where he basically sits there and just screams in your face and 
Uh, doesn't do anything <laughs> damage wise, and he stays on the ground, which is also good for the SDC. So you actually kind of want to get to that fight and just see him yell at you. Yep. So one thing I forgot to touch on is that after you beat four of the Mavericks in X4, uh, there's usually like either a boss fight or a cutscene, depending which uh, character you're playing. In X, you have to fight Colonel, but in Zero, you have a little nice anime-like cutscene, which you can skip. So there's one less fight in the Zero story than there is in the uh, X1. I saw Blizzard Buffalo in the background. Yep. Tichi making use of that flame saber technique to get the heart tank. He also now has the double jump uh, move, so he's able to get up here to the EX tank, which is a un a new uh, item in the X series. Um, when you get this item, it allows you to start uh, stages with two additional lives, as opposed to the older X games where you start with three, so you now have like five lives. But it's still required for 100% since it is a collectible. Let's see what RNG we get here. Ooh, we get a really good RNG there. Uh, whenever that little Troclaw enemy takes damage, he can close up or he can just stay open. Yeah, if you game over, exactly. Ultra coming in with a little bit of knowledge as well. So the second, yep. so yeah. laggy sometimes. <laughs> yeah, there's a hidden uh, weapon tank here towards the end that he has to collect as well. I think he's coming up right on it, right there. Yep. And then this last section, you have these enemies here that, if they stay on the screen when they unleash their attack, they'll actually encase the entire screen in ice, so it makes moving out of there a little bit more difficult. As long as you keep moving though, you shouldn't have to worry about that. Coming up is probably one of the easiest bosses in this run, uh, Frost Walrus. You're gonna see Tichi just come right up point blank and unleash the Flame Saber. And then uh, if he's too close, he will actually take damage but you just spam this flame saber move over and over. And once Walrus gets down to the low HP, he'll start getting really angry. But unfortunately, he just stands there. So he's basically free to take a lot of damage. So right here, he just stands there. <laughs> so we have... Uh, Kiyoshi working on Split Mushroom. And Ariel is going through the second section of Slash Beast. Not too far behind. Okay, Web Spider. Um... Interesting area. Uh, one of my favorite stages in this game, actually. Um, I like the background at the start. I think it's um, some interesting boss tech. Um, not the easiest trick, uh, but we'll go, we'll go into detail when we get there. But yeah, the stage aesthetics in this uh, area are actually really cool. There's lots of color. Uh, you're going to see lots of greenery and whatnot. And we've got a few destructible environmental surfaces with logs that you can uh, destroy with the fire move. So uh, yeah, this level's kind of a, a good treat, and it's got a lot of variety. You go from like the top down and below cavern section. And, uh, yeah, this is a fun stage. I like this one too. Yeah, I believe at the end of this section here on Web Spotter, that you're gonna see some gap jumps, just like in uh, X3 and X2 and before, like right there. Also got those logs that are like uh, Mario Bros. Two or. Uh, Mega Man 7. Yeah. So you come here after you get 
the Magma Dragoon stage done because in order to get the heart tank here in this section, you need the Flame Saber to burn a piece of a tree off that hides the uh, heart tank. Just kind of deboosting through those uh, Ripple Force uh, Hornet Nests, if you will. So right here is where the heart tank is hidden. Ooh. She's taking it to that. And having the uh, flame right there is a nice little shortcut. So that's okay. a really tough jump. Yeah. There's a little bit of a slower setup. Uh, we're going to see he's lost a couple lives, so we're going to see maybe he'll opt into the safer strat. So. Yoshi getting a... Uh... A nice uh, de-boost there to get through that spike section on Owl. Okay. So on the spider nice. fight, do you want to go into the detail about the uh, the damage tech when he's off screen? Um, I'm not fully uh, versed <laughs> with that, but I think uh, what he does is you're able to damage him before he comes on screen. Um, Um, the, uh, I'm more used to seeing the X one, but, um, uh, the, uh, the caveat basically is, uh, you want him to be in iframes when he leaves the screen. Uh, so yeah, what the runners will it. try and do is they'll slash him just before he goes up off screen. And then while he's off screen, as long as he was in the iframes when he left, basically, uh, he has no iframes and you can hit him while he's yeah. up in the air. Uh, so that's yeah. what you kind of saw a little bit of a drain on, uh, Tichy's side there. And that similar strat also applies uh, a little bit to Al, doesn't it? That's where we're going to see the runners uh, get inside yep. his hitbox. So, uh... yep. You have to get that heart tank there before that uh, little uh, alien craft uh, destroys the, uh, the blocks that it's sitting on. Can't see those without thinking of Independence Day. Yeah, nice homage to Independence Day for sure. <laughs> the the first Independence Day film, not the not the not the new one, but the the original. Yeah, that's right. He's got a shield. So this mini boss here for Owl has the little weak point only opens up at specific points. So there's a couple of ways that you can take that down. You can use the little, uh, I think it's called Kuumbu technique, where he does the pizza cutter like attack, and then you also have the uh, the flame saber. So here we're going to see him damage Al, and then right there, try to get some of the uh, more damage with that punch. And Al is really fast, too, so uh, you really have to, like, that was a good use of that punch right there. Uh, you kind of want to see him uh, right idea right there. You're, you're basically trying to get top of them on the ground uh, sometimes yeah. you can damage boost and get right inside of them and unleash the attack but the off-screen kill is pretty good uh, at least reduce the lag from the explosion so i think that's all eight mavericks on uh tichi side yep so we're going right into the final stages you have the spaceport here it's a really short stage, but it's very, uh, very tricky with a lot of the climbing. And then you have all these enemies that just show up out of nowhere. Especially right here, these little spike bouncy, uh, spike balls. 
And then you have that again when you do the climbing right here. And then at the end, you actually fight Colonel. Damage boost, double jump there too. Yeah. So Colonel is actually weak to the the Ice Blade. So you're gonna see him just stand real up close like that and just start pelting him with the uh, the shot for the saber. I mean, and then Colonel can actually do this. He can teleport into the middle and do this attack. And just like that, he's done. I don't think we'll see the cutscene, will we? <laughs> what am I fighting for? Yeah, I did see a double hit there on uh, Colonel, too. Yeah, every time that he changes his stance, he has an iframe reset. It's very subtle, though. I can still hope that uh, all of the runners made some form of, like, agreement that they all just watch the cutscene. I don't think it's going to happen, but it would be hilarious <laughs> to see spontaneously. I'm not going to lie. It would even be better if all three played at the same time. And you get, like, <laughs> like if one of them played, like, slightly frames later, you hear, like, this echo. <laughs> but that won't be the case, sadly. So you actually have to fight Iris, and she's breaking off the relationship because you killed her brother, apparently. So... That's the that's the lore of the story. Okay, I'll so for the first start of this fight, you can't deal any damage to her until she uh, unleashes her little gem that comes out right there, and now you can start dealing damage. All the while, she's just coming at you nonstop with all these uh, what are they? Looks like little drones, I guess. The ball inside the crystal it looks like a little Pokeball. Like purple yeah. Pokeball. I think this fight is dangerous if you don't know the strats because she can unleash this like double laser attack um, in addition to dealing with the drone. So it's, yeah. it's a pretty rough fight if you're if you're going that, in there casually. Yeah, that was a good fight because there's, she actually does an attack where she will unleash like a beam from her right armor, and then the crystal itself will unleash a beam, and Tichi finished her off before that happened, so that was a very quick fight. Ooh! Okay, had to ditch the armor, but he's alive. <laughs> I think you have to ditch the armor anyway. I'm not sure if you can get the armor up to that ledge. I think you can. Okay, R in general, which it's that's not much of an issue, although it can be. Um, you're wanting your Colonel to, uh, or not Colonel, but General to throw his little punches. And we're not getting them just yet. You can still damage him, but not as much. Okay, here we go. So, we should see Zero get up close, do a punch, and then while he's in our frames, just do single slashes. And each, like, frame of that slash will constantly hit uh, General. It works out really well that the uh, the first little round uh, that you do on the fist for the iframes takes you through. You get the second one with the damage boost. And then you can just unwail three normal attacks and he's dead. That fight can yeah. go on for a long time. That was actually really good RNG. Like, that was very fortunate of a fight. I think he got one extra movement, or I guess he threw a yeah. fist from the left. Yeah, he only... General only moved across uh, to the left once, then went back, and then he did the right uh, attack pattern. So now we have the refights before we fight uh, Sigma. Some of the strats, I think, will be a little bit different, because now he's got all the weapon techniques. But some of them, like this one, is still uh, SDC. I 
Yeah, like we mentioned earlier with box, bosses having extended iframes uh, for weaknesses, bosses like this that just stay planted in the ground, you're much better to do an SDC. So here's the web spotter refight. I wonder if web and bow are related. <laughs> you get what <laughs> I mean by that. <laughs> so we got to see a little bit of that of that iframe abuse right there at the start of web spotter. And then once Web Spotter gets down to low health, he'll break out the the electric web and go into the final phase. And okay, yeah, you have to avoid that web that uh, Web Spotter shoots out, or that will uh, that will get you a little bit. Childhood me definitely thought the big web in the background hurt you, or would hurt you. Yep. <laughs> uh, I think Ariel is here at uh, the Iris fight. See if he gets the one cycle. Yep, some very good time already. So there's the gym. And... Uh, gonna be close. Oh, he got it just in time. Yeah, if you get caught by that web, you can actually wiggle out, but it slows you down a little bit. Same fight as before with Cyber Peacock. If he teleports onto you like that, you can easily Flame Saber out. Then that usually forces the teleport pretty easy. Ariel getting the right armor up onto that ledge that I was talking about before. And now another RN general fight. We'll see how this one goes. Oh, he gets the pattern right away. Nice. Very good. Like, Ariel's catching up really quickly. This is the last four games of this relay is going to be really interesting. It was even well done on the damage front because he didn't have the benefit of doing a little bit of ping damage before the fist came out. So he had to do an extra slash there. He got all of his hits in cleanly while still in iframes. That was just that was wonderful. So we we STC uh, slash beast. Ariel proving that this is, this is gonna this is gonna be a good race. Th that was a nice fight on Dragoon. Yeah, in SDC, um, it isn't really as easy as it looks, and um, there's some nuances to it because if you go too quickly, you actually won't extend the saber far enough to hit the enemy yeah. flash boss. Um, so you kind of it's it's. About more than just mashing two buttons back to back. It's really about positioning. It's about rhythm more than just straight mashing. Um, but the closer you get to an enemy, and uh, the more I guess fluent your rhythm is, you can you can really do some major damage with barely extending that safe route. Okay. That mushroom. Yeah, that split mushroom fight. Uh, luckily, you can use the electric saber 
the I think it's the Raiken Geki, and uh, you can reset Split Mushroom there. <laughs> and he's using a Sep Tank. Probably a good call because I think there's another re full HP refill coming up before you fight Sigma. Uh, to answer the question for Delta T Gaming and everyone else who may be joining us now, uh, where can time be made up in the rest of the race? Essentially the way the teams are balanced is all of the teams are meant to have really even PVs throughout the entire eight game series. Um, so while you may see one team ahead now, um, the team in specific that is ahead right now, uh, Mandriller, they had a very strong starting segment and uh, their ending runners maybe aren't as uh, strong as the other team. So we're gonna have a little bit of catch up done just naturally over time as the runners kind of come together and their progressive, or their uh, total PBs, PBs kind of match up. Uh, but other than that, still long race and there's still anybody's game. Yeah. Al is down for Tichi, and uh, everyone is now in the refights for the moment. Uh, but Tichi is just now leaving and getting ready to fight uh, the Sigma uh, three-part fight. There's actually a cutscene here in the Zero story that you have to skip. It's an awesome cutscene if you haven't seen it before. Gives you a little bit of backstory on how Zero became a good guy, essentially. Because originally Zero was like the bad guy. <laughs> the roles were reversed. So for the first fight here, uh, the only weapon that damages Reaper Sigma is the, the Fire Saber. So you can get, ooh, he missed the hit there. Or did he get it? I didn't quite catch it. I didn't see him flash, so I was wondering if uh, if he got the hit. I think he did. He didn't get the actual weakness hit, so he didn't get the uh, disappearance in flames, but he did get two hits, Yeah. I think, at the end. Yeah. So for the second fight here, you just use a combination of SEC. You can use that punch that he just saw, and then... The, uh, the pizza cutter slash. Are you ready for round two? <laughs> and you saw he baited the sickle off. The, uh, yeah, left. that that's also a key critical factor too, because if the saber, if his little scythe hits the ground, it shoots electricity along the floor, so you really can't stand there safely for a long time and get hits in, but if he you can throw, get him to throw it onto the wall, and then it's really not affected. It doesn't affect your strats or anything. Okay, but this is the bad, like, I wouldn't say bad, but it's like the scary part of this fight for me is the two, the two-headed Sigma final form. Especially that, that face on the corner is the scary one. I never liked it. So the interesting part about getting, oh, he gets the good RNG too. Um, this form here will stay out and he shoots the beams while you can get double hits with the pizza cutter slash so you can kill the upper half of the final form very quickly or very easily but then you have to sdc the ground portion and hope you don't die and nice uh tichi is almost done with x4 gg uh time uh his section will end when he loses control once he passes through the door here That's like a 40, was that like a 42 something? Uh, more or less. I have yeah, to that's, retime it. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, minus the 30 seconds, it's uh, it's looking like a basically a, almost a flat 43. 42, 50 something, I believe. Okay. Um, what is your... 
Oh, there, so there's the attack that Iris does if if the fight goes a little long. She does that two that two beam attack. It's really hard to to dodge. And there's the horizontal beam, and then you have to actually kind of like lead the the crystal so that you can fire the so you not get hit by that beam. Ooh. Oh, whoo! That was scary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that was his last life too. So if he died there, he would have to replay like I think the first half of that of that uh, stage. I didn't even pick up on that. <laughs> okay, so X five. Uh, we're coming into now the category for this game is all stages. So. Uh, the only requirement is that you have to visit every stage, complete it before you finish the game. Um, the way that X5 is structured, you can actually enter the final stages early, so you don't have to fight all of the uh, eight Maverick stages like you have to in the previous games. So some of these uh some of the other categories are really really short compared to all stages oh just because it is all stages that doesn't mean we're necessarily not going to be visiting the ending stages before some of the mavericks uh what you're going to see our runners do is they will take out some of the mavericks and for the sake of keeping some of the end game bosses a little bit weaker um because you heard bosses actually have levels in this game um what they're going to be doing is visiting those first ending game stages and then they'll be doubling back to finish off the Mavericks that they need to finish off, and then they'll take on the very final stage, uh, or final stages. Yeah, this this is the first game that really kind of breaks the traditional uh, fashion of you you fight the intro stage, then you fight the eight Mavericks, then you fight the final stages. You can actually do them out of order, which really makes interesting routing for some of these categories. And we're also transitioning to, I think, uh, I think what some call like a mission-based uh, game instead of like just in regards to like story, because you have like at the end of every uh, stage now you have like mission results. Uh, but it's still the same, you know, platformer. But it just has like it introduces some new elements to the game. Essentially what's going on with the space colony and uh, the whole idea behind the story of X5 is they're, they're looking to destroy the space colony and prevent it from crashing into the planet. Uh, so you have two means of doing so. You have the Enigma, which is a giant cannon, and then you have a shuttle that can be manned by Zero. Uh, what you'll see our runners be doing is they'll be attempting a manipulation shortly using the uh, intro demo, and uh, they'll basically be setting up the RNG for positive results Hopefully everyone will nail it first try, um, but it saves time RTA, I believe, as well as in-game. Uh, the boards for X5 are actually measured via in-game time, so losing that RTA time by sitting at the start menu and letting things get to where they need to get don't actually impact the in uh, final time that uh, the runners will have PV-wise, but uh, of course an RTA setting is impactful. That said, I mean, really the worst thing that can happen in X5 is you, you don't want to see uh, the opposite result, which is Zero can go Maverick and uh, things happen in, in a way that you don't necessarily want them to or don't end up being beneficial. So th there's a reason that our runners will go through the trouble of setting this up. Yeah, I think before the Enigma Manip was found, a lot of runs ended because, you know, the, the, uh, the Enigma shot and the shuttle both fails, and then you just lose... You lose the character that you put basically all your effort into, and then... But thanks to Enigma Manip, you know, things are now a lot easier. In fact, too, the uh, Enigma Manip will only work on the PS1 version of the game. You can play it on PS2, but uh, it won't work on any of the collections. Uh, for one of a couple reasons, for some of the earlier collections, like on uh, PS2 and the X Collection, or GameCube and the X Collection, uh, the demos don't sync up and the RNG doesn't line up. So if you actually watch the demos, it doesn't even make any sense. Like, the demo of PS1 makes sense. X is moving along, progressing, shooting enemies and whatnot. But if you watch it on any of the early collections, it's actually completely out of whack. 
Uh, so it doesn't work for those reasons. And then on the X Legacy collection, they, they actually got rid of the demo. So it's uh, only possible on PS1. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot more ports uh, for these later X games, I think. Uh, especially when it comes to all these tricks, as uh, Strasser mentioned, like you can only do specific things on specific versions. <laughs> and being mentioned in chat, yes, X5 is the first game in which you can crouch. I guess we didn't mention, if you look at your uh, bottom left screen, we're seeing the end of the intro again. Uh, you notice X is in the background. In Mega Man X4, you actually have to stick with the character you pick right off the bat. So if you pick Zero, you play the entire Zero game, and uh, likewise with X. In X5, you can switch back and forth between the characters as well as uh, multiple suits of armor that X can achieve or uh, acquire. Um, so what happens in the intro stage is one of two things. If you play as X, you see zero damage at the start, and most players don't realize what the impact of zero is because he loses the, the Z-Buster, and nobody actually yeah. uses it really in X5. Um, yeah. But if, if you play the intro as zero and you see X damage in the background, uh, X actually loses that set of armor, and it's not accessible at the start of the game. Yeah. Um... I think X5 is the only game you can crouch, if I'm not mistaken. I'm I trying to remember. X6 as well. And, oh, you uh, can? Okay. Oh, All right. Yeah, players will actually be doing so for some benefit yeah. uh, because crouch dashing in X6 will get you up to max dash speed immediately. Oh, uh, that's right. That that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. I didn't learn that until recently either. I think those are the only two games you can crouch in now that I'm aware because. Uh, you can't really do that in X7 with uh, the three-dimensional thing, and I don't remember that in X8. But then again, I haven't played—I haven't played X8 in a while. <laughs> Honestly, uh, X8 is a really hard oh crouch slash. That's right. Okay, I guess on some like the 3D sections, I don't think you can. But I'm not commentating for X7 or X8, so. We'll be commentating well for X7. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm only I'm only here up to X6. Only, only six games. Yeah, only six games. <laughs> yeah, two right. D sections you can crouch. Yeah, it's been a while since I've even played that game. Alrighty, well. Um... While we uh, have a little moment, just want to take a minute to introduce our third commentator, uh, Tichi, who is, uh, or excuse me, Techi, who has uh, just uh, did his X4 run. It's actually going to oh, be nice. commentating for us for X5 and X6. So, Techi, welcome. Hello, everyone. All right. Welcome. Welcome. So, um, seems. And Trigger is ahead by a wide margin. Right? Uh yeah. For the for the meantime, yeah, it's a little bit. Uh things will probably even out here in, in a little while. Um so I think uh one of the newest things additions to this game is that you can actually acquire uh enhancement parts that you can actually use in your armor. It's kind of similar to the armor capsules, but um, all your all your characters, like X and Zero, can both use them uh, to enhance like mobility or enhance their attack options. Yeah, you and do have some parts that are exclusive to each character, but uh, you do have parts that can be used by both too. And similar to like X2 and X3, you have like many antagonists that appear, and Donamo is like the one mini antagonist in this game. And when he shows up, you do have to fight him. And SDC still applies, so that's nice. <laughs> just stand up and just uh, take him out. Animals always looked a little bit strange to me because it looks to be the same type of 
robot as X and zero. So he like has all the same essential parts and like he's built the same if you look at like his leg pieces and arm pieces. But he's like 33% taller than them or however much taller than them. So it just looks funny because the other characters mm -hmm. look short. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it looks like we're going to see... Is this is this the Enigma Manip that uh, we're getting ready to see on Team Mandriller? Indeed. Um, so the way he's going to be setting this up, or sorry, they're going to be setting this up, is uh, basically going back to the title screen, waiting for the demo to start playing, and then um, there's a couple different visual cues that you can use, but they're going to look for a certain part in the intro to place uh, to press start. And then if they nail that six frame window, then the Enigma will be guaranteed to succeed if you just enter the game and immediately fire it off. Yeah, the initial intended way was to collect the uh, uh, Enigma parts from the Mavericks that are on the uh, left side of the, uh, the stage select screen. And that would enhance your chances of it working. That being said, they would still be very, very low because I think, yeah, I never even saw Enigma succeed until the Enigma manip was a thing. Um, I obviously knew it could beforehand, but like I'd never had it happen. I didn't know anybody that had it happen. Like, so we have a so yeah. There's the successful Enigma shot. Yeah. Yeah, the Enigma is really unlikely to succeed if you don't do any like it'll fail like 80 percent of the time it's really rare to see a successful enigma without doing the money so the structure of the game is basically you need to get the enigma shot off or the shuttle off to destroy this uh, colony before it hits earth otherwise you would lose zero so you have like every stage you enter is like uh, an hour in the actual story, the way it explains the game. So you have like 16 hours to collision or whatever. So every stage you enter would deduct an hour off of that. And that also includes the, the dynamo fight. The dynamo fight would automatically deduct one of those hours away. So, uh, but also, I think the bosses level up the, the more hours that elapse, and that allows you to get some of the uh, enhancement parts, uh, I guess, early, if you want to say. Or I guess that's routed in somehow. Uh, Strazer yeah. wants to go into that a little bit. Uh, essentially, yeah. it's over time, but it's also depending on your rank as well. Oh, um, yeah, so that's right. Are, yeah, uh, the so rank players are doing it. Uh, they're required to get a particular rank in the first stage to basically get the equipment that they're looking to get to finish off. Um, it's not like 100% detrimental, like, oh, it's going to end the run if you don't, but it is going to be you know, fairly crippling if you don't come out of the first stage with the appropriate rank um, because your next boss is not going to be the proper level for you then to get the piece of equipment that you're looking to get. Um, beginning runners can opt for an alternative routing, which will just take one of the bosses at, that has a gear piece that you're not going to benefit from later in the run, i.e. Dizzy, uh, and can start with Dizzy instead. That way there's really no consequence relying on rank, um, but the optimal strats are to go for the rank strats. Yeah, um, rank does increase the boss level, which once they're at like a specific level, then they'll start, when you finish a mission, you get a choice between energy up or life up plus and you you don't get the enhancement part right away you have to wait i think it's two hours after you beat that stage to actually get the part and there's yeah. 16 there's 16 different uh, uh enhancements but you can't get technically all of them so you can only get up to eight but you get specific ones because they uh Enhance like your movement or attack or or both. Yeah, to get one of the parts, bosses have to be level eight or higher. And yep. once you unlock one part, the other one is basically locked away, so you can get all of them. And also, at a, a specific level, they also get like a life up in addition to that part. And I think that life up actually gets allotted to the character that you choose next. So it also increases their, their health gauge. So I believe that kind of plays a little bit into the routing, but not a whole lot. 
if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the runners will be choosing uh, strategically or specifically a certain amount of uh, life ups and energy ups. Um, it, it does only impact the character that you're using, so you'll see, get the benefit of it, but it, it's going to be kind of moot later. Yeah, that's why, like, before the Enigma had been hit, like, you got all these life ups pumped into zero, and then you lose zero because the shuttle or the, or the, <laughs> yeah, it fails, and then you lose them, and then you lose all of those upgrades. So, but luckily, we don't have to worry about that anymore. One thing we haven't even touched on is that the movement in the PlayStation X games are a little bit different because the dash actually has a startup uh, animation before you get movement. So when you dash jump, you would jump immediately to eliminate those startup frames so you get movement uh, a lot sooner than you would if you just did the dash on the ground because there's like, uh, what is it, like eight frames before you start moving? Yeah, it's something like that. So in the Super NES games, you'd see a lot of ground dashing and then jumping to keep moving at dash speed. But here in the PlayStation games, you would see the dash jump immediately with like little to no ground dashing whatsoever. Unless you're dashing on the ground for the SDC technique. In addition to that, it's uh, it's a little more comfy to dash jump, in my opinion, in uh, the later X yeah. games than X1 to X3, because the nuance here is that uh, you have to you know consistently press dash in the Super Nintendo games to get that dash. Uh, when you're dash jumping in the X4 to X6 games, you can actually just hold down the dash button, and you will get a dash speed jump every time. Um, oh. So. Yeah, no, it's it's really comfy. You get, same thing for off walls. If you just happen to be holding dash and you jump off a wall, you'll get a dash speed jump off the wall. So you don't really have to do too many key presses of the dash button, which is kind of cool. That fail when mini boss lock gauges are longer than the actual Maverick <laughs> gauges. <laughs> <laughs> and he's level one. I just I, we didn't even mention too. Uh, this is a this is a Bubble Crab's tune used and i think it's the only case of a maverick tune or a robot master tune being reused in a later game uh x6 um, has the gate yeah. theme in from x2 oh okay. from my dad's stage i didn't notice that so duff mcwhalen uh that's the the second phase is really scary because he goes to the opposite side of the room and then you have instant death spikes behind you and he can push you into them if you're not careful so very important to finish him off before he has a chance to do that so it looks like we're seeing our first instance of uh, getting those enhancement parts that we were discussing earlier because now you can actually add them to uh, the armors and uh, both X and Zero can use uh, specific ones like a Jumper or Speedster uh, I think there's a couple other ones uh, like Shock Buffer I think is one of them and then there's <laughs> yeah, and, and then there's one of them like uh, a couple of them that are exclusive for Zero yeah, yeah, there's uh, mm. Saber Plus and stuff like that. Yeah. The three most important parts we'll be seeing in the run are Hyper Dredge, which is the one... Yeah, that's the big one. Right now. Yeah. Uh, the other one is Saber Plus here on Next in the Red, and the third most important one is Quick Charge on Squid Adler. Yeah, Quick Charge is like the premier like X part. So yeah, the hyper dash. You see Zero moving really, really fast. He's able to outrun those uh, spikes that are coming out from the ceiling. Uh, without that, it's really difficult to beat those when they spawn. Well, note too: different characters and different armor sets have uh, limitations for how many parts you can equip. So, uh, base Zero and base X can both equip four, uh, but I believe. Uh, most X armor sets, I think, can only equip two pieces. Four, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. fourth yeah. arm. Yeah, fourth armor and a falcon armor can equip two. 
uh, the Gaia armor cannot equip any, and I believe the ultimate armor can also equip two. Yeah, I think it's the two. Ultimate, yeah, the ultimate armor can also get two. And black zero is, just replaces the regular zero, so. So, like, like, like I mentioned earlier, if you're getting like energy plus life on at the end of a mission, you have to wait one stage to get your extra life, uh, your life or energy up. But for the part, you have to wait two extra. So you, uh, if you don't get that GA rank, I believe it is, you do have to change. I believe your routing on a couple stages to ensure that you get the right rank. It's only right off the bat. Um, if you're going the rank route, it only matters right off the bat because time passing will naturally make you get the parts from the later Mavericks. Um, yeah. So getting the rank and the key to that is really only in the Dino Rex stage. Um, and if you're going dizzy routing, then you're kind of just putting him right in the middle. So I think those are the only two routes I've seen, um, but there, there could be alternative safeties that I'm maybe not aware of. So, uh, Rockman here trying to, uh, I guess he's going to go for the, uh, the skips because normally you would take a, uh, a platform and you would ride this out, I believe. But if you damage boost appropriately and with the, uh, hyper dash, I think he has the hyper dash on. Yeah. You can bypass all of this. It's really, really tricky, and it's really nice when you see it pulled off, but I think he's waiting for the lift here. Ooh, yeah. wow. Okay. That was close. It's worth also, noting those spikes are instant kill, too. Those aren't just damage spikes. Those yeah. are one hit. Yeah, yeah the uh, constellations will actually, uh, specific ones will spawn those bats and for those, uh, what are they called? They're from, they, they resemble the ones from Eagle, but they drop instant death spikes. <laughs> Oh, and another neat little thing here is that uh, if you if you follow the lore of the game, uh, the Sigma got the Zero Virus, which uh, turned a Maverick. So this is kind of like a, a role reversal. If if Zero gets touched by like the that floating Sigma that you see, it, that little normal that's at the corner, that will actually change to caution and then danger. If he collects, if he gets hit by enough of those, he'll actually go into the virus mode, which is actually advantageous for Zero. It actually gets him invincibility for a short period of time. And I believe it grants him invulner uh, invulnerability to instant death spikes. Refills your health, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that as well. It like, it like, it's basically like you want to see that. It's like <laughs> the uh, Super Saiyan mode, if you, if you will. <laughs> Yeah, there's um, some strats you can use it for later that are kind of really safety strats before Ranga. You can use it for a refill and a safety to, to work your way up through the uh, the enemies there right before the boss. Yeah, I never played Zero that much, and I never really intentionally got hit by those. I played a lot of X. <laughs> hmm. X, on the other hand, you don't want to get hit by the virus with X. I mean, the first couple yeah, don't I... do anything, but you, you don't want to get into virus mode with X. Yeah. Yeah. If X gets into virus mode, he starts losing health over time. Yeah. So Izzy Glow here. Uh, Zero just picked up a weapon. Kind of akin to the soul body from X4. It just gives him a double of himself. And he can use that to kind of kill enemies a little further out than normal. And there's the uh, the Time Stopper-esque weapon that he got, just got from uh, Dark Dizzy. So not only is it an advantage um, that the soul body type weapon... Um, allows you a little more range and distance, but it actually creates less lag than Zero's actual saber hitting an enemy. Yeah. yeah. So I think we got another Enigma Manip coming up. 
Is that right on uh, Team GBD? Yeah, he's doing the safe manip. The the other two runners did the fast manip, which is done the first demo. But you can also watch all three demos, and after Matrix stage demo finishes, the Enigma is always fun to. Oh, that's pretty neat. Uh, here in this uh, stage, you get to see uh, Repoids that you can rescue. Uh, when you rescue one, they actually give you an extra life and additional health. Um, I believe that will come into play in the next game, because uh, the way the game is structured, some of the Repoids actually give you specific chips. So that will be important for the next game. And yeah, we've got two teams almost neck and neck now. It's worth uh, worth noting that uh, Beat Food and uh, Mandrill are, are basically side by side at this point. I think not. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Chad I think there may a be a different route. Yeah, oh, it's okay. a different route, I think. Yeah, uh, Chugman leaves, start DC. At the end, ah, okay. Yeah, they're they may be in the same stage, but uh, I think uh, Mandriller is ahead by a couple of stages. Remember, the category is all stages, so you have to complete all stages before you can finish the game. So Easy Glow here, you just use the Crescent Saber as much as possible. Uh, that actually, re like, I think you beat, after you beat Crescent Grizzly, that replaces your standard uh, yeah. Air Slash. So it's just something that you can't really avoid. Shoutouts to Bubble Crab uh, for you guys... Uh, Everybody says that, oh, X2 stole this from X5. <laughs> I find that kind of funny. And there's uh, those there's the, uh, those fish uh, from X1. Who says that doesn't know how time works? I mean, there's not really any difference. Uh, we see our players are playing on the Japanese copy of X5, um, but there's not really any difference. You can play English or uh, JP doesn't really. Yeah. yeah. Um, once you've beaten two of the Mavericks, you have to fight Dynamo, but also when you have two left, you also fight Dynamo a second time. And we do the SCC again. I like the music for Donamo, although you don't hear it that long. But there's some better tracks out there, like uh, the X versus Zero one. Oh yeah, that that yeah. one we should all be looking forward to. <laughs> um, worth noting that uh, in the spike sex section that uh, Chalkman's in right now, he's he's going to want to avoid all of the little orbs basically um, mm -hmm. there's a capsule on the other side of that wall and if you avoid all of the orbs successfully you avoid a message from alia as well as the animation for zero shooting off everyone that you happen to collect um, so none is best but less is still better yeah in this yeah. game um you can actually collect armor capsule uh, armor uh, pieces on x's behalf with zero uh dr light will talk to zero and say oh these are for x He's like, sorry, I can't, I don't have any upgrades for you. And Zero's like, oh, I don't really need any. But you can collect, you can still collect them on X's behalf. But Zero cannot access all of the capsules as far as I'm aware. I yeah. think there's one or two he can't get because you, those are X, X exclusive. Yeah, there is one capsule. I'm pretty sure you right out need Falcon Armor to reach, which is actually the Reds capsule yeah oh the uh, Gaia armor yeah, yeah I think you, have to, you have to like body check the blocks or something 
Uh, no, that. Oh, sorry, no, sorry. No, no, that that's for the heart tank. Yeah, that's the heart tank. Um, you're you're correct, Falcon, because it's up top. That's the one. Sorry, my yeah. apologies. Um, the one that in Dark Dizzy you requires the uh the X weapon because you have to uh, track it. You have to control it. Yeah, you need DC Glow's weapon for Dark Dizzy. Right. Through four. all that discussion, we missed out on probably the the Shadow Devil here in the first uh, post-Maverick stage. Um, the way that this fight goes, uh, you see the outline there of Shadow Devil. That has a hitbox, as well as the... Uh, the little balls there, those also have a hitbox, so your your space is really, really limited here, and then you use a combination of slashes and the punch there to deal damage, and that was a really good fight from what I could tell. Um, if the Shadow Devil gets to, like, low HP, he'll transform into, like, the Wally machine form, and, like, move around, which is slow. I really, the only thing that uh, the runners are looking to see is the eyeball portion can appear on the foot and yeah. allow you to SDC the boss. So, um, great fight on uh, the part of Team Mandriller. Not the best RNG, and unfortunately, that's not in their control, but a uh, great fight nonetheless. Yeah. So, now we're going back to the last. I think this is one of the last Mavericks. I think this is Maverick number seven for uh, Rockman over here. Um, So he's skipping all these orbs, as Strazer mentioned, because when you disembark off the armor, he fires all of them uh, into the wall. That's kind of interesting. Okay, if you don't have the Zero Buster, it actually shows him firing the Buster shot. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it? I always thought that was interesting. It kind of breaks, like, canon a little bit. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the Squid Adler Sage it has nothing but these uh, gates that you have to open. Most of them require three hits to open, but there's a couple that require four. And then you have a couple of sections where you got to open two gates simultaneously to progress. And I believe, I don't think this is possible. Is it possible with Zero that you can clip through a couple of them? Yeah. I saw um, Beatboot did it, I believe, a little bit earlier. There's the double gates coming up. It's the uh, orange and purple yeah. with the There on the we floor. go. Nice clip. <laughs> kind of shadow devil pattern we get. When I, when I first fought, like, the Shadow Devil, I had to mute the TV. The, the, just the boss music is, oh, it gets to you. <laughs> Although, it is, it is it is a remix of the Mega Man 1 uh, Wally Stage boss music. You'll see a lot of homage, because you'll see a lot of old bosses being reused. Nice SEC there with the uh, Squid Adler. Not mistaken too, uh, we see the, the corner jumps to avoid the Shadow Devil pattern, which unfortunately he's getting the blocks tossed side to side and back and forth, which is not great um, for time. But it's a little bit tougher with Zero, because if I'm not mistaken, Zero is like one pixel taller than X or something like that. So it's a little bit easier to do those corner hops with X and a little more lenient where Zero uh, it was taller. So there's the Wally machine uh, form there. That will crush you, by the way. Those those yeah. are in that spikes. That will one hit KO you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The entire uh, Sigma stages is full of death. Like first stage, you got those instant kill lasers, which is an homage to Quick Man from Mega Man Two. Uh, you have the Ring to Fight coming up here in the red Sigma stage that uh, Rockman is on. And you still got spikes everywhere still in other parts of the stages. 
spike right there. That's a really tricky jump. And then even in the third stage where you've got all those ropes and spikes and platforms. So this ring to fight is a little different than the X1 version because now you have you have to destroy all three colored eyes to finish the fight in addition to the nose part. So you have a, a green eye that you got to kill. You got a blue one and you got a red one, but the the eyes still do the same thing as they did in X1, but they're all weak to different weapons, yeah, or different techniques. And you deboost there to try to SCC some of the parts. Oh, I never saw that I got a screen for. Okay. Yeah, I've definitely not seen yeah. that one. Needing to use an E tank there to prevent a death. So it's actually really scary too. If it goes on too long, a wrangle starts actually making spikes come out of the walls. And... Yeah, that's the annoying gimmick too. That's really dumb. Like you don't expect it because you're thinking, "Oh, this is going to be like the the first one." Then they throw you that curveball when you're about to beat them, and then you instantly die. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, "What?" <laughs> And I'm sure it's never happened to anybody after using their only E-Tank ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, here's the third stage. Now, you notice that uh, normally... Um, I think normally in other categories, you would enter this stage as X. Yeah, uh, yeah. Rockman is a little bit of an exception. He actually yeah. does the... Crouching SDC, so he'll oh, yeah. play the all the way. So yeah, um, whether you play X or Zero, you can actually uh, access this capsule. Uh, for Zero, uh, he only has like one form, but to access that capsule as X, he has to come in with his normal blue armor. He can't go in with Falcon, Gaia, or the uh, or the fourth armor, so he has to get that the hard way. But getting the ultimate armor is really nice for X, because it's it's basically the same thing as the X4 version. All right, I'm not gonna lie, I've never seen the zero finish, so I'm kind of keen on this. <laughs> okay, he just gets up close, he boosts through the soul body. Nice quick fight. There's one stage left that Rockman has to go to before you can finish the game, and that is the Skyver stage. You still have access to all the Maverick stages until you beat the game, so... You will likely see the other teams go for the ultimate armor, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. The reason why we get ultimate armor there and not like zero is because of the boss that's coming up for Rockman, uh, the Skyver. Once we beat him, uh, we get a technique that's done when you slash and dash, so we can't DCC anymore. And Rockman will do uh, something along the lines of crouching as DC. He will slash and then crouch instead of dashing to cancel the animation it's really hard to pull off but oh nice really well. i didn't even know you could do that with the just the d-pad that's that's insane <laughs> rodman plays on keyboard <laughs> <laughs> so the the differences between the red zero and the black zero is that the black zero has, I believe, uh, double. Is it double attack or is it fifty percent higher attack? Um, I'm pretty sure black zero is like having a saber plus and shock buffer equipped from the get go without uh -huh. needing to equip them, and also a shot eraser, if I'm not mistaken. Those three. Oh yeah, that's those three enhancements. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, does Zero take more damage uh, with Black Zero, or...? Less no, damage. Le oh, he takes less, okay. 
and also no knockback. Yeah. Oh, nice. So you have to wait on this elevator. Basically another auto scroller. And most speedrunners aren't a fan of auto scrollers. <laughs> we got a little bit of X action down on the bottom left screen. <laughs> oh yeah, so yeah, so this is what I was Oh nice. Nice usage of the uh the win there to keep X from dying and also a label to get a little bit of extra distance. Yeah, you'll be seeing a lot of those rare wins from Chugman's screen. They're really... So sadly, um, when X enters that capsule to get the ultimate armor, he doesn't automatically equip with it, so he has to finish the rest of the, uh, the stage without it. Yeah. That applies for every capsule you get on X5 and X6. You never get the armor pieces immediately. Instead, you have to complete the full armor, and then you can use it. Yeah, and then and yeah, the, uh, you have to select uh, the actual armor when you select your character after you select your stage. The fight with Zero is actually you're gonna see manipulation basically of attacks based on movement. So walking towards, walking away slightly, and uh, rinse repeat. Okay, it looks like uh. Looks like we have a one level difference here on Team Mandriller and Team Beat Food. Yeah. Uh, Mandriller only oh, has Oh, we have a death. Actually. Ooh, unfortunate. Ooh. And Team Beat Food has to be Dark Dizzy and the final stage. Now ah, you'll okay. be seeing Dark Dizzy with Ultimate Armor. This one looks pretty good. Oh, this final stage song is a banger, too. Who likes club music? That's what it sounds like to me. It's kind of uh, one of those stages that'll rip your stream, depending yeah. on your bit rate. <laughs> So the refights here, you'll notice that the uh, boss gauges are a lot longer than they were before. Uh, level 96. 96. <laughs> it's like, man, they really leveled up big time while uh, we were away. So yeah, if, if you don't have like the Black Zero, the ultimate armor, like these refights you can draw on for a long time. <laughs> Yeah. Nice keep there by Truman. Truman with the wind strats. <laughs> yeah. Those are pretty recent. Yeah, I've definitely not seen those ones. Sick and technique here, money. just just stopping the scaver so you can just uh, use the uh, what's it called slash crouch slash crouch cancel is that correct? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure to be honest. You put an acronym to anything. Yeah, SCC. We'll, we'll call it that. <laughs> So yeah, here here's the the best part about Ultimate Armor is that Nova Strike. You can use it over and over and over. It doesn't have a, a charge up like the X4 version does. And you're also in, invulnerable during the Nova Strike as well, so. Uh, so to touch back on the Crouch SDC, just based on the question chat really quickly, um, when you beat one of the final Mavericks, you get an ability that prevents us from doing a traditional uh, SDC. So what you're seeing in the top right-hand side is instead a down press to cancel the slash. 
Yeah. Crouch canceling. So we're playing melee now, right? <laughs> <laughs> When's the wave dashing start? I always thought the wave dashing is when you just did the tr just the regular dash and he just slides at the end of it. That's what I did. So, uh, Rockman picking up some energy refills. In addition, like, even if you don't have full health, like in the SNES X Games, if you pick up a energy refill, it actually in refills not only your health, but it also gives you a little bit of energy in your tank as well, if you have one. Yeah. So, uh, with the uh, Duff McWayland refight with Ultimate Armor, you really gotta you really gotta watch what direction your Nova striking in because even though it is the Ultimate Armor, uh, you're not protected from instant death spikes with that. <laughs> Only the Gale Armor protects you from instant death spikes. <laughs> Alternatively, uh, X players can also resort to a Charge Crescent Slash if you want to play that safe. Oh yes, that too. Grizzly, Grizzly Slash trying to get a, a sneaky hit there from the background. <laughs> what a try hard. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, looks like we're seeing a uh, double jump cancel slash uh, double jump slash cancel there on a uh, Rockman side. Yeah, the English boss names are named <laughs> after Guns and Roses. Guns and Roses. Uh, I was wondering if that was going to come up. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't get through a run of X5 without let's, that being mentioned. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Dark Necrobat, Spiral, Pegasian. Um, I'm trying to figure them all out here. Um, Burn Dino Rex, Tidal, Tidal Whale, or Tidal Whale, yeah. Um, Shani, uh, oh god, what's, how do you pronounce it? Uh, Horonicus or something. Yeah, yeah Horonicus or something. Um, um, Spike Rosa Red. Um, gee. Um, God, it's been so long. I'm, I, I, I don't want to double name them. Um, I think the only ones missing are Crescent Grizzly and yeah, Vault Kraken. Yeah, yeah, yep. Vault Kraken, yep. Regarding the legacy collection names, they're mostly the Japanese names, but they're slightly changed. For example, Shining Otarunikos was changed to Shining Firefly, and Spiral yeah. Pegasian was changed to Spiral Pegasus, but that's it. Okay, so uh, Rockman here is coming on to the Sigma fight. So the first Sigma fight is kind of similar to the X1 fight, although he doesn't have like his little lightsaber, but he do, he can still like dash around and go up the walls. Although He's you doing might... Absolutely pretty... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> although you might not see that with the SD, uh, with the crouch cancel slashing. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, shout out to an epic background. One of my favorites. Oh, yes. Yeah.
So, I'm really curious to see how this fight's done, since you don't have ultimate armor. I know you have to do a lot of double jumping. Okay, you gotta get rid of these guys, because they will cause a problem if you leave them out. Oh, that's oh. interesting. Okay, I never saw, I never knew that. Wow, that's awesome. So, ooh, but yeah, ooh. the purple blocks is like the scariest part of this fight. They deal a ton of damage. And it's really hard to, like, manipulate them because they're so big. And he could do it again. That's what I'm worried about. But GG, he got through it. <laughs> GG. Very nice. And I believe Chalk Band's not that far behind, actually. And this is actually like the in, the initial intended ending of the X series was X5, but uh, Capcom, I guess, wanted more money. <laughs> yeah, after X5, we were supposed to go on with Mega Man Zero, but then X6 came up and the timeline was all messed up. Okay, so... In X6, you actually start with the Falcon armor that is, was supposed to be shown from X5. And you also get uh, the Zero Saber that you can actually use now. So I believe there's a little bit of SD seeing that you can do with X with this, and also using the Saber like that to climb really, really fast. Yeah. Using the saber while climbing, climbing pushes you forward, so it's really fast to climb using the saber. So coming oh. up here in the intro of X6, we got a fight with a mechanoloid, and then we have a fight that kind of is Vile-esque from X1, where it's not yeah. winnable. Um, since the fight with high max here is not winnable, um, you do need to take damage to progress the, uh, the story. So, um, Garuda here, who's running X6 for Team Mandrill, will be damage boosting during this fight to get his health down to the required amount. Oh, another death on, uh, Team GBD. So you see Nightmare Zero that appears to finish off this mechanoloid kind of adds to the plot a little bit a little uh, later on. Yeah. So there's a few changes in X6 uh, apart from X5. So um, there's new enemies here called Nightmares, um, which they look like little black uh, squid looking or ghosts or whatever. Uh, when you destroy them, they actually give you something called soul, um, soul energy. Uh, this is actually what determines your uh, hunter rank in this game. And as your hunter rank improves, you're able to uh, equip uh, parts. Um, so it's not based on what armor you're using. It's just solely your rank. Um, but also, in starting with this game, um, specific reploids. There's 16 reploids in every stage that you can rescue. Yeah. Um, and specific reploids carry specific parts, which uh, you need to rescue them uh, because there's these nightmares that can actually, on some of the reploids, will actually be right near them. And if the nightmares actually capture the reploids, they kill them. And if they have a part, you can't ever get it. Uh, so, yep. Yeah. 
yeah, once they're captured, they're dead for good. So it's very important on some of these, uh, not all the Reploids, but the ones that actually give you parts, you can't hesitate. Once they're, once you spawn them, you gotta touch them to rescue them. And they actually give you an extra life, just like in X5, and they actually give you some energy as well. And the deaths in uh, X5 and X6 and, and, and the X4 also are relatively short compared to like X1 and X3. And in addition, each of these eight Maverick stages actually have a secret entrance to give you to get you to their secret area. So Rainy Turtleoids is at the end of the stage, sadly. So, but um, this secret area actually has what is it? The Hyper Dash for uh, has, the yeah, it has the Hyper Dash and also the Saber Plus. So it's really important to go here as soon as possible. Yeah, you get the Hyper Dash immediately, and then you can start going really, really fast the rest of the game. And also, uh, anytime that you they have a boss door, just like the regular Maverick stages, and the first time you enter one of these uh, special secret boss areas, you fight the Nightmare Zero first. And if you defeat him, you actually unlock Zero, <laughs> which you actually use in this game quite a bit. The STC and a couple other weapons are really, really broken. Are we going to hear the ooh? I think we heard it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nightmare Cyril always wails like that when he dies. I'm not sure who thought that sound effect was a good idea, but oof. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you can just do it over and over again, though. It's not it's not to the level of X7 yeah. burned to the ground, but... Uh... Oh, man. I, I, I wish I could be on commentary for that. That'd be so good. <laughs> <laughs> So now that we got the Hyper Dash, uh, you can't use the parts right away. You got to get by collecting Nightmare Soul, which you get for clearing, I guess, uh, in addition, defeating Nightmares. You also get, I think, 200 Soul for every Maverick you defeat. Once your rank gets up to a specific point, you can start equipping those parts. And there's actually a special type of part that uh, it's, a, it's like a, a pink part or pink equip. There is one special chip called, like, Quick Recover. It's basically like a full sub tank. I think that gets uh, picked up, doesn't it? It does, yeah. yeah. Uh, we get Life Recover on Commander Jamrock stage, and it's a uh, one-use full sub tank. You can use it once on every stage. Yep. Yeah, it's full recover. Yeah, Life Recover, or, yeah... Or full recover, but it's it's essentially a bonus sub tank. In addition to that, we're uh, going to be seeing our runners do essentially a double equip glitch, uh, which will allow them to equip two parts early on onto one single slot. Um, so we're going to be seeing that come up shortly. It's actually not really that difficult to do. Um, it's just essentially pressing the equip button and cancel button simultaneously, and and overlaying two parts over each other, but. Yeah, it's wow. uh, it's it's a neat little uh, it's a neat little yeah. exploit you can uh, try for yourself that's, at home. That's nice. Using that glitch, you can equip up to four parts on two slots. <laughs> if you if you've ever played if you play this on English, uh, you might see it like if you go to a save menu, if it asks you to save the game, it misspells overwrite. <laughs> yeah, like come on. The game was made in nine months. I'm not yeah. talking about anything anymore. <laughs> in uh, so um Ready? Infinity Maginian is like I think one of the at first one of the more difficult Mavericks because of the fact that he can copy himself and with the small room that you have to fight him in, it just makes it hard to avoid taking damage. We can all enjoy the final countdown. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Garuda just beat Turtleoid, right? So he's got the uh, guard shell, which is really, really broken. 
Um, really? Which basically, if you use it, it then allows your saber to hit every frame. As you see, he's just decimating these mini bosses with one sword slash. I mean, if I had my phone right next to me, I'd play the final countdown for you. <laughs> it's funny because that makes Guard Shell amazing, but what doesn't make Guard Shell amazing is just sometimes it like doesn't come out. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have to open up the menu and go back to the like Z saber and then adds. Yeah, best friend and your worst enemy all at the same time. Yeah. But fortunately, like the the life meters, like starting out, are very very small. So, oh, and you get to use the the zero buster again, which is really like makes this fight really easy if you can get close with it. I hit him with the blueberries. Yeah, see this buster on X six is really good. It doesn't need to charge like on X five, so we use it a lot here on Medium, and also to with some smaller enemies. And I think the first form of Final Sigma. So Zero's Saber in this game is just basically a straight Saber. It doesn't have like that little swoosh like you see in the other games. Yeah, it's like it's more it, solid now. It's more, yeah, it's, it, it looks more like one of those Star Wars Force Effects like Sabers. Feels really rigid too. Like, I, yeah. I don't know if it's just me, but it, like it feels the way it looks, if that makes any sense. So we're revisiting uh, Rainy Turtleoid, because now we're gonna actually going to beat his stage proper, I guess. Um, this is also all stages, correct, for X6? Yes. Um, so, I have a question. So, I have, uh, so I have a question. You have to get all the Maverick weapons for, for that stage to be considered beaten. Uh, is that kind of like the how we determine if a if all stages because the way that this game is structured you can actually access the gate stages early by beating high max right yeah but we won't be seeing high max before the final stages so right. we'll just beat the eight levels normally like since there's two different exits to a stage i didn't know if if you had to take the you have to defeat the actual Maverick to consider that stage, like, cleared. Yeah, you have to beat the Maverick, but not in high max or right, dying okay. level. <laughs> so, basically, yeah, basically, you need all Maverick uh, techniques or weapons to brawl stages, okay. I was a little Brain confused forget. on... I was confused on how that was, like, counted. I honestly forget the dynamos even in this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Just, he's so out of the way. Yeah. So we have uh, Blastoise coming up here for Garuda, aka uh, Rainy Turtleoid. So basically, you just activate Guard Shell, get inside his hitbox, and throw the uh, single slash out there once you destroy the crystals, and then. SEC, yep. Uh, so yep. Uh, it's uh, it's a little bit different than what you're gonna see later. Uh, yeah, but... it's, yeah, it's definitely different uh, on some of them. What you should be seeing is. Uh, You'll get to the other side of Turtleoid, and you can actually kill him without destroying those crystals. It's super handy. Now we'll be so, doing the Bark Glitch. So as you see, uh, one slot is available. Uh, I believe you have to get to rank B before you're able to equip anything. But once you get to, like, uh, I think, is it A or S or... SA or I forgot how the rank goes, but I think you have to be or is it GA to equip like the middle slot yeah. with those pink parts. Yeah, you have to be rank GA to equip the middle part. So yeah, your rank is based on Nightmare Soul. So you can actually get up to nine thousand nine ninety nine Nightmare Soul, which I think at that point you get the UH rank. 
and that allows you to equip four parts, but <laughs> we won't be doing that. Learning, uh, what we're seeing on screen right now is yeah. not any form of hacks or whatnot. It is uh, the zero invincibility glitch. Yeah, uh, you the, see him uh, jumping through all of these enemies. Uh, basically, the way it works is Zero has a technique where he does a spin slash, and, and during which he's invincible. If you interrupt it, never gets his. Um, it never gets that damage state hitbox back. He can still be crushed, and you can still fall down pits, but you actually take no damage. Uh, I think I think the move is called the Insuizon glitch. Yeah, you're a brave man for trying to pronounce it. I'm not even trying. <laughs> yeah, it's called Insuizon. Gosh, that that <laughs> just nearly one whole slash just takes him out. Yeah, that's a pretty good RNG. Jammer can either stay down or go up. If he goes up, it's better to use the third slash, so you deal more damage. But since he stayed down, we can just one shot him with guard. So, chill. a good explanation how the Insuizon glitch works is if you use the the move and you end up what is it airborne or something you're still in the invincible state is that is that kind of how it works and then you're yeah vulnerable so to he, he never finishes the move uh because he gets interrupted and drops down and as a result he never gets his vulnerability back yeah Ready? we'll be seeing it again here on the Shore player real soon oh yeah uh, yeah, this we, is a really yeah. good example of, of how that <laughs> trick works because, like, you see that crusher? Normally, it's supposed to go down a little bit more, but because he put the right armor in that raised platform, the, the crusher just hits the right armor, and that right armor holds the crusher up the whole section of that area. It's really crazy. And now you see he's already got the Insuizan glitch active, and he's able to pass through, like all of those enemies without taking damage. He can still get crushed uh, and die, but he can't take damage from enemies. And you can't take the spikes either. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, spikes is also hitbox. Um, you would die from the crusher because of like getting pinched, <laughs> I guess is a good way to say is a good way to put it. The amount of lives that you're going to see our players have in this game is also going to be just absurd because every time they rescue one of the uh, the Reploids, they're going to end up getting yep. a free life. So you're going to see basically the duration of this run with uh, a good old 09 top left. Just the glitch again. So for X6, we have... Uh, who do we have uh, playing? We got Garuda, obviously, for... Team Angular, we have uh, Massa Poopy for X6 for Team Greenbacker Dude, and we got Melody Gore for Team Beat Food. And it looks like their times are relatively close from what I've noticed. This boss here on Metal Shark Player, I hate so bad. Why do they put this in? I question a lot of the bosses in this game, honestly. Why, why are they here? I don't even feel like it's a well-designed boss either, to be completely honest. Like, <laughs> there's nothing really to it, and it's just waiting, and yeah. Uh, Kabaraka there in chat brings up a very good point. Why have a tens digit if you, you only can get nine lives? <laughs> I stopped thinking about that because it just hurt my head. I, I tried thinking about that for so long. I was like, nope, <laughs> there's no answer. <laughs> the perma zero digit has always just made me laugh. Like even here, like on this, uh, why have a hundreds digit? It, like, I don't even think any <laughs> weapon gives you that many, does it? I don't think there's anything in the hundreds, no. No. So Not yeah, um, yeah. Sukimos just finished X5. Uh, he is running X7 and X8 on his team, so he's he will be back for for the uh, remainder of his team. So he's taking a rest because he's got two more games to play. That that's a lot to do. Just take 
nearly half the relay on your back and just running with it. So another little quirk of X6. Uh, you can dash yourself Ooh. to a little corner or I guess a little gap and die. So in a crusher type situation, if you try and dash too quickly uh, underneath the crusher as it's raising, you can pinch yourself and die. If I'm yeah. Yeah, it's like X or Zero stand up for just a frame when you yeah. they finish dashing. So yeah, we don't them. have yeah we don't have any of that clipping into a wall and getting pushed over to the side like we do in like some of the early like Mario games. <laughs> it's like you will die. <laughs> There's also a weird gimmick with these steel blocks. Those things can crush yeah. you. Yeah, and those things they... can crush you too. If they crush you when you're standing, they deal damage but don't kill you. But if they crush you when you're crouching, they do kill you for some reason. <laughs> that's, Did not know that's that. That's insane. And we also, with some of these weapons, uh, we get to see an homage to some of the earlier X games. Like, the Charge Anchor there releases a bunch of Storm Eagles. You thought getting 20 dives in Eagle in X1 was something, yeah. Like, you get 20 dives in one use. <laughs> and like, uh, I've seen it once, and uh, it happened to a friend of mine, but uh, we've seen the clip posted recently. I believe it was posted in the X Discord as well. Um, I think it was Ninja... Is it Ninja Delphox? I terrible at pronunciations. But uh, summon the charge anchor and all of the Storm Eagles in a row. Absolutely, everyone came down on the same axis in a row, like wow. just a big conga line of them, and it was just like, oh my! And of course, it didn't hit anything on the donut. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look at that. That's insane. Yeah. This is a good clip. I I didn't think it was even possible. Like, I guess I mean I knew theoretically it was like, possible. The fact that it actually happened in a nice military formation, right yeah. there. So Heatnik's here. Uh, you're gonna see him charge up. I guess that's the uh, the ray beam or whatever. He it's saw it a little bit on. Him. Yeah, it's infinity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it called the ray beam? I think. But yeah, you just. It's a lot better than using his actual weakness, which is like ground scourge or scourge's weapon, the uh, the mm. the rock. Yeah, arrow ray. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I knew it was something easy. Yeah, ray arrow or air ray, but yeah. I must be thinking of probably X8, because there's a weapon like that too, I think. So you see here on Team Beat Boot, where you have to wait the crusher if you don't have the uh the Ensuis on. Blizzard Wolf Fang is an interesting stage. Because um, you can get, like, the ice physics from Buffalo from X3, like, and you can go really, really fast, I believe. Also, combined with the Ensuizon, Zon, you can, like, basically blast through this stage really, really fast. Yeah. I think it's related to dashing as soon as you land from a jump and that sends you off like really far away you can do that and actually end up right next to the boss when you reach to Blizzard Wolfman it's really cool to see if any of the runners can pull it off so this part here with the falling ice uh, blocks it's kind of like it, it's basically RNG right where these where the gap is and you just yeah. have to move accordingly. Yeah. Like right there, you wanted uh, the gap to be closer to the door so you can just get right in there, but you have to take the long way. Saw a little bit of fire coming down in the uh, earlier section with the blocks as well, and we didn't note this earlier, but you'll notice some of the Mavericks will actually have like a red overlay over their face back on the menu screen, and which essentially means that there's like unique um, 
environmental conditions present. Stage effects, yeah, kind of yeah, exactly. similar yeah. to, to X1, to X1, like I mentioned. Yeah. The difference with it, X1 is that the nightmare effects depend on the stage you went before, not necessarily yeah. which stages you've been in. Yeah, um, so yeah, for example, like, uh, you seen, uh, in Wolfang's stage, you saw those little, uh, magma blocks fall down, um, you have to enter uh, Heat Heat Nix's stage first to get that effect uh, on Wolfang, and then I believe Blizzard Wolfang has a couple of effects that go to a couple other stages. Um, but yeah, not. One... Go ahead. I think the only one that's notably annoying in the run is when you go back to Turtleoid and you have the spotlights. Yeah, the spotlight. Yeah. That's the annoying one. Yeah, that's definitely. Um, I think that's Meginion's nightmare effect. Once you go yeah. to Meginion, you get those spotlights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you have the 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 lights doing that. It really makes movement tricky. So what we're seeing here, we're seeing totem skip. Um, you basically damage yourself uh, from your own ice weapon here, and while you're in iframes, frames, you actually just dash through the uh, the totem, and you don't have to go to the sub area. And you have a limited amount of ice before you run out, so you have so many attempts before you actually have to do the stage properly. And I believe there's a soft lock too, where if you um, if you enter one of the totems, you soft lock. I don't. I forgot what the requirement was. Yeah, Basically. if you're you're playing on the original PlayStation version, if you enter the last pillar from the back, you'll soft lock the. Oh. Oh, but, yeah, that's right, okay. But since I think the runners are playing on Legacy Collection, they, they have no soft locks anywhere. It's really good. Yeah, like, it's really strange to, like, you can take damage from your own weapon, like... Well, it's funny, because you don't even take damage. You get iframes, but you don't actually take any damage. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's weird. There's no health loss, but it's it still gives you the full duration of iframes. I don't know why that is. Also, it's also important to note that the the um, there's actually a difficulty setting on X5 and X6, and in X6, I guess it's explicitly easy mode. Is there any differences between normal, easy, and difficult? Oh, yeah, extreme? they're really different. Uh, the most notable difference is that on easy mode, there are way less enemies, and also <laughs> bosses give you less nightmare souls, so we end up equipping Saber Plus and Hyper Dash later on the road. That's uh, the I was just wondering why that was post Lloyd myself, but yeah, I, okay. I can't say I've taken in too much easy mode, but in normal you do usually have it for that stage. So that answers that for me, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So we're already into the gate stages um, for uh, Team Angular. Um, also already invincible again. <laughs> yep. So yeah, uh, this stage basically has this uh, auto-scrolling sections where you have the lava that's going to chase you. Um, so you can still have the Ensuis on glitch. You, and you can't die the lava, correct? Or can you? I forgot. No, honestly. no lava, lava doesn't kill you when you have okay. missing glitch. Okay. Okay. So yeah, uh, the reason why he's immune, he's doing a special technique, and it's getting interrupted, so he doesn't go back to being vulnerable. Uh, the Insuizan grants you invulnerability, but if the move gets interrupted, it doesn't uh, give you back your vulnerability state, so you stay invincible. There's also something I'd like to say about Insuizan. Um, as you said, Insuizan gives you invulnerability when you do the spinning slash, but if you're on iframes, it resets them. So if you spam oh, okay. on top of an enemy, you can get hit a lot over and over really fast. Oh, okay. I never knew that. I never knew that either. So good thing we've got uh, 
couple of people that know a little bit more about this than I do because I don't speedrun this game personally, but I do know of the run and have dabbled with it a little bit. So this is, I think, I hate this boss. Like, if, if everyone who's played this casually, I hate Nightmare Mother. Yeah, Nightmare Mother is definitely one of the hardest bosses. Um, it's basically a twist on the uh, Shadow Devil fight, I want to say, a little bit from X5. But now you got two of these uh, that you got to deal with. The use of the Insumi Zone to actually stay between the two blocks when they're transitioning. Um, I didn't learn about that until uh, shortly after I had started, and I agree Nightmare is exactly that, a nightmare. But it makes it a lot easier because you can avoid a lot of that damage earlier in the fight by doing that spin. So we just saw the use of Life Recover there to get uh, health back. Hopefully he doesn't die, which shouldn't happen. Because if you were to die there, already using the life recover, and then on your next life, you don't have access to life recover, so the fight just gets exponentially harder. Now we'll be going to gate stage 2. Yep. This stage is filled with spikes and bits. It's really easy to die if you're not careful. And this stage's boss is Hymax. This time we can actually damage him. Yeah. Also, those little totems that we saw back in uh, Ground Scaravage's stage that we skipped, they actually are real. They become real uh, towards the end of the stage. And we actually use them to do a skip here. Because yep. normally, casually, you would there's like this big room where these totems are in. You go all the way around. You go to the corner of one of the room. You would climb up a ladder to get to the other corner, and then you'd actually double back. But using that big totem pole and those lists, we can do a shortcut. And yes, this is a remix of Counter Hunter 3 from X2, the Sage Music. So in order to damage Hymax, uh, you would have to hit him with a weapon like uh, with a weapon like sword slash or something after you hit him with the sword. In this fight, you just have to destroy his barriers, and then he'll go into this fight here where he just stands in the middle and he just fires these balls of energy at you, and that's all he does. Yes, death boo. Yes, death yep. ball. <laughs> Death Ball is actually what he's saying, I think, in Japanese. Yep. That that phase of the fight is particularly dangerous. If you happen to slash one of the Death Balls, it actually oh. divides into four smaller ones that yep. actually deal the same amount of damage. <laughs> so it's pretty dangerous. Despu. I'll do it for you guys. Despu. Okay, so that's only the first half of the gate stage. Um, this is the second half where you actually have to, depending on what character you're playing, you get different sections of this stage. Yep. Since Legitimately did not hear that. Ooh, <laughs> that, that was a close one. He almost got pinched, and that would have been death. Yeah. Since we're playing with Zero, we'll go through this crusher. If we were playing with X, we will go through a section with Rain, the same Rain yeah. on rainy turtlet stage yeah. and we'll have to break those same mice and that generator thingy. Yeah, it's basically the same as rainy turtleoid, but just shorter. And it's a little bit more difficult too, because the way to stop the... Uh, what happens is you have a little generator, but it's protected by the eyes and you have to destroy the eyes to get to the generator. And some of the eyes that you have to destroy are in a really, really tricky spot. Yep. All right, so gate. This is the biggest source of RNG in the run. Um, basically, how this fight goes, gate is going to at times will fire uh, electric orbs at you, and you basically slash them to split them up, and you actually use them to fire his own energy back at him. 
Uh, when his health gets lower, though, he'll add, like, an attack that can destroy these blocks that you're standing on. So, um, when he gets to the lower ends of the his life meter, like, all he can do, if he wants, is to do that move. And now, you just saw the Ensuizon glitch active, so you see he's not taking any damage. Now so now, yeah, now the, now the fight hopefully will go pretty easily for him. Yeah. Once you do the Ensuizon glitch, you can just stand on top of gate and use... Crazy Nick's Fire Rising Slash, since it generates a lot less lag than slashing, uh, slashing normally. Yeah, he can throw out different color energy balls, like uh, the blue ones there actually will, I think, slow you down a little bit. Uh, the blue ones pull you toward... Yeah, yeah. Blue one. uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the red the one. The red one close you. Yeah. Yeah. The purple one summons Nightmares. Nightmares and... and then... The Green other one, I think, shoots things. I'm not entirely sure. Or the green ones are normal. I can't remember. But yeah, you see now that Gates in low HP, you see him unleashing that big energy wave that can destroy platforms. But yeah, if you didn't know about the Ensuizon glitch, this fight is really crazy. So yeah, we could be here for a while if Gate wants us to. There's just there's nothing Garuda can do about this. He just has to wait for Gate to cooperate. All the pink beams. So yeah, it it could if is possible that you know team beat boot can actually catch up yeah but it doesn't seem likely because uh gate is almost dead i think it's either one or two more one more yeah one more will do it and once gate is dead zero freezes in place so like if you were about to fall into the bottomless pit and you get like the last ditch hit he just freezes <laughs> Yeah, it gets stuck on the last animation he was too. And now that we actually have a mission complete screen, we don't have to deal with that stage again. So, final stage for X6. Uh, we have the traditional refights, like in every Mega Man game. So, we have to deal with that still. This section right here is really tricky with the spikes if you don't know exactly where to go. It really didn't want to give me the benefit of visibility when you were dropping down there for some reason. Yeah. So most, uh, I think most of the fights are going to be done the same with a couple of exceptions like we're seeing here on the Heat and Extreme fight. Uh, Zero's using a a different sword technique, which is ooh, we're seeing the desperation phase. Didn't quite kill him in time. I call that like the Ra, the the Egyptian god Phoenix state uh, state. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that's watched uh, the original Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Duel Monsters knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Melody Gore trying to get that skip. Yeah. The thing is, if you don't get crushed by these pillars, you actually won't go through the next one. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was a little scary about Easter. And having to use the life recover uh, right away. Something to note about life recover is that this stage where you fight high max and then you fight gate it's considered a single stage for life recovery so since yeah. 
she used it here, she won't be able to use it later on. Um... There's the second phase of High Max again. Despot. Despot. Good fight. That actually is easier than it. it, it it looks. Uh, that looks hard, but uh, I don't think it's that difficult. You just gotta, you just gotta space your dashes and. It's actually more difficult if you try and go too fast. I find. Yeah. Like if you, yeah. Just, yeah. If you rely on baiting him to do that shot in the middle, you're totally safe. But the second you get off kilter and the shots start going to the side and you're not timing yourself correctly, uh, you're done. And if you try and go too fast, you're gonna end up slashing them like. Uh, like was mentioned, they're going to split up into four, and they hurt a lot, so... Drifted and, and on the rails, uh, fine. Once it gets off the rails, eh, a little bit of a nightmare. <laughs> you use Turtleoid's own weapon against him. That's funny. He's the Metal Man of the X-Series. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Blastoise round two. Is this the other way to kill Rainy Turtle? Yep. He just yep. can push back and turn around. <laughs> if he if we do the first latch and then press the T pad on the opposite direction, Zero will do the second latch facing back. So we use the last part of the hitbox. <laughs> And deals a lot of damage. And... Okay, for Ground Scaravage, we're using a combination of the Buster and some Slashing. Yeah, Scaravage sideframes are really weird. There is a quick kill you can do with Zero, where you... Uh, do a um, crouching slash and then do a very well timed buster shot and you can kill him right there. It's really hard to do. And if you fail it, you can still do a lot of damage. So it's really good. I'm very disappointed at the boss's refought levels and life bars in this game. Level 4 and like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like the life gauge is slightly larger than yours. It's not like X5s. Like, come on, what are they doing? But it, okay, now I, now that I mentioned that, is that just based on just the difficulty? Like, that's no, just the because bosses, of the bosses will always be level four on the boss rich. Oh, okay. I, I wondered if that was easy mode, like, a thing. Okay. Team Mandrel Deathless. Uh. Good question. Um, so? I don't remember dying. <laughs> no, I, I don't think we've seen any deaths on Mandriller's side yet. It's really impressive for basically six games. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the first form of Sigma here. Uh, a lot of people like to call him Hobo Sigma. <laughs> yeah. It's not even a boss, come on. Like, yeah, he, he's, like, yeah, he just very slow. He just walks really slow, but uh, like he does have some really nasty attacks at like if he gets health gets really low. But he just does nothing. Yeah. But it's this next form that's the scary one. And 
I like this music so good. It's just a shame that we don't get to hear much of it. It's a combination of the Sigma fight from X1 and X2. It's just kind of it's, it's like meshed together. So you'll hear like the first part of the X1 Sigma fight, and then you'll hear the X2 part right after. It's a, it's a killer track. Okay, it looks like he got the Insuizon glitch right there by destroying that platform. So now he's just waiting for him to open his mouth so he can go ahead and do the slash with the guard shell active right here. That's what he's waiting for. All oh, that lag, but and he's dead. <laughs> GG. GG. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll stick around to, uh, until the other two runners finish X6. And then uh, I will step out and I'll let uh, our commentating team take over for the remainder of two games. Oh, is this okay? Uh, this title screen for X7 is this the Legacy Collection version? Yeah, uh, all three runners agreed to play on the Legacy Collection version, and they'll be playing on the European UK version of the game, which has the Japanese damage tables but the English voice acting. Oh, nice. So I guess X7 speedrunning was a little bit better now that this this collection came out, if I understand that correctly, because. Wasn't it like this game like really like annoying to play in general on PlayStation Two? Low yeah. times. Uh, yeah, low the times load times were, were absurd. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's yeah, it, it's beneficial for a couple reasons. Um, like was mentioned, Japanese has the ideal damage tables because North America, for some reason, they decide they were just gonna like have all the damage, which makes things a lot longer as you'd expect um but we did find out and i believe it was even colt that was putting in the language damage table research once legacy had dropped um because he was learning and he wanted to be able to read the menu so he knew what he was doing so, which makes <laughs> sense um but he didn't want to have to be face against those terrible north american damage tables and i think he did a round of testing and found out that the uk english version has the same jp damage tables interesting um yeah, X7 uh, is the first uh, X game on the PS2's uh, era, um, bringing like a couple some new elements to the uh, to the series, like the three dimensional controls that you see here in the intro. Um, you know, a lot of people like to hate on X7, but it's not that bad, like everyone says. I mean, it's just different than what we're used to seeing. Uh, to answer the question in chat, a damage table, just referencing how much damage each weapon does to each boss. So basically what they did for North American versus Japanese is they took all of the damage and essentially, for the most part, they have it. Uh, for, with the exception of everything that they couldn't have. So things that would normally do two damage to a boss, like a, a regular shot from Axel, for example, will end up doing one damage on the North American English version instead. Yeah, but depending on who you ask uh, on X7, how bad or how good it is but there there was some aspects of the game i thought could have been improved but the 3d controls was definitely a different feel that homage to x1 going on right now oh yes <laughs> the highway yeah zero gets his turn on the highway stage for uh in x7 we at least giggle up. There's some form of line that he says. He's like, I can't believe I'm back here again. And and like yeah. zero next time. It it's like been dad. a real mess. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and, and he sounds like dad too. So he's just like, I can't believe I'm back here again. The old classic B blighter. Oh, nice. That that was an that was an STC too, right? Uh, sort of. Um, sort of, yeah. The next seven, you actually have a dash ledge, but you can STC like in X5 by crouching on the 2D sections. On the 3D sections, you can do sort of an STC, but it's harder since if you that, do it wrong, kinda, you can yeah, do that, a dash ledge. That kind of looked something like Infinite Sword Glitch from Ocarina of Time or something. <laughs> because he just had the he just had the sword sticking straight up and he was just taking damage 
So there's a little bit of an homage to uh, X2 there with the collapsing walls. Wait a second. Yeah. And like on X6, Zero has a double jump from the get-go on X7. I <laughs> like Axel. He's like, are you stupid? You're in the <laughs> Just stand there. Get a move on. Yeah, Voice acting was acting. hilarious in this game, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> uh, forgot what the name of that boss was. It looks a lot like... Um, it kind of... I'm not saying it looks like Guard Scorpion from FF7, but that's the first boss that comes to mind. There's actually a neat trick here. If you quickly swap characters right as this boss starts, uh, Axel comes in completely like in a shadow, shadow Axel. So that's like one of the nice little tricks you can do. All right, well, while we're in a little bit of a transition period here between X7 and X6, I just want to go ahead and introduce our next commentator who's going to be doing X7 and X8. And also, who has been the main organizer of this relay, who is very much a big part of why this is happening. So, everybody say hello to Coltaho. Welcome. Hello, welcome. Hello. Um, so, we actually got to see the, the Scorpion. He only takes four hits to the face to kill. Um, the easiest way to know what damage tables you're on is if that takes five hits instead. One of the worst parts of X7, as you can see, is all the amount of explaining and talking that's between the stages. Oh, and, uh, you yeah, just that's sit annoying. Here and wait. I hated that. Like, oh. And this here, all these individual areas that the game wants to tell you about. We don't care about that. We just want to start blowing stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one thing x7 introduces is now when you go select a stage you actually select two characters and you can actually swap them in and out it kind of adds like that uh marvel versus capcom feel where you can just switch characters um at first you don't have access to x because in the story he's uh quote unquote retired uh but there's two ways to unlock him you either rescue 64 reploids in the eight maverick stages or you clear all the eight maverick stages and he, you will have access to him for the gate stages or excuse me the uh red crimson stages. palace yeah the red stages or the crimson palace or the highway we will only be using axel and zero for this run Yep. And what's and what's really unique too about X7 is that you can actually do a new game plus. Uh, once you beat the game, you can actually save your file, and you can use that data at the start of a new playthrough. So, uh, so all your part. Unlocked. Yes, with X unlocked. Yes. Uh, pretty sure X is unlocked. Uh, yes. Someone might want to correct me if I'm wrong on that. I. I think he's unlocked, is he not? He is. Okay. This is unlocked even plus, but not until after you have a save. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah, not not in a uh, new game. You have to unlock him before you can use him. So, uh, our other two runners in X6 uh, about ready to finish here. Uh, we got Team Beat Boot about ready to finish X6 and Team GBD uh, about to finish Gate. Oh, some of the uh, moves here on some of these Mavericks in X7 are pretty hilarious, like uh, Vanishing Gunguru with the triangle kick. <laughs> I feel like they really, like, put emphasis on the voice acting a little bit, especially in the fights. With one obvious uh, instance. Yes, X does have armor in X7. It's actually called the Glide Armor. Um, 
And traditionally, yes, you get the armor traditionally like you did in X1 through X3. Once you enter the capsule, the part is actually visible onto X. You don't have to collect all four parts before you can access it. If I'm not mistaken. It's been a while since I've played this too. Yeah, on X7 when you get an armor part, it, it, you can use it immediately. But you can't unequip the armor parts until you complete the armor. When you complete the armor, then you can choose if you want to use the armor or an armor that... Yeah, that's that's the tricky part, yeah. Yeah, once you get all four of the armor pieces, then you can use it as one or not at all, so... It's kind of weird that they did that. But yeah, you have what's called a glide. So you jump normally, and then when you press jump again, you, you just glide to the ground. Uh... You have, like, a stronger Plasma Buster shot. Uh, I forgot what the other... You obviously have body armor, but I forgot what the helmet part did. I think it might have something to do with weapons. I'm not really sure. Um, I think it makes you useless energy. Not entirely sure. There's also a Giga Crash. Right now, you actually see that we're in a blue mech. This isn't typical. Uh, it's actually a new strat that was just figured out. All three of these runners have been working on this game since the, the relay was announced, and they've been finding some awesome strategies. And the one here you're going to see here is using the blue mech to use the dash attack against the boss, and it does a massive amount of damage. Yeah, because the boss fight actually takes place in that very same room. It just has, like, it's barriered off, so you have to put the armor in that center area, don't you? to use it uh, you stay in it regardless but it's I'm more back. so has to do I think with and I Colt has the exact details but they like bail on a certain mech or something to do with how they handle the mech earlier in the stage which determines the mech that they get later because uh, you runners used to get a little like pink or red kind of crab style mech, boss, uh, mech for the boss Oh yeah, that's right. I remember now. Okay. You bring the mech the from before into the arena, you can use it later. Okay, so it's maintaining the first one is what it is then, eh? Shout outs to Vanishing Gungaroo. I like I like his little whoosh, whoosh. he just like does little wish sounds and he's like triangle kick. kick. Forever debate if it's triangle kick or wide angle kick. Uh, I have the strategy guide for this game, the actual Brady games, and it says triangle kick. <laughs> I actually have it in my in my hand right now, looking at it. Now, I will say this: the strategy guide for X Seven is trash. It has no maps. All it has is photos. Uh, basically after stage screen that we're seeing it's explaining to you here's your score here's your time and uh, you can change the score by playing really well we want not to do that because it's just gonna go back down later and it wastes a few seconds every time it changes uh, aside from that every single reploid that you save gets their own time on the screen and then every single reploid that you save that has like a chip will also bring another screen that takes a long time but we do want certain amount of chips for the run yeah yeah, each, uh, every time you get one of those chips, you can increase your power, speed, or special uh, enhancement. And I believe it's a, it's a step, it's an upgrade system, like, uh, in order to get, like, Master Saber for, like, Zero, you have to get, like, the previous upgrades first. You can't get, like, Saber Combo 2 first and then get Saber Combo 1. It's a, it's an, a step system. It's yeah, incremental. It's a system. Um, so basically the way that the chips work is chips can be applied to any character in terms of power, speed, or special. And then as you stack up, um, they can increase for things like a saber combo, but you also have other things like special, which kind of all have their own uh, unique effects. Uh, later, there's even a ability that increases iframe time and is quite ridiculous. Yeah, uh, I think it's... 
uh, damage barrier or something like that, or shock buffer one or two. It has it's one of them like that, but it's really nice uh, that you have the upgrade system. Ones we're going for is hyperdash on Axel, and then typically iframes. There's different runners can choose different strategies where they maybe get more iframes on both characters. Or what's fastest though is only doing it for one. So Borski here, all you do, you just have to collect all of these uh, bombs before uh, time runs out. And there are some Reploids that are right next to the bombs, so uh, I don't believe you have to pick, uh, you have to save any of them. You just got to get the bombs here. Yeah. It depends on your chip browning. There are yeah. two Reploids yeah. with chips in every stage, so you could grab them here. Yep. But you want to try to collect all of the bombs on one trip. Uh, it's really hard, but it is possible. It may flip like F Zero, but it does not control like F Zero. Oh uh, yeah, that yeah, that rod chaser is very very janky. You could have just stopped it. It does not control like. Okay. It just... <laughs> okay, he slowed down there to pick up that Ripoid. I'm assuming that's the one that has one of his uh, enhancement chips or enhancement parts. Oh, I love the uh, the voice acting on on this guy. You punk! You punk! Yeah. Dude, your breathing's getting heavy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funny thing. You can't advance the character tag. that you go in with is what voice lines you get to hear, and some of them are yeah. way better. Oh yeah. Okay, here's the here's the really thing. Like, like when you when we get to Hyenard, like before you fight them, they're both walking side by side, like very casually into the arena. Like, what the heck? I know. They act all buddy buddy. Like, there's a lot of he comes up behind you. It's the perfect time for like a sneak attack, and it's just like. All right, I'm just going to stroll by you casually for some conversation. Oh. Uh, okay, so uh, Team Greenbacker Dad is finishing up uh, X6, so my time on the can in the commentary booth is about to come to an end. I'm going to uh, let uh, my fellow commentators take over for the rest of the relay. Uh, hope you all enjoyed my time here in the booth. Thanks uh, for having me on uh, GDQ for this relay. Appreciate the uh, support. Thanks for being on. We really appreciate your commentary for the last uh, six games. Uh, thank you guys. Thanks you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of the relay. Uh, as soon as uh, Sigma is down for X6, I will hop out and uh, hope you all enjoy the rest of the relay and uh, have a good uh, day, everybody. Forms that mouth open, and then he'll be done with X6. And that's GG for Team Grimbike or Death. Thanks to you, Justin. Very good counter. Definitely. Much appreciated. Uh, team Mandriller here. We're entering ton, ton Onion stage, or Two Onions, or however you want to pronounce it. Onion. Just Onion. <laughs> uh, we're going to be going, basically holding right and jumping for the entire stage because it circles on itself. We're going to be picking up, uh, or trying to avoid most of the Reploids. Um, there are specific ones with upgrade CDs that we're going to grab. You need to know about the onion boss as he goes round and around. Yeah. Silly stage. <laughs> That's a stage going around and around.
Yeah, if you if you guys notice too, looking at uh, time wise where we are versus estimate, you know we may be through three quarters of the X relay game wise, but uh, we've still got lots of relay left because X seven and X eight are both fairly lengthy in comparison to uh, especially the Super Nintendo games and whatnot. But yeah, we've uh, everyone get comfy. These last two titles are going to be around for a little bit longer. Mint boss that was just killed on Mandriller's stage, it can be trolly as well. It can hide instantly and infinitely. Well, like that's happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with relay luck, we may get to see it yet. You see some nice double jumps uh, used to kind of cheese these sections. I go around and you can just go up. Yep. One thing we should mention, we haven't really uh, talked about it yet, is you do get um, uh, you do get upgrades when you beat bosses above and beyond weapons, but to like weapon energy and uh, what's it weapon energy and health or something like that uh, with each boss. Um, so you will see our players trying to kill certain bosses with certain characters to basically get their upgrades. Especially early on, because you want to be able to use two specials for the bazooka with Axel uh, by Ride Borski. If anyone is hoping to see X in this run, I'm apologizing to you now. Uh, he's going to be an NPC. <laughs> Comes in, uh, basically, basically says, "Hey guys, what's up?" And then we never hear from him again. By the time he actually becomes usable as a character in a new game, he's just not viable to use because, unfortunately, you've powered up the other characters by that point, so he's kind of moot. To crowing stage and it is it looks easy but the slightest mistake will kill you as you're jumping from plane to plane and it's kind of tough to control the stage is not um not not a graceful stage by any means it's it's honestly real frustrating not only the planes moving back and forth but just slipping off what seems to be like the edge of planes or or not getting good jumps and just yeah, it's wonky. It's, it's janky. It's not good. Yeah, the physics on those as they move is, is just magical. The fact that they included a little thing in the top right that says whether or not you're in 3D or 2D, because you know you can't plainly tell if you're playing in 2D or 3D. I guess it's what they think is going to be the case. They just want to make sure you know. Yeah, <laughs> just so you know, you can run around everywhere when the camera's behind you. There's the forced perspective 3D like we see on Mandriller's side right now. Uh, 
Uh, Biba is starting Borski. Ready? And GBD is uh, just getting ready to start all the uh, the eight maps. I've noticed this already, but Axel now has access to um, the tornado, the Volt tornado attack. It is insanely powerful. It can hit so many times. Uh, it's going to be very key to a lot of the boss kills and even mini boss kills. You'll see it in Crow Rang. Um, you'll see it in. Oh, Warfly Stage. You'll see it in uh, Use Against Red. Zero and Axel can use it to a huge effect. So you're never coming back. No, I asked you that. You never change, do you? Warning! Jack pointing out he's got tiny wings. <laughs> I don't think I ever actually noticed that. This is basically going to be what you're seeing. Far away, you also have to be like it's very specific angle and distance from them, so it can be a pain. It's a nightmare. mission report streams coming up you can kind of uh, check the differences based on how many reploids were rescued or if any chips were gotten and you'll see that it can add up frames lets you just run through most of these stages without having to worry about anything. I think that one also prevents you from falling if you get hit in the air up out to a pit, right? I'm sure if it provides any knockback immunity. I do know that certain attacks will always knock you down, so there's places and bosses where we'll purposely take an attack from something else instead. Uh, the thing you can see on Mandriller's side here is this stage is, I guess, interesting thing to decide to do with it is that you can jump up and flip it upside down. Uh, it's rather straightforward though, and then you just go to the end and it's one of the shortest and easiest stages you can possibly do. Assuming you don't grab one of the wrong portals and then get completely lost. Yeah, that never around, you're done. <laughs> that moment you look at stage and go, wait, I didn't even know this part of the level existed. <laughs> Something funny about X7's bosses is that some like this one sniper and Titor give like really philosophical speeches and stuff. <laughs> oh, and then sort of like just burnt to the ground. <laughs> Is facing that somewhat trolley mini boss I was talking about earlier. Warning. 
Oh yes, rolling is also very good. We I don't think we mentioned that earlier, but uh, rolling is pretty handy because you gain iframes when you roll, so you can actually just roll through enemies and stuff. While Axel's rolling, if you're shooting, they auto-target the enemies, so you don't really have to worry about aiming. It's pretty good luck there. Uh, Anteater can go around the, the huge tube he's on and just hide, and you can't do anything. You just have to wait. a great gun guru fight. This will be the last two chips. I'm not quite sure uh, focuses chip routing, but hopefully that's the last time we see that screen. Yeah, I think he lost one of the chips on Tonian, so he got one here instead. Only hit no because they can. They try and confirm. They're like, "Are, are you sure? Is this okay?" You don't yeah. know. <laughs> and it defaults to no. <laughs> no, and that's oh, cool. default to no. And and again, like, why are you throwing the password at me? Ready? Like, are you sure you want to spend these points? Okay, are you sure you want to continue the game to go to stage collect? No. <laughs> I mean, valid question. So now we're moving on on Mandriller's side to Warfly. This stage is basically the mini-boss stage, has three of them, and we're going to use that Volt Tornado for pretty much all of them, including the last boss, and just destroy each one instantly. Ideally. Oh yeah, this boss is strange. Uh, it's, it's like a bird plane on a platform for some reason. Yeah, they, they made this really cool airplane model and decided, well, it might be a little too hard to animate that, so let's put it on a platform and spin it in circles. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want your planes to fly. You just you want them to spin around on little platforms. Um, you're also going to see, uh, I imagine, grabbing the tank here. Yes. There we go. Uh, there's actually an energy tank there um, that you saw him go back and grab. And it's very handy. Ready? The other sub tank is in uh, Gunkaroo stage, but you have to climb one of the towers, and it takes a little, little bit to get. So usually you only need one tank anyway. <laughs> you might as well grab the easier one. Any bosses. This can also be kind of a pain because it rotates and then the guns can go behind and you have to wait until they're in, in front to hit them. Except with Tornado, you can kind of snipe them from behind if you're lucky. Not know that. I'll have to remember that. It's pretty tough and you can't do it while on the ground. You have to do a small hop at least. on Borski here, getting a pretty good pattern. Focus mentioning in chat that uh, apparently for the uh, boss there's a RNG exploit with, with zero and the, the triple barrier, so we're going to see that. You prepare to feel pain. I 
and boss, in which case I also would understand that. That would be kind of cool to have an RNG manipulation for the cannons. Yeah, there's a specific little bit you can do, and then he just gets confused and stops trying to dive. Got it. So he's just going to sit here and slash away. Uh, if you don't have triple iframes, though, uh, you'll take way too much damage, so you can't just stand here. Makes sense. Cool, I've never seen that one before. Oh, nice fight. Working on crowing. So hard to hit when he's in the background. He is well, he's got to he's gotta be a little careful, but he's fine. Suki Moss coming up on the silly, silly stage. thing that we just got after finishing Warfly is the water gun. It is another insanely overpowered weapon that I just don't think they tried to use or something. I don't know how it got through the process, but... They're already... <laughs> already for this stage. The towers are one of the most important things to try to dodge here, just because they will knock you down and it takes a while. Um, you can see that uh, focus switched to zero because Axel's life is getting low and we require Axel for uh, a pretty large skip in the next part. Let me know here. Um... It's probably even worthwhile, depending on when you want to do it, uh, to maybe even switch to zero a little bit earlier with the triple I frames. You could get through that with a little less damage overall. Um, but on personal preference, of course. As long as you're comfy, you're comfy. That's all that matters. Here, this is the the one time we get to use Axel's copy ability. We grab that guy and fly right over. We do have to be really careful here because you can still take damage. You can't take come out of this form on your own. You have to wait for it to wear off. And while that is happening, you really are just sitting there moving slowly. So. Is that behind you? That. I think something's burning. <laughs> that focus is just going at him with this tornado move. So we don't get to hear the uh, burn to the ground quite as long as you might hope. <laughs> Worth noting too, uh, we didn't make a point to say it, but you you attack the legs of the um, 
big robot that he's riding to get it to stop so it's easier to go up the side there. Final Maverick for a focus. On stage without dying to triple eye for a ton. This is real. Those big rocks, if they touch you, they knock you down, so it's not really optimal. See, they're uh, taking the D boost off of the little bees instead. some good time catching up here uh, going through anteater stage about to fight the boss now while Sukimos is bringing GBD uh, even faster up to speed it looks like uh, heading towards the end of crowing I think this is really where you're to see everything start to tighten up I'm assuming no team has any major mistakes uh, you should still see the gap start to shorten a little bit and as we work our way towards the start of X8. It'll be interesting to see kind of where everyone's starting. Definitely. Three bosses fights all at once here. Let's see, uh, Stone Kong takes multiple hits from the tornado attack. has unlocked X. Uh, like we mentioned before, he's not used because every single time you defeat a boss you get health and energy and then also ability to spend chips on someone that you brought. But since we didn't have him, he gets nothing.
Ready? One of the... I don't know, what's the word for an Oz cooler that's really long and boring? Pickle? One of the best Oz scrollers. <laughs> um, fun fact about this stage, there's two parts to the Oz scroller. There's this first one that doesn't last too long, and there's a second one where they start throwing a few pits at you. And if you die, there is no checkpoint. You have to do that whole second section again. So if you get to the boss and die, or if you f jump in one of the pits, you just do it all again. I love the fact that he just randomly decides to kind of like lift up his little roller and try and stuff like smash you with it. <laughs> Fun thing is, there's a uh, there's a point later on where he does that the exact same time that this nice Crash Bandicoot style pit is coming, and so if you're not careful, he will hit you right into the pit. Yeah, I've had that happen more than once. Try to lure you into a false sense of security for this. I feel like there's just no great way to frame this level. I mean, you look at it, and I mean, yeah, it's an auto school, and we want to put that aside. And then you just look at the camera perspective, and you're running against the camera, which feels so unnatural, and you can't see enemies coming towards you, you can't see upcoming bits, which means you can't ride the front of the screen too closely, especially if you don't know what's upcoming. Uh, it's just a wee bit rough. Yep, and we can hover with Axel, but if you're hit when you're hovering, you drop like a stone, so... Example. Uh, luckily, he made it past all the hard part. He's going to try to swing right here, probably, for the health. The cool thing about this, the big health pickups in this game fill your life entirely and your sub-tank entirely. Um, but if he already has a good tank, he may just ignore, ignore it. At loving the fact that the dozer can just roll over the broken parts of the highway. Because Vinci games. Doesn't believe in the law of gravity. He's not bound by those rules. <laughs> Clearly the pit knows the difference between an enemy and a friend. see if Pot does the manip. He's going to go for it right now. It's looking pretty good. Looks like he's not getting any dives. Very nice. Oh, by the way, the... Uh, the mole bore is dead. <laughs> it takes two hits. Coming up on the biggest RNG portion of X7, and that's red. Um, luckily, because of how fast we can usually kill him, he's not too much of an issue, but he can still be a jerk. Focus here, he's purposely taking D boost off these little Mets so he doesn't have to touch the huge boulder, which will knock you down. Mm -hmm. 
Moses having his chat with Anteater. And you can see in the cutscene, we do have X as a cameo there. He's actually, apparently, he's one of our characters. Fight's frustrating. Like, this fight is so frustrating. I remember that the first time I played X7, and on the American version, I dropped the game on this fight. I never finished the game until much later. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the U.S. damage tables are effectively make everything twice as hard. Uh, not exactly, but for the most part. I mean, this fight you're just dealing with kids. There's just there's there's so much space where you're just gonna take a death if you fall. So. And if you dash jump against a wall, you can't jump out of it. So that kills you all the time if you're not ready for it. No one is ready for it. Um, so the big RNG I was talking about, he can choose any of these platforms to teleport to. He's pretty much set cycle weight wise on what attack he's going to do, but where he shows up is the rough part. That was actually a pretty good red fight for focus. Lots of doubles, hitting tornadoes twice on uh, each cycle. Ready? <laughs> Focus Sega Chad, this could be <laughs> Love it. Oh no. Papat taking a quick death there. Luckily he gets to restart the fight. That's all he had. off the edge there for a second. And on Focus's side here, uh, this is a, you have to kill a set number of these enemies. And there's a couple of different ways to do it, but uh, basically you just want to kill them as fast as possible, so whatever works for you. to see Sukumos using the tornado to destroy these turrets as quick as possible. Having a really good mini boss fight. That was real quick. Like Focus is taking, trying to be extra careful here. You can actually dash under all of this and across all the spikes um, through this whole part. Yeah, these uh, these platforms are a little bit scary because they have the spikes on the back, and like you just you get hit by them, and they're really frustrating. You would think that you could jump on them based on you know jumping on these ones, but uh, they don't like to play nice. Um, but Focus did make it to the refights here. They give you a nice full refill right there for you. And like I mentioned before, it does fill your sub tank entirely. Uh, as well as any missing life on your character that you pick it up with. So, 
Um, for the refights, all the Mavs have double the health than their standard fight. Um, we'll see runners probably taking different paths. It doesn't really matter who you do in what order. Uh, you just want to minimize the amount of switching between X and zero, Axel as much as possible, or zero and Axel. Most of the strats for the refights don't change a whole lot. There's a few that will be uh, using just more Tornado because we didn't have it before. As you can see, doing a lot of work on Borski there. Sukimos is now on the final Maverick stage. In the refights room, it does look like there are coffins by the teleporter, which I always thought was a neat little kind of, I guess, dark take on it. The ones and zeros are in there. Burn in the ground cameo. In case anybody's wondering, that isn't because of how we're killing this boss, it's not because of a glitch or anything like that. That was programmed into the game to happen and make that noise all the time. I don't know how nobody caught that. Like, it, I, there's no explanation for that. Like, unless you literally just never played your own boss fight with the sound on. <laughs> but that's not supposed to happen in games? Playtesting? What's that? I won't pretend I'm QA. Oh no! Sukumo's taking a death. Yeah, that's kind of the rough part I was saying earlier. You can't get out of this form, you just have to move really slow until it wears off. So if you're low life, it's risky. Shoutouts to our uh, lovely uh, person on Tech Railcoon, who, uh, you know, is giving you all what you want right now. I guess I, I know we're not at the ending winding down part, uh, but we're definitely more than halfway, and I will say big shout-outs to everyone in, in terms of staff helping out, and of course thanks to Colt for organizing and 
course, all of the runners. Don't forget to you know check all of the runners out today. Give them a follow. Hit them up. And the Mega Man community is absolutely awesome. So uh, I, I love seeing this level of participation. And uh, thanks you guys, chat uh, chat for coming and hanging out. And uh, to all the lurkers too, everyone viewing. But uh, yeah, hope everyone's enjoying some some chill Sunday Mega Man. It's been a great relay so far. I appreciate everybody coming out and supporting it, however you can. And speaking of support, just want to remind everybody that if you do enjoy broadcasts like this one, like this Hot Pits broadcast, uh, and if you want to see more of what we have to offer, we do have uh, weekly shows. We have about five shows coming up this week. And if you like that sort of stuff, you want to see more of that happening, please consider uh, supporting the stream, uh, watch an ad, you know, subscribe to us, watch the VODs on YouTube, any, anything like that. Uh, really appreciate your support. You can also cheer, so thank you. A little bit scary. Uh, we don't have the mech benefit this time, so we have to go 1v1. And, uh, whew. Few bounces, but focus makes it okay. Just in learning X7, I know these runners make it look super fun. Uh, you should definitely do so. Join the Discord, get to talking. We're actually discovering new things that cut off several minutes just recently um, of the run, so. Inquire. What it's happens when Ant Eater changes it's color? Not quite as bad because if he does go away, you can still kind of hit him, um, but he can still be trolling. Uh, the refights here are some of the longest in the entire series. It does take a while to get through all of them. Play through the auto scroller almost to the end of it uh, while Papa is coming up on refights. Just a Sigma having some really good one-liners in this game. Do you? Break you down to scraps. Oh, that's right, folks. I'll do it again and again. Right, folks. Exactly. Thank you. That is right where my mind went. Give me a good Love it. It's now a professor. He went to school and got a degree. So yeah. Um, here he can teleport to the background and shoot at you. We preferably don't want to see that. Because um, we can just sit here doing this all day. So strange, because I'm, I'm used to like very, I'll say, for the most part, 
fast moving Sigma fights, you think back to like X1 and X2 and stuff like that. And then you look at something like this where he just like casually strolls towards you with a big gun. It's a really big gun. <laughs> And that there's an even bigger gun. As you can tell, though, that fight isn't really much to talk about. So let's let's step it up a notch. Now that we're planet sized, big boy is back. Uh, there's a few different attacks they can do, and they're all random. Uh, what you don't want to see is this one where he teleports away and flings things at you. You want him right here in your face. So watch out for punches. <laughs> yeah, yeah this there, there's one really bad attack he can do when he's far away, and that's the punch, and it hurts a lot. And he, it'll also probably knock you off a ledge if you're not careful. Yeah. Uh, Focus making a really smart move here using this sub tank. Uh, there's a safe spot you can stand right next to this ledge where it actually protects you from all these balls while you're able to hit him. It's the pun. I'd say real good pattern so far. It's only taken off in the background like once. Out oh, twice. It's oh. probably lost two minutes so far. Yeah, this is rough. He wants to punch. Oh. Oh. It's scary when the punch is the follow up, too. Like, oh no. Yeah, there, there is a very small window where you can stand and the punch will never hit you, but it's kind of tight. You got to be careful with it. Um, so now Focus has to do the fight without a sub tank, which basically just means being very careful. Uh, meanwhile, Sukimos is working on red. And I think Papat is about halfway through the refights. Take another death, but he'll get it soon. Uh, he's just giving the other teams time to catch up, that's all. Clearly, <laughs> the checkpoint's pretty forgiving in the sense that you don't need to fight the first Sigma fight to redo this one. the only case, unless you count X8 as him not being the last boss, but... Looks like Sukumos is still trying to catch up, almost to the refights. can reflect those lasers back. GG. Uh, focus is kind of I was like so terrified at uh, him falling off the edge there. 
It's not a fun feeling. Yeah, and it can happen very easily. So easily. Now it will be Time Link starting up X8 here in a moment. Like, I feel like a lot of people didn't get to experience X8 because the feelings towards X7, which, I mean, I understand, but I feel like X8 actually makes a really fun speed game. I was pleasantly surprised uh, when I played a little bit of it myself. Um, but it's got some really neat charm to it. If you guys haven't seen it before, you guys are in for some shenanigans. You're going to see some Flying Zero. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of skips. Auto scrollers are a little bit too prominent in uh, X8, but thankfully we're going to be able to skip one of them. So that makes it a little more tolerable. Uh, has a few bangers, so we have that to look forward to, but it's, uh, it's actually quite fun. I, I recommend people give it a try, especially if you haven't played it before, because you maybe overlooked it due to X7 back in the day. Definitely, I agree. It's a lot of fun. Um, like you mentioned, auto-scrollers are a bit much, because if you count rooms where you're locked in them and doing arcade-style things <laughs> for a period of time, then this is full of them. Yeah, uh, perfect yeah. example right here. There's also a couple of really deadly rooms, and uh, until the players realize that you can encounter Vile in certain areas and you can force those uh, encounters to kind of prioritize over some of the really, really uh, terribly deadly rooms or lengthy rooms. Um, but if you get out of kilter or like off whack from that, to, it's just, it's a nightmare. There's a, there's a couple in particular with like bad spikes and stuff like that, that it's frustrating. Also, X8 introduces this new mechanic, the double attack. You have this cage next to your life bar, and that feels when you gather these diamond things. I'm not sure how they're called, but they refill that bar mm -hmm. and can do the double attack. It deals a lot of damage, but takes a lot of time. Generally, you won't see runners utilize it too much. Um, use it there because it's kind of like the force tutorial thing to do and whatnot. Um, yeah. It's it's as you mentioned very lengthy, so it's it's good in a pinch. Um, I know that it's great to rely on if you're kind of in that moment of panic because it it hits pretty hard and uh, the attack range is pretty broad and obviously gets you out of a little bit of a sticky situation. So uh, wouldn't be surprised if you see it maybe show up at a time or two outside of the tutorial just uh, due to need or uh, maybe safety more than anything. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Through, uh, throughout this intro, they're they're showing you all the different characters. They're reintroducing them, kind of like how they didn't do an X7 very well. <laughs> so you get to play as all three. Yeah. So we are back in the realm of 2D. So although we're gonna have 3D esque style graphics, uh, this game is solely in the realm of 2D. You're not gonna see any behind the back. You're not gonna see any running towards the camera. Only for the you will, uh, uh, Avalanche Jetty stage. That's sort of 3D. Oh, you know, that's fair. I guess like the ride armor style or like the the ride chaser style stages are, are behind the back and uh, not your standard 2D, but... Not finishing very strong, uh, killing Sigma really quickly, had good RNG. Uh, Kalkoons is going to take over for X8 for their team beat booed. You guys are also going to get to see a little bit of uniqueness in X8 because uh, 
a lot of games, you know, you, you see emulator boards and things like that, and obviously control rulings for not pressing two directions simultaneously. But at this point, we're on PS2, and that means having access to a D-pad and an analog stick, both which function with movement, actually give us the ability to do just that. And uh, there is an exploit we're going to be making use of a little bit later, which is the flying zero glitch, essentially by equipping a certain attack or uh, utilizing a certain attack and pressing one direction on the D-pad and the opposite direction on the analog stick. So if you guys haven't seen that before, uh, sit tight. You're going to you're gonna have some fun with it. <laughs> yeah. But before that, we got the first Right chaser stage. This is Gigabolt Manowar. This is the whole stage, just following the boss until we deplete his HP and then we get to the actual boss fight. That's the whole stage. Yeah, and this is actually really special because if you let him get away, it is nearly impossible to catch back up and this you'll just time out. If you take too long, the game just kills you. Yeah, I think you can go around the city like two or three times and then you'll just die for some reason he, he just detonates at that point i think he's like all right well boom um but yeah this this stage is a nightmare casually if you if you get anywhere behind him you're not catching up and the obstacles don't seem to line up like the hitboxes don't seem to line up with where you're positioned on the screen it's it's a little rough thankfully it's pretty short as all characters having separate boosts so they can give you an advantage at the very beginning yeah We'll mostly be seeing the runners use serious air slash for bosses. So most of the boss fights will be done with zero. You're not going to see too much of uh, Axel throughout the run. Uh, you're going to see one choice use a little bit later, but most of this run is going to be a combination of X and zero throughout the duration. Yeah. Also, desperation attacks are a thing. Um, yeah, and they're a time-consuming thing. So every boss, once they get low on health, basically has their own little desperation attack. They're just going to go completely invincible, and they're going to waste your time while you, you dodge, and then you can finish them off. And I don't know if uh, everybody kind of paid attention. You can only damage the bosses for so much of their health bar before they become immune for a short duration. And that's how they let you basically use different characters with a bunch of different movesets. All do very similar damage total without having to, like, balance it. It's like iframes after a certain damage threshold, regardless of source. Yep. It is uh, a currency in this game, and it allows you to buy certain things. Um, they make continues actually matter, so you have these things called retry trips and chips, and if you run out of them, then you have to start the whole stage again. You can't retry uh, from the checkpoint. Um, so the runners are probably aren't going to be buying any of those for safety, but it is something to, to know about. Yeah, you also can't get any retreat chips on stages, so you must buy retreat chips if you want more safety. Yeah, they give you two free ones, and you can buy up to three extras. Um, but another thing with the currency is that they're trying to, to get a certain amount of currency so they can buy a couple different things throughout the run. Some for safety, but mostly uh, more health so they can do more dangerous strats and shock absorber for zero which will greatly reduce the time required at the end of the game yeah there's also a weapon for zero they'll be getting here on dark mantis stage that's the other thing they need to buy because on this game to unlock items you have to get the metal and then also buy it <laughs> so there's that You can you can see on uh, Mandriller's side that there's little spotlights. However, on the PC version, the spotlight that's supposed to illuminate in a circle on the ground and be very visible is not uh, for most people's PCs. So you have to kind of learn where it is and dodge them. Yeah, it's really weird. It doesn't happen to everyone. For example, it doesn't happen to Goguns, and so far I've only seen it happening on people with dedicated graphics card. 
and those who don't have graphic cards actually can see the spotlights. Yeah, the worse really the worse your brain. PC is, the better chance you have to see it. <laughs> um, but it's not a huge deal once you learn what they are. So what you're going to see pretty much throughout this whole run is the runners using zero and doing that double attack in the air. Once you slash once in the air, you can jump out of it using a double jump and then slash immediately. And you want to time these just right between hits so you get the most damage. Sukimos is coming up to the last phase of Sigma, or X7. Um, Sukimos will also be playing X8. Yeah, big shout out to Sukimos for stepping in and playing three games for uh, Team GBD. It's, uh, playing one game is stressful enough. I can't imagine how it's like playing three. Yeah, and I think he had to start at like 4 a.m. his time, so. Yeah. Yeah. Time zones. can be a little bit daunting, uh, especially when you're just starting out. Does a fair bit of damage, um, moves pretty fast if you don't recognize the attack pattern. And then of course, Desperation Attack. Yeah, Met is Desperation Attack in particular deals a lot of damage, so you have to be really careful with it. Another thing I don't think we pointed out is that every time you're damaged, a portion of that damage is in the red bars. And that's what will regenerate if you trade out characters and have them in the background. It slowly comes back and refills all the red bars. You man, X8 is secretly a fighting game. <laughs> also, I guess we didn't touch on this too. Um, a difference between X7 and X8. Uh, X7, you guys saw if you lost either of your characters you would die and you would have to start back at checkpoint, etc. Uh, X8 is different in the sense that both characters are independent. So once one character dies, um, then you can still automatically switch it to the other character and basically continue the fight and hopefully, hopefully win. And also the double attack bar refills slowly when you only have one character. And when it completely fills, the other character revives with little health, but you can use him again. And now we're seeing the Rasset Swen glitch for the first time. That's the Flying Zero glitch. That's That technique is <laughs> called... <laughs> oh, So fun. So bad, <laughs> uh, as was mentioned earlier, to do the Rasset Swen glitch, we have to press down and up at the same time. Well, sort of. It's kind of diagonal here. But on the PlayStation 2 controller, we will do it pressing down on the D-pad and, and the diagonal on the analog stick. The runners are playing on the PC version, so I'm not entirely sure what everyone's using. I know Kokons uses a keyboard, so yeah. I know I had issues getting the PC to recognize my D-pad, so how I do it is I use the analog stick on the controller for everything. And then when I want to fly, I just hold up with my pinky on the up arrow on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> the dual control source. Love it. Yep. Eagle on your platform. Uh, another cool thing you get to see here is this huge glaive. Uh, it has really good range and makes short work of bile. Yeah. That's the other thing we didn't mention. I think it's like every three stages, Bile appears somewhere in the stage where there's supposed to be an auto scroller, but it gets replaced with Bile. The routing is made in such a way that Bile appears on the longest auto scrollers. Yeah, it's the one in this stage that we just got to see him fight Vile in. If you don't fight Vile there, it is a very long 
process of blocks with spikes trying to instantly kill you, which you have to then redo the whole thing if you die. You're going into that blind casually and you're you're doing the actual spike room there. It's an absolute just torturous room because you're going to die and you think, okay, well, I'm probably almost through this, but th it keeps going. They keep getting faster and there's a very, very tiny window to even live in the, the best of attempts at that. So it's it's very key that you encounter Vile there so you don't have that room. See, we're just slashing bosses. Uh, we pretty rarely use their weakness. Sometimes we'll combo and we'll do one or two hits and then use their weakness. Uh, it just kind of depends on what you have to do for what boss, but most of the time we're just hitting them over and over with Glaive. There's also a very, very small time save on the PC version of X8. Every time you defeat a boss, you get this weapon get screen. And if you click when the weapon get message appears, you just skip it. And it's only for the PC version. It saves like one second for every time you do it. It might be even closer to one or two seconds even for every single one. It's It's not tiny. Um, you could also see there in uh, when they're going through the the stage and the shopping and everything, you can actually have a little mouse pointer, and it has a little zero icon for the mouse, or excuse me, X icon. X icon, yeah. Well, um, under the screen, we're seeing Bamboo Pandemonium stage, which will fly through most of it. And we'll also be seeing lots of right armors. This auto score is very like those in X7, where you have to kill a certain number of right armors until you can keep going with the stage. You can also get a right armor of your own and on this game, they have this funny mechanic where you can actually stomp enemies, like you're playing a Mario game or something, and they instantly die. Um, question in chat this uh, glitches were fixed in the legacy collection version um, both the currency underflow and the flying zero glitch were both fixed yeah currency underflow is also fixed on the ABC version I think that one uh, it only works on PS2 not sure about PS3 yeah just PS2 So on a little guy that just wants some hugs. <laughs> yeah. One of the shortest desperation attacks, but it does hurt a lot. A lot. I think it deals like it doesn't kill you instantly, it deals like a ton of damage. versions because there's a lot of chat about uh, obviously the, the versions of 
X8 going on. We're discussing the differences between PC and PS2 and whatnot. Um, the PS3 uh, JP PSN version is actually basically equally as fast as the PC version and uh, and has the Flying Zero glitch as well. So if you if you want to go that route, uh, that's actually uh, another option as well. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's been a while since I double-checked, but the PS3 record, I think, is even like 30 seconds faster than PC or something, which is a little bit shocking. Yeah. But uh, it looks beautiful, too. It's, uh, it's, a great, uh, it's a great port. Now we've reached Burned Rooster stage. This one has this long vertical auto scutter. We can stay flying on the top left with Zero, or we can also do what whatever Time League is doing. I've never saw this before, <laughs> but it looks pretty fun. I can't say I've ever seen that one either. That's uh, it's pretty neat. It looks kind of dangerous, though. If you fall and there's no platform below, you will actually die, no matter if you have two characters. There's a little bit of leeway. You can get a little bit off screen if there happens to be a platform underneath you, you're fine. But uh, yeah, no, I agree. This is my strategy. Is usually, just I'm going to fly in the top left corner until the auto scrolling section starts, and I use this as my break. I know for a fact, Gokun told me he uses that time to watch memes. <laughs> <laughs> Seen this strat for this room, I love it. <laughs> so you have all these little things that just basically fly out the first night, like, <laughs> um, and this is kind of a kill them all room, as we've seen lots of, but uh, yeah, I've never seen this method of doing it, it's kind of cool. Yeah. It's dangerous parts of any stage. Uh, with all these spikes. Nice and done. Another vile fight. has been gone for so long, we thought that you missed him and you wanted to fight him 17 times. Picking <laughs> up for lost time. And also, if you haven't played enough auto scores yet, if you revisit a stage on X8, you get these intermission thingies, which are yet more auto scores. Yeah, that also happens if you die too much. They, they're like, here's a bonus level, get some more currency. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't it appear like in the middle over the intro stage or something? Uh, yeah. It like pops up and you get to, uh, you have to select either intermission or I think uh, stage select. You guys haven't gotten enough auto scroller at this stage yet. Uh, <laughs> there's gonna be a, a nice little one after the boss too. I love that they uh, they ended this note on okay. Well, you've done all these auto scrollers and you've killed the boss. Now do another auto scroller. And by the way, if you die, you you go all the way back. I think. Do you start at the boss again, or do you start post boss right after line? the boss? You don't have to kill yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, you start after the boss. I don't want a game over though. This boss actually has two really annoying phases where he goes invulnerable. There's one where he starts up the uh, the pistons moving. Because that makes everything so much harder.
he uh, decides to come out and put the uh, walls of flame up. So, you know, just in case you didn't have enough space to play in. I love too we saw the, the first flame attack he did after he moved the pistons. He actually, like, locked his own fire in between two raised pistons. So he he takes the time to put the pistons out and do this big threatening move, and then he accidentally, like, nerfs his own attack with them. Looks like we're getting a slight route diversions here. Uh, so we got early Yeti. Yeah, going to Yeti. This is one of the the Wave Rider, Ride Chaser Auto Scroller sections where it actually matters a lot on how you defeat the mini boss and how fast you're going to go. Uh, aside from that, you also have two characters, like always, with their own boosts. So what you're going to see him do is use a boost, switch characters, and use the other boost instantly. Wait for the cooldown and then do the same thing again back and forth. Another thing to note on the Yeti Ride Chasers is that every character has a different attack. X, for example, can charge his buster. Zero shoots this half moon <laughs> saber like. <laughs> the beam saber stuff, yeah. Yeah. And Axel is just like his bullets. He doesn't have a, a charge or anything. that climb too. thing in this game is that each character they have their own unique version of the skill. Even between X and Axel, uh, they can differ uh, just enough where it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Now we're going to see one of the biggest skips on Mandriller's side. This is the Drillovite skip. We'll fly past this huge robot and then we'll use Reset Swing here to reach this door. We don't walk to the door normally. If we do walk up to the door, we'll soft lock the game. It's a really bad soft lock because you don't typically safety save. Well, it's pretty funny because you end up sticking the big robot from the outside in this room. At this stage is supposed to be a very lengthy auto scroller, and if you fly over and uh, approach the door, as mentioned, you can just skip it entirely. It's two and a half, three minutes, even like it's yeah, a long... no, it's significant. Because um, you got to go all the way to the right, and then all the way back to the left. Uh, he can also be a little trolley here with what what attack he's doing because you can miss him quick pretty easily. And you can't actually fly over that door until he's dead. That's why we have to kill him. Yep. Also, you can fly and leave off the first door, and if you fly off the second one, the boss won't appear. is an X8 or Auto Scrollers 3. <laughs> I mean, that that include the Jacob Elevator? Because I mean, technically, Jacob Elevator is an Auto Scroller too. Oh, it's definitely an Auto Scroller. You just have really good music for it, so. Yeah, so I mean, I, I guess more than three, because that would be an Auto Scroller, so that'd be four. Three, three in the Maverick stages. But yes, Jacob Ladder uh, music more than makes up for the fact that it's an Auto Scroller. And especially since you can stand in the middle and spin in circles and listen to the music. You don't even have to play. Yeah, it's another good relaxing one.
Moses is coming up for his skip. And there you go. You can see the bo the big old boss in that room. Luckily, he got in there just fast enough where the boss would despawn. Um, any later than that, and it will soft lock. <laughs> Take a moment to appreciate the fact that at least they gave us the option to turn off the uh, the navigator. Yeah, I actually think it's really cool how they let you choose what navigator you want, and if you don't want any. Yeah, they're they're all unique uh, for anyone that hasn't played the game. The three navigators um, are all unique in terms of what they offer. Like some offer boss hints, for example. Some will offer uh, location and secret hints in terms of finding capsules and stuff so it's pretty useful from a casual standpoint and then from a speed running standpoint we obviously have the benefit of just saying nope <laughs> unlockable characters oh yeah uh, no and they're unlockable characters this x8 has a lot of extra content to be fair there's a lot of stuff you can unlock there's a lot of neat little quirks to it and uh it's just it's, it's expensive so if you don't do the underflow of currency it's just you're leaving your, your character walking left against the wall with a rubber band on your controller for a few days. <laughs> that was the solution for uh, legacy players who wanted to, to get all the expensive stuff because they couldn't perform the underflow. I forget who found that, but if I understand correctly, walking against a normal wall doesn't work, but for some reason if you walk against the left at the very start of the intro where there's no actual wall, you do get currency. So the more you know. See Time Link and Team Mandriller uh, fighting this mini boss. Getting off pretty quickly. Uh, if you do miss a cycle, he, he wraps all the way around and it's probably good, at least 20 seconds you're losing there if you don't kill him fast enough. And you get to do it twice. Despite the auto scrollers, I found X8 to be a uniquely fun run. Like, if anyone's keen, I would say pick it up and have some fun. Even just for the shenanigans of Flying Zero, <laughs> doing it casually, because it takes no time to learn that trick. But uh, you might actually like it. It's it's a good time. It's just disregarded because of X7 so much that people don't give it a chance. Yeah, it's actually pretty friendly to learn because you can take a lot of safeties with increasing your max life and getting uh, tank, sub tanks and filling up extra energy. Like, there's so many things that can help you as you're learning it. You can also get like half sub tanks if you don't have enough currency. Yeah, you can get the little extra like single pack ones and hanging out and they, they look like a left side of an e-tank or whatever because the, the sub tanks are like two. <laughs> but. So what you can see Timely grabbing there, that's the Shock Absorber armor for zero. Uh, it's going to take a lot of currency to, to get, so I don't think you'll have enough quite yet. I don't know what his count is, but um, we will be using that for the final boss. Another thing we haven't mentioned is that once we deal a little bit of damage to bosses, they'll like burn up, like some flames will come out of them. This means they put up a barrier, and if we were to hit them while on the ground, we'll have to do the first latch of a combo to actually damage them for a fully charged shot with X. Axel has these blue bullets that also break shields. But we can just quit all together if we do jump slashes. Time to go home. 
playing the waiting game in the bottom left. <laughs> yeah, Optic Sunflower Stage is actually, it, it's kind of cool, but it's also kind of another arcade auto-scroller. Um, you're basically going through as fast as you can. However, the very first one, you want to get just enough to stay equal, which is 75 kills. And uh, the number changes color based on if you're doing better or worse. And then after that one, we do everything else the fastest possible. And this this allows us to get all the way to the end, get a free sub tank, uh, a bunch of extra currency, and not have to fight Cutman. I think Cutman always appears on the PC version if you get all the top spots. I know that on PS2 you have to get a command mission save on the same memory card for Cutman <laughs> to appear. Only all of our teams are doing different routes, so... Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, Mandriller is definitely still in the lead right now. Yeah. I think Mandriller's on the last Maverick. Or maybe 7? No, I'm entirely sure. Uh, they should be on the 8th right now. It's taking some deaths here using these retry trips. The, the tricky thing is, once you get the downstab attack, you have to do Flying Zero slightly different. Before you have that, you can hold the direction before you, you actually activate Flying Zero. After you get it, if you hold it, you do a downstab. And that means you're going straight down. This is actually going to throw off the stage as well because the result of the deaths is they're actually going to be bottom tier in terms of the um, little tracker in the back that you see. Uh, so the bigger impact to this is not the time loss or the loss of lives necessarily or the retry ships, but more so the fact that they're not going to be able to get the sub tank. You have to have at least five on the top to get the sub tank. Right. So that will leave less of a safety at the end game, but you can still buy health capsule things that refill a little less, but you can't refill them during the stage. It's only at the shop. God, I'm more used to seeing in that room. I think I just put my finger on this. You know what those little enemies remind me of? The little uh, yellow guys that, like, rounded heads and whatnot uh, that you see in a lot of the like rooms Lego in a lot of heads. these trials. All right. Uh, they remind me of the, uh, was it the servo bots or whatever they're called in oh, Legends? Oh, yeah. yeah, the servo bots. They're yeah. pretty similar. I don't know why. I mean, they're, they're obviously like they're not as big, but something about the characteristics of them make me think of that. making his way through the longest auto scroller stage. A bit different of a strat than using Axel. enthralling and uh, uses these little rays to attack you uh, duplicates itself 
Uh, so you have to find the real one. Uh, aside from that, it can trap you in a little orb. Orb. Hmm. Oh, I think that reaches we... across the whole screen, so... I think we also <laughs> haven't mentioned that some attacks can trap your characters, and you can send the other character to free the previous one. So if you get caught by an orb, you can switch characters and you'll free you'll be free immediately. We appreciate the fact that in the Sunflower boss fight when he goes into his desperation phase it brings up like the little window or screen in the background and it actually shows like the big laser. <laughs> As we're uh, getting closer to the end of the relay, I just want to note that uh, if you weren't here for the start of the relay, which is very reasonable considering that was over six hours ago, uh, the clock on the uh, stream is a little bit off. It's like 25 seconds off or something like that. So. When you see the immediate finish times, it will not be right. I will adjust them, though, because we have separate timers running, so I will have the accurate time, so just bear with us. Leave charge. Funny enough, I also don't think we've touched on the fact that there is a very viable X route. Um, unlike something like X4, where Zero and X have completely separate boards um, and are, are reasonably different enough to make them, I guess, separately competitive, um, the Mega Man X route in Mega Man X8 is actually very comparable to the Zero route. So if you're looking for an alternative, a lot of players actually go that route. It collects armor and... Uh, plays very, very differently, but still can put up a you know, hugely competitive time. The armor in x is pretty cool too. Once you get the first part of any armor, you get like a whole body bodysuit, like it's called the neutral armor, and you can customize it mixing different parts from different armors. Looks pretty cool. We're enjoying now Jacob's elevator on Mandriller's side. Watch the definition of spin to win. <laughs> hit any directional buttons, just jump and special attack. Back trading, uh, tracking to actually get uh, yeah an upgrade for X. Yeah, so I think Excite is the only game that has an armor part on the interest stage. Kimo's got the faster part. As Mr. Cap mentioned in chat, what this does is that it upgrades every every stage of our charge. So. Lemon specifically the game half charges and the full charge becomes a, a really big beam. A straight <laughs> line. I don't so think I've ever like, seen that combo. Like uh of going for the one item piece not doing like main X for it. Hmm. 
Yeah, Sukimos does hold the world record for the PC version right now, as far as I know, so... Yeah. No, wait, I think he doesn't. I think Nanon has the world record. For PC? Not sure. The any percent PS2 and uh, Sukumos has the any percent PC as well, no. uh, and Nono has the any percent PS3. Have it open here. Um, fastest time on any percent PS3, which is PSN digital, is a 58.31, and any percent on PC is a 58.48. So yeah, 17 second difference between PC and PS3 version. We saw Tsukimos there use Trilobite's weapon, the Crystal Wall. Some hidden items can only be obtained this way. We have to charge a Crystal Wall and it'll have a metal inside it. It's a pretty cool mechanic. can be tricky to to tell where they are though you most of them are only hints from an operator but you have to actually figure out where they are like on team Andrel just made it to the refights it's absolutely flying through the game I find this refight chamber so awkward. Like, navigating between the boss teleporters and the way that they're laid out and just even getting into them, it's just... It's a mess. Definitely. Um, most of the refights are pretty much the same as before, except uh, I think two exceptions are a little different because you have weaknesses, but uh, for the most part you're just sitting there slashing things with Glaive. Yep. easier in time on Mantis this time around. So it only has Optic Sunflower left and then uh, we'll be joining the other two. Fight Vile again. And that's the last we see of Vile after this, right? I mean, he's a boss with a health bar and everything. Never come back. has the longest desperation phase as you can see here he just spins in circles shining bright first time seeing the zero knuckle being used on Skima's screen oh 
Oh yeah, that's another thing. When you, whenever you hit the knuckle on Zero, the special attacks actually have different names. He says something different when you do them. Reach the boss rush now. And Kimos. This is the last Maverick for Sukimos, right? Yes. If the uh the missing sub tank ends up coming into play or not. So we're gonna have to keep an eye to see if that really plays a part. Yeah, Guns is definitely feeling the sweat on that one. Um, the the last fight can either go pretty well or really horribly, so it really depends. really fun to use too if i'm not mistaken too um doesn't mega man x8 have an easy mode and you don't actually go to the final boss if you play on easy yeah um whenever you play on easy mode bosses never do desperation attacks and the game ends when you defeat sigma and you don't get to battle the real final boss yeah fake sigma not even real sigma like copy sigma <laughs> Last fight is real Sigma? Oh, okay, my apologies. Um, and I thought... It ended at the yeah, fake Sigma. Yeah, I think you do go to Sigma's Palace, and that Sigma that looks really worn down has the blade, right? That's the real Sigma. That's the last one you fight. Operation No Luminae. Yep. Two runners actually fighting the same refight at the same time. Yes, mentioned in chat, uh, the plot of this game says that all red lights now have the so called um, the their. They're called the new generation replates, and they somehow have the memories of every replate before them, and that includes Sigma, so technically you, you're fighting Sigma all the time.
Suki must have shown us some knuckle strats. <laughs> I mean, why not? It's an outer scroll. You should have some fun. And I have to say, big props to everyone. They, they showed up and they brought their A game because we're uh, we're looking to f finish well under estimate, which is uh, impressive, obviously. That's a really good point. Everybody's PBs at the time of the teams being formed, uh, each team was around six hours and nineteen minutes total, and we're just barely over that, and we're almost at the end of X eight for Mandriller. So that's crazy fast if you can play a PB level across eight games. I like to put very conservative estimates, so when we crush it, we look really good. Nice. <laughs> so, final stage here for Team Mandriller. A little more flight. We're going to come up to a boss. I mean, this boss is going to be anybody but Vile, I'm sure. Yep. I swear I'll we kill Vile. Yeah, this is where we kill Vile. Something to note, uh, if we're playing Exact on hard difficulty, once we beat Pile and we cross the door, uh, only one character will go to the other side, and the other character will stay behind and Pile will trap them. And you only be able to use one character for the rest of the stage until you reach Sigma, and then he traps you and the other character saves you. It's really cool. It only happens on hard mode. It's really cool. Also sounds awful. <laughs> yeah, can be pretty bad. To go through all these spikes with only one character. Well, as long as you pick the right character, you should be fine. <laughs> Remember how to do these rooms without flying zero at this point? Like this section. Ugh. Like what is that? Come on. <laughs> Coming up on the very last two fights. Yep, so this is Sigma, and he has this really huge life bar. He'll mostly be shooting rings at us, and he also does this <laughs> and shoots some lasers through the wall. Uh, a part we picked up earlier was the shock absorber. And during that first section, each one of these will knock you down if you don't have it. And that's why we get it, because getting knocked down allows you, or prevents you from actually cycling them really quickly. That's unfortunate. So um, if X dies, you only have zero. And if you don't have X back by the very end, it makes it a little bit harder. Yeah. Hopefully, if you die on these fights, you'll restart at Lumine. So you don't have to battle Sigma again. Yeah, it might be like, given the circumstance, we know that um, Team Andriller has the sub tank. It may be worthwhile to just take an intentional death, refill both, and then start fresh. Yeah. On so, board. Lumine will. Spam desperation attacks of all the previous Mavericks until we <laughs> kill him. Because for some reason, Lumine is male. Yes, Plus Chad, we have to play the chaos pretty much clear really. the whole screen of anything that would hurt us. Looks like we'll get X back right at the very end here. Okay, 
wouldn't be a a Mega Man X game if you didn't have a final phase, right? Just one. The thing about the sub tank is uh, you can refill, and it won't necessarily use any extra. So you don't have to commit to using the full tank. As you can see there, there's a little bit of a left side left in that one. And uh, X is back, which is also going to be handy. Proper amount of damage on this phase, you can actually skip a whole cycle and it saves a decent chunk of time. They're so good. Also, when Slumini gets really low on health, he'll start this Paradise Lost attack, where the screen will get darker and darker, and if the screen goes completely black, you'll lose a life and have to use a red retreat. Yep, so you have to break the shield, and then you can initiate a team attack to win. And time is after it ends. There we go. And timing. that's GG for Time Link. Team Mandrill coming in with the time of 6 hours, 29 minutes, and 3 seconds. It's like 10 minutes of all yeah. of the PBs of every person on that team together. Not too far behind. Mene has like a tentacle attack for some reason. <laughs> Tukinos looks really committed to using the Cynacle for some reason. Knuckle actually has a huge advantage where they don't get those intermittent uh, invulnerability phases. So it can actually bust through a lot of the health. Ow. No, I'm seeing that. That's actually really cool. I've not seen those traps before. And skips uh, one of the middle phases by doing enough damage. Well, don't let it get to you. Just becoming Sigma could hardly be called evolution. Anyway, it's it's hard to tell in X8, but the bosses do kind of glow a little bit when they have iframes. It's not immediately apparent. still have to fight, not only against Mavericks, but against our own destiny as well. And it's time for Paradox Lost. Low spawn, so you can hit it with the triple there. Uh, you can actually get multiple hits with one spin if it's just right.
missed the activation. Do it again, and there you go. Time will be when this ends. Activation seems so finicky. Yeah, it's a pretty small hitbox to hit. And GP. <laughs> Team beat food. About three and a half minutes behind the Mandrillers with a 632.40. Looks like a uh, off stream. Um... Uh, Kokuns was uh, uh, running his uh, split uh, timer to see like how he was doing, and he actually uh, missed PB by 14 seconds. So, uh, pretty good run for him. Yeah, Kokuns is dedicated a lot of time to this game, but sadly he has a really bad PC, so. He probably didn't PB because he may be using light split and it makes his game load slower. Really? Yeah. He has to run this game using W split or the game loads slower. Wow. See game shenanigans. Now they turn the palace not too terribly far behind. Flying over this whole intro area. Knuckle moves are really cool. I'm not entirely sure if it's called C Knuckle. I just call it that way. And that makes me think of UN04, but. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized. This 04? Watch all the dashes without him actually holding out a weapon too, because I'm so I'm not used to seeing that at all. It's like dashing through the hallway, looking unarmed. Okay, I just go with that, and seemingly it's called K Knuckle. <laughs> What the heck does it stand for then? It's the knuckle knuckle. Boy. Combat like Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> no, Chat saying Kaiser Knuckle, I would believe that. <laughs> Fun. 
I've never seen extrats on Lumine. <laughs> powerful. Seeing Zero punching and kicking makes me remember X4 and the that got scene where Sigma finds Zero. <laughs> they have like a big like karate style showdown. Yeah. played X8 on the PC version. Yeah, the uh, collection version, for those that weren't here earlier, collection version has the Flying Zero uh, glitch patched out, as well as the currency underflow. Um, PC only has the currency underflow patched out, and players are still able to do the Flying Zero trick. There for Sukimos. Hmm. And that's GG for time. time. Didn't even use the combo attack. Yeah. <laughs> Very nicely done. Congrats to all the runners. Like. Showing all around. That was a, that was actually a really great relay. Um, we were within 20 minutes from the the slowest team there that just finished of all the PB times of the runners. We're not talking about race times. We're talking about their fastest time they've ever done across eight games. So uh, I want to thank. All the runners and all the commentary and all the, the GDQ folks that helped with this put it together and got it running. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Thanks to you, Colt, and thanks to GDQ staff for letting us do this relay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Strizer, do you have any final thoughts? Yeah. Um, once again, same thing. Thanks to to all the staff for allowing us to put this on and show off the games. Um, absolutely love the Mega Man community. So if anyone's keen on any of the games, whether it be something you've seen today in the X Relay, maybe a classic game, a zero game, uh, the whole Mega Man community is, is really kind of warm and welcoming. And they always love talking strats and helping out newer runners. So check out any of the various speedrun discords if you guys in chat are seeing something that you like or if you're maybe keen on another Mega Man game not shown here today. Huge congrats to all the runners, all of the other commentators for the help, and uh, yeah, thanks for including me. I appreciate it. Cool. Well, yeah. Um, I think with that, we can go ahead and start wrapping things up. So once again, I just want to thank everybody involved as the commentators were alluding to it's for runners commentators um everybody had a big hand in making this happen so we really appreciate it it was a very fun show i enjoyed it uh, over the course of the six and a half hours and look at that we crushed estimate that's pretty good um a huge thanks a very special thanks to Coltaho, who was the main organizer of this relay he did a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure that this went very smoothly and ran very well so I really appreciate it, and I'm sure everybody in the community really appreciates the efforts that he did to make this happen. Um, but yeah, that was a really fun relay. Um, real quick, just want to talk about a couple things before we close the stream out. Just want to let everybody know that uh, we do have other hotfix broadcasts that happen throughout the week. You know, just because it's a special one doesn't mean we don't uh, do a lot of other things. Um, and tomorrow is another one of our weekly shows, which is the Community Spotlight which is a birthday celebration for our man Rail Coon over there in chat. And you can see him right there. He's been our streamer for this entire event, which thank you very much, Rail Coon, for helping us stream this event, by the way. Um, it's, his, it's his birthday this week, so he thought, why not uh, have a birthday celebration on uh, the GDQ channel? So he's going to have a bunch of his friends doing speedruns. So check that out tomorrow, uh, Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So it's going to be cool. Um, and yeah, 
Uh, just a, a reminder, if you did enjoy a broadcast like this and you do want to support us in any way, we do appreciate it. So you can always subscribe to us on Twitch, um, watch the VODs on YouTube, uh, and uh, you can also cheer as well. So we really do appreciate that. But with that, uh, that is pretty much going to wrap things up. I think it is time for us to say goodbye, but not before we, of course, raid a channel. And I believe we are ready for that. So. We're going to go ahead and raid Pace. Uh, Pace is doing a charity marathon uh, for COVID relief efforts. So they are almost done, but they still have a good six to seven hours of speedrunning action. So if you like more speedruns, you can definitely check them out. We're going to send you over their way. But for now, that is all. Thank you so much for watching the Mega Man X 1 through 8 relay. I'm Darkman78, and we will see you hopefully tomorrow.